I am weak. Please don't kill me. Well, no, no. All right, guys, I think we're live. It's time for the Nomad well, Tournament. No. So yes, well, hello indeed. Today I'll be playing the uh, Mongols in game one. So I'm going to be giving them a try. I don't really know how to play them, but trial by fire, baby. We're going to get in there and... Uh, we're going to have some fun. What's great about Mongols is, you know, my base is going to be much harder to kill. I can always be a rat, run to the corners, all that sort of fun stuff. So uh, we'll see how it goes. How you guys doing? Welcome, welcome. Uh, looks like on our pod, it's going to be hey, myself on the Mongols. Uh, looks like we have Kobe on the Malians, the Witch King, uh, which is Nanny Yori, on the Ottomans, Old Firehand on the English, Sniper Dragon on the Bruce. Rotel is going to be playing random, it would appear. Make sure to set no teams. All right. Hey, thank you for the donation. Man, thank you so much, Aled. Hey, Turin, huge fan from Argentina here. Love watching your streams. Got me back in love with AoE. Started playing again after 20 years, dude. It's I had the same experience. I didn't play any age games since like the original ones, and then this came out and got me back into it. Um, hope someday I'll be ready for one of your FFAs. Oh, you're ready right now. Just get in there. Join our Discord. Come have some fun, man. And uh, yeah, hope to see you in there. Thank you so much for uh, kicking off the stream with some fireworks here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So looks like we're good. So Kobe, set no teams. Do it for the Nookie. We're going to try, Major Mula. We're going to try. I was actually listening to some Limp Biscuit the other day. Yeah, it's uh, it, was, it was some fun times. Thank you guys so much for the generous support. And uh, yeah, we're going to be trying some Mongols. Which is fun. We'll, uh, we have trade. We have, of course, pretty mobile armies. All sorts of fun stuff. I think we're okay, but I'm um, just going to make sure. We have one player in our pod who did not show up, so I'm going to see if they are maybe appearing right now. It does not appear, be, appear to be the case. Uh, we'll give them one more minute, and then we're going to be starting, essentially. So I do not see them. All right. Here we go. And here we are. All right, one sec, guys. Cool. So it should be okay here. I think we're all right. Excellent. All right, so we'll start in one minute here. And we're going to do Gunhound Proud with the Mongols. I know, I'm sorry, Casso. Don't worry, This well, the stream is probably going to go pretty long. We have two full FFAs, and there are Nomad. Nomad games typically take a little bit longer as well. So, uh, so yeah. <laughs> Fasten them seatbelts, get ready to party. And I do not see the other individual showing up, so we're going to go ahead and start. And, uh, all right. One second here. All right, so where are you real quick? Just doing a little bit of organizing here at the last second. Uh, somebody said they were looking for Sir Nicholas. Where are they? Um, okay, so he's not here. He could always join our pod. Worst case scenario. So go to rolls and get AOE for roll. And then message Gunhound. All right. How do you join? Uh, well, the tournament signups are closed right now, but typically uh, if you're just in our Discord, you just have to give yourself the Age of Empires role. And then from there, you're going to be privy to all of the events. You'll get the tags, uh, all that sort of good stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. Delhi is Delhi has some options in FFA. Fast Castle Delhi and grabbing like five relics can be pretty viable. And then you can get trade from there. And then you can Castle Age all in somebody with like eight elephants. But um, I would say Delhi is definitely one of the harder FFA civs to play. They don't have any like really crazy, you know, late game. And almost every FFA game is going to be going to late game, right? Yeah. The Great Khan is coming. Yeah, he's, he's going to try and uh, cause some havoc. All right. Perfect. Uh, we haven't started yet. All right. Sounds good. all right cool so we got them all signed up here and i guess we're good to start so uh we have medium teams together doesn't really matter uh do we want to allow observers yes we do with uh no delay just in case i get karate chopped really early on i can then jump out and spectate the game 
<laughs> Which could happen, man. I've been getting owned lately. I don't know what it is. The past couple days, I've been like playing one v ones, and it's just been like brutal. A lot of close games, mind you, but um, overall, it's been uh, it's been some pretty intense stuff. All right, so we're going to be starting right now, and uh, yep, looks like we're good to go. Good luck, have fun, and we're firing the beast up, ladies and gentlemen. It is time. What's my actual name? Nick. Yeah, my name is Nicholas. Yeah, that is my actual name. Although. To be fair, um, Turin is, it, it's my actual name as well. It's my middle name, so. Yes, yes. Let's get the party started. If there's no ladies around, the Witch King cannot be defeated. That's true. We'll have to see if that uh, that is indeed uh, factual here. But yeah, Mongols, I think, are pretty good in FFA. Like, obviously, you can't build walls, but your ability to relocate, if you're, if you're, if you're losing a fight, you can just pack up your base and run. And a lot of times, people won't want to chase you down because it's just too much effort. So uh, that's kind of what I'm banking on. Ooh. The last couple of FFAs, I've been, I've been, you know, had some unfortunate situations where I've been kind of swarmed a little bit. So trying to play around that. Yeah, man, it's time. Malians, pretty good late game gold. Very, very good trade as well. Um, they can get the toll posts up. I, of course, have the silver tree, which um, I'll probably go be going silver tree. I think it's just straight up the better landmark. Why is it called Nomad? So it's called Nomad because you start with three villagers and you have to roam around your nomadic essentially and you have to set up a base from there so you don't it's it's wild it's a totally different everyone's going to be trying to get the corner position so sometimes if you go for the corners uh you know you can get dragged into a pretty hard fight with somebody and uh yeah it can be rough so okay here we are so obviously we're going to go for this corner because it would be silly not to oh wow look at this okay looks like there's a trade post up here as well and we want to get our other worker heading over here we just need to find some gold. So we have like food and fishing here, which is nice. Um, I think I'm gonna go for this initially, like up in the corner here. And what's great is I'm Mongols, right? So I can I can just like pack this up and move it if I don't like it. But we got a tree line. We have like shoreline fishing here. That just feels too good. Screechy Nazgul noises. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, Mongols are fun, man. I, I feel like I should start playing them in one v one a little bit. Yeah, they have a lot of good tricks. The only reason I didn't I didn't like start playing them earlier is because of uh okay, here's somebody else's work or the Witch King. Is um I didn't like the whole tower rushing meta, and I think that's still kind of a thing with them, which is a little bit ooh, look at this. We have a big stone node for our Ovu uh, over here. So let's go get that. And uh let's go explore that and we'll take a work over there. We have we have extra ones, so I'm pretty happy with the spot. We got a trade post here, we have a you know nice little shoreline situation. And uh yeah, let's get that going. Cool. So we got the Uvu going, and I would say that's like a really, really, really smooth Nomad start. I don't know how it works with the con. Do we actually get a con in Nomad? Because normally you start with one, but that would be OP in this format, so I don't know. All right, so that's finished. That's going to give us... We can't really build much around it. We could build, I guess, like maybe our blacksmith or something, but yeah, it's going to start giving us the stone that we need to uh, be very, very scary as we progress. Yes. My buddy is a top player who plays Mongols. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm really not interested in tower rushing people though. Like doing, the Dark Age spear tower rush thing is just so cheesy. Look at this, oh no, Sniper Dragon. Oh man, is he gonna run past my TC? He might, okay, I saw a yellow worker up there. So there could be, I could have a neighbor, which makes sense. Cause if you're um, double produce boats, does that actually work? Okay, he's coming over here. Is he gonna start torching this? He just bonked that sheep, look at this. What is he doing? If this TC finishes and he's running past me, dude, oh man, he's gonna get just absolutely shot down. down. Okay, the Witch King is apparently here. Oh man, oh look at the villager. <laughs> so he's probably like up here somewhere, I would wager. Yeah, the way that he's moving makes me think that that's the case. All right, so we'll get uh, some shoreline fishing going. Shoreline fishing is a pretty decent food source. And uh, we should get this guy. Does my con eventually come out or do I just not get a con? How does that work? Biggest turnout, uh, your con will start building automatically when you build your TC. Okay, good. So he will, he will, the boy will come. Got it. I was, I was going to be a little bit sad if I didn't get my con. Okay, so we'll start doing this. Uh, I need to find a gold node, but that's what my scout's going to do. We're going to go find that. We also don't start with a gear, so that's one of the downsides of Mongols, right? I could have built one, but I guess the Ova, the Uvu was, was maybe the right choice? Not sure. Not sure. All right, so we got a scout coming out. I think it's very important to, you know know where everything is in the realm. We have a couple uh, fishing posts and we can just go up here and set up shop if we need to. So yeah, we're, we're pretty covered there. All right, so let's go do some scouting and find a gold node first and foremost. Okay, there's another stone outcropping here. I could have uh, settled in an area with like no gold, which would be very unfortunate. 
Yeah, I see a lot of stone, but I'm not seeing any gold. Hopefully there's some up here. The con should be out soon, right? Yeah, I need to need to get that good vision on the map. Okay, so we got a deer camp right here. We got shoreline fishing going. A gold node up here would just be huge. So, so far we're striking out. We're not striking gold, as they say. I might have to go to the middle of the map for gold, which would be rough. But, uh, you know, it's not the end of the world. Okay, this is good. We got a big veiny gold vein up on the top, so uh, we are okay. I almost want to move my TC up here, honestly, and just like set up shop there. It seems like a little bit of a better spot. Yeah, and it's like right next to the gold. So um, is there shoreline fishing there too? There is. And then it looks like there's a little something down here. Okay. So I'm thinking of setting up here. Okay, I, can I actually go over here? Okay, no, I can't. That's, that's very strange. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of want to set up shop there, like move up there. It seems a little bit safer. We also have a wood line right here too. So it seems like it could be the way to do it. Although packing up does take a little bit of time. So uh, I guess we'll for now, we'll just kind of stay. All right, so we got the con. So let's have the con go out and explore. We'll grab some sheep while we're at it. And uh, cool, so we're gonna go move up here. We can set up the little uh, mining and then we can take some of the boys and move over there. And we'll, we're also gonna do fishing. So it would be stupid not to fish. It would be very, very silly. So we're gonna have a little bit of a slower rage up. I know Khan. Every time I think of Khan, it makes me think of, yeah, Star Trek, 100%. Yeah, with Kirk yelling, Khan! Oh, look, I have a, wait, I'll save, I have to save the soundboard. I set up a soundboard for today. So we got some ridiculous stuff. I have Howard Dean for the battle cries. Um, looking okay. Shoreline fish is pretty good on food. We have that getting set up. And uh, we need to get that dock functional. And it seems like we don't have too many people near us. This which is very, very rare. Although Yellow knows where we are. He 100% knows where we are. Okay. So how's the lumber looking? We'll set up our dock over here probably. I think I'm going to set it up here because there's some deep water fish right there. So we're going to go for that. We see the relics in the middle. Yeah, we're going to be a little bit slower to age up due to the fact that we're uh, kind of in the dreaded con down here uh, that we're going for uh, fish. All right. See that? Set you up like so. We can always move our TC later. That's the cool thing about being Mongols. We can do neat things like this. All right, Khan, what do you got down here? I have a feeling there's like um, there's like a, a Thunderdome somewhere. Like there's just a whole bunch of people who are just kind of chilling nearby. Okay. Like in, the, in really close proximity to one another. Okay, let's just keep exploring the map. But Khan can keep doing his thing. Welcome to the stream, guys. Today it is a, a Nomad FFA stream, so it's gonna be extra wild. All right, so let's get you, get you on gold. We only really need a couple on gold, and it looks like we found the Lord of Sheep. It's gonna be Levertel here. Let's check this out, and uh, we'll just kind of check out the periphery here to make sure nobody's set up like really close to us right there. You never know, stranger things have happened. And uh, am I gonna get food blocked here? Maybe. All right, shouldn't be for too long. I'm only idle for a moment. But we do have our dock going, so yeah, we're gonna be able to get a ton of fishing going. And this look, honestly looks like a pretty big little body of water. Gravity's Island got a uh, pod got a water map. Oh my God, really? <laughs> Let the water flow through you. Okay, fishing boat, turn in. So an idle vills, please. Are we idling villagers? Lovely, I love it. All right, let's keep exploring the coast here. And uh, yeah, I didn't put quite the right amount of villagers on there. Yeah, we should be fine from here on out. Oh my God, is there like some weird little island? Like for some, can I cross this? See, it's weird. Like there's like this little corner where I can't like ford it. Even though there's like a landmass, it won't let me cross it. Which is which is interesting. This could be uh, this could be an op an opportunity as well. All right, so let's get another uh, dock here. Bring the con back, and uh, yeah, now we just go to the next age. Looks like we're being scouted by the Witch King by Nanny Yori, and uh, let's bring the sheep back to the base and do this and this, and we can bring them back here with the con as well. I know the con has a different hockey, which is always a little bit trippy. But yeah, we got maybe got to get some towers up. We could get rushed as well. Yeah, you guys enjoyed the painting video? Yeah, Lady Turn did a great job of that. So honestly, I'm gonna go check out this little island in the corner because that could be that could be pretty hilarious. Definitely gonna try some silver tree action. Well, now we can go scout and find the other player. Yeah, she's a really good painter. Super talented. Super, super talented. And when we have our uh, tabletop channel, we're gonna have a separate channel for tabletop. She'll be doing painting tutorials like several times a week and all that. So you guys will get the full action here. All right, so let's just do this. You never know, like weird shit can happen in FFA. 
Somebody could just get like the weird idea that they want to... Oh, okay, there's a lover tell sitting there with like 50 sheep. We see a trade post in the center of the map. And our food should start, yeah, like turbo rocketing now to the next next tier. Yes, yes, good. What is this island? I'm super curious what's there. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to build the transport ship, which is obviously not super efficient. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to scratch the old itch. All right, dude, how have I not found anybody? Where did everybody else settle, man? Is there some, some grand consp conspiracy or something? I don't know. This is weird. Where is everyone? It's like a ghost town on this map. I know I've been scouted. That's for sure. Okay. So we're going to go 2TC also. We're going to be like, uh, you know, pretty... Although maybe just fast castle is better now that I have a dock. Okay. So we found one player here. It looks like this is one. And then we found another player. This is the sniper dragon. And now we have the transport ship, which can uh, take you. Go here and let's go let's go explore the island man can we actually go out this way okay the con is going to keep going up here checking this out and we can totally we're totally going to set up something oh my god it's like a yeah look at this it's it's like a little relic island or a sacred side island all right this is pretty wild man got a little bit excited there so we need to do this uh let's do the silver tree build it right there and you guys go do the silver tree Wait, what the hell just happened? Oh my god, I just lost one of my scouts. Holy shit, look at down here. Okay, we have two players spawning right next to each other. Uh, all right, silver tree, gonna go there? Okay, for some reason it didn't work at first. So the Khan has found another base here. So it looks like the a uh, lot of the other players have settled like right next to each other, which is pretty funny. Um, we could have set, set up an arrow emplacement here, but I don't think we need to. Let's go ahead and drop you guys back off. I totally want to hang out on that island. Oh my god, his villagers ended up getting me, that's pretty funny. All right, so we got the con. We more or less know where everybody is now. And this guy, La Rotel, sitting here with like 500. <laughs> 500 of these guys. Oh my God, he's got he's got a legion. Keep the transport ship here. And uh, let's do a little bit more fishing. Obviously to saturate our food economy. And pull back. Yeah, no, I love that little island there. If only it could fit a wonder. That would be like the, the true dream situation, right? Okay, Vil's here, just chilling. And uh, we can set up one of these. And uh, let's get the wheelbarrow. We get forestry, because why the hell not? Silver trees coming out, and we can get a little bit of a trade going in the middle. Not going to be too crazy about it, but we'll see what we want to do. Um, I do want to set up a little outpost here. So where would this go? This would go like right here. Seems uh, we do have this naval trade. Not that we can really do much with it. We got a relic on the corner. We're definitely just going to go like super fast castle, though. That's got to be the play. Super fast castle. The fishing, the fishing will get us there really quickly. I think we have more deep water fish down here as well. Yeah, it looks like we do. So we can totally build like another fishing post here to kind of uh, make the distance a little bit less taxing. All right, so we got 10 workers heading over here. It's very strange not having, um, it's very strange not having, what's it called? Walls. It's it's weird. Yeah, look at them. Look at these. So there's yellow and green like settled right next to each other here. It looks like we've reached the next age. So let's grab you guys and just have you jump on lumber for now. We can start setting up pastures if need be. And uh, we'll get some trade routes going here. And uh, let's go ahead and cut one of these guys. And then we can start setting up like intermittent towers around the map just for vision. And uh, we do want to get a stables as well. That's going to be more or less our game plan. So we are going to go... I think in FFA, mobility is just... Uh... Yeah, if this was like a Wonder Island in the back, dude, that would just be so good. It would be insane. Well, honestly, we're not that far off Castle Age. Um, which in Nomad, you know, at this point, I would say is pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and get the lumberjacking to sustain our fishing fleet. Let's get the extended fishing lines to get that going. No, I wanted to play Mongols today. I'm trying to learn them a little bit. Like I understand the basics, but you know, of course, uh, you're you're, you're going to have to you know play a little bit more to to get used to it, right? Yeah, a lot of gold coming in. We're going to be we're definitely going to be cackling soon. It looks like they're trying to see if the other wants to get the other person in chill. Okay, here's Pink. He's got like stone over here. Oh my god, the Witch King is, is dead already? Holy shit, okay. So somebody is straight up toast already. Let's go get the con to help our traders out. And uh, yeah, let's get more fishing boats. And we can go ahead and set up another dock down here to get it shorter drop-off routes for our food. And yeah, we just go Castle Age, I guess. I don't know. I'm being pretty greedy right now, but based on my spawn, I think it's, uh, it's totally reasonable to be this greedy. And we're getting our Yam network set up too. All right, con, come deal with the wolf. For now, we can chill out on the trade boats and get some military infrastructure because obviously we don't want to die to some nonsense. Get some more traders going. How much are they bringing back? It's a respectable amount. 
I can move Silver Tree back to the corner, I think, which will be fine. Wow, somebody's dead already. That's pretty crazy. We got like pretty much the god tier spawn here though, guys. This is this is like pretty prime time. Okay, so let's get you guys. I could build them near the Ovo, but it doesn't matter too much. Don't need pastures either at this point. So we're just gonna build you and you. Looking good. Got you guys going here, and we are ready for the next age. So let's grab a couple gold workers and build the step readout back here. And then we can pack you up. And uh, where do we want this? Eh, let's just get this down here. Cool. All right, life is good, man. We got the step readout coming. We're going to be getting our Mongolian Lancers uh, in pretty substantial numbers. Let's go get the blacksmith, and we want to put that near the Ovo if we can, but we don't really have any space for it, unfortunately. So it's just going to have to go over here. All right, Lancers are on the way out. We want to upgrade our basic horsemen as well. Let's get the food harvesting, although I don't know if that's really necessary. But yeah, screw it. We might have to switch to pastures at some point, so... I don't know. Who do we take out first? Who's alone? So Yellow won the fight, which means that I should probably go kill Yellow because the other two down bottom are fighting. So um, maybe that's going to be the correct play. I'm not sure. So separate out's on the way. That's going to give us just huge gold, which obviously is very good. Get another tower set up here. And uh, now we can start just pumping out Lancers and Droves, basically. All right, cool. Uh, fishing upgrades cost 350. Pretty pricey. But we're going to start getting quite a bit of resources here. All right, so we got you guys. Get this. So that, and then down here. Just get more Lancers, and we'll get some melee upgrades when we can. I'm being sandwiched. <laughs> Who are, who's on the other side? Who's sandwiching you here? That's, that's what I'm genuinely curious about. So we'll get some Spring Alt Towers going there as well very soon. We want to get you up here. And uh, we're basically just going to try and take map control with a bunch of this stuff. And trade, still going pretty good. Very happy with it so far. We'll just get an Unholy Legion of Mongolian Lancers. And, you know, that's usually the way. And then you get the Arrow Armor upgrade so they can endure the TC shooting. And then we just metho methodically move around and, uh, you know, cause some problems. We'll have to see. Okay. So let's see this. Perfect. Down here. Oh, shit. Check this out. So there, there is a little bit of a sandwich situation down here, guys. A little bit. Let's get that prayer tank going. And we're just going to build up like an unholy Mongol horde. And just, just cause absolute havoc. Okay, step readout's doing good. Let's go ahead and get the mining upgrades. Don't even need to raid right now, really. I, I don't necessarily want to set off any alarm flags that I'm like a threat at this point. But up here, wow. Whoa, do we have a... Okay, so green is dead, but then blue and yellow. Oh my god, like everybody settled right next to each other on that side. That's that's too funny, dude. That's too funny. All right, so let's just get some more uh, trade ships or fishing ships to saturate our food. Get you coming out. Do this. Perfect. And we have a lot of Lancers, but we want to get a critical mass where we can actually just straight up karate chop someone. This almost feels unfair how good this spawn is. Well, it's not my spawn. It's just where I happen to settle. Um, so that worked out pretty well. All right, do that, do this, perfect. And then we can get some more upgrades and uh, just get more upgrades here. We can basically, yeah, we're, we're truly the Mongolian role-playing experience. We taking over the East and then moving and conquering the West. Yes, of course. All right, so you come down here, buddy. Get that and bring it back here. I believe one of the, the, the preachers is, not preachers, but the uh, shamans is going out here. The Great Khan keeping tabs on things. We're just going to get all these relics too. Oh man, this is going to be brutal. Somebody's just reaching Castle Age now. We could have been imp by now if we just pushed it. Um, but yeah, we're going to build a couple more traders and then we'll uh, we'll move from there. I'm being sandwiched. Yeah, we got to go. I don't know who we kill, honestly. Okay, so um, now we want to get Spring Alt Towers and Spring Alt Towers. A couple of those. Let's go ahead and take some more map control here. And here and here. A little bit of this, cool, looking good. Food should be popping off. Let's get the extended fishing lines and uh, yeah, it's gonna get real crazy real soon. Somebody's gonna get steamrolled. I don't know who, but I feel like down here it's a little bit nastier since all three of those guys are still alive. So we probably go to the north, I would wager. Okay, looking good. Take the crew up there. Let's go see what's going on. Let's go kind of do a little bit of an exploratory run right now. And then the trading, we will uh, relocate it to be more effective. We'll move it back up here, which will give us a little bit of a better route. And we'll uh, we'll move up this way and kind of see. 
All right, cool. And then we want to do this. Just keep setting up towers. That's typically what you want to do for Mongols. You don't have walls, right? So you, you need some form of like map control. And uh, maybe we should do a little bit of a further route here. This one looks uh, pretty nice for sure. But yeah, the one we have now is pretty safe and it's generating good money. So not going to complain. All right. We got the Mongolian horde moving to the north. Uh, do I need other sources of food? Maybe so. We should start gathering sheep just to be safe. So blue is still alive. Yellow is still alive. Blue is playing. I'm not sure what. I want to get enough that I can... He's So Old Firehand is asking for help. So we can move over there and help. But then, you know, he's going to be next afterwards, basically. So, But we're still going to, you know, maybe, maybe lend our sword. We'll have to see what it looks like. Bring back 55 of pop. We just got to, like, get so far ahead that nobody could challenge us, basically. That's that's hopefully how this will go down. And then you go here, buddy. You go here. Okay, so here's one of the dead players, which we can actually start torching his base for resources. It's the classic Mongol tactics. If we uh, burn down the buildings, we get the resources. And we have these uh, pastures coming up, which will uh, just start gathering sheep here in case of an emergency. Okay. Outstanding. So the boys are on their way over. Got a lot of Lancers coming out. Probably should get more Lancer tech. Because we're just going to play like a mass mobile goon squad, essentially. Okay. Enemy destroyed old Firehand's landmark. Oh, it's going to be rough, man. I know he's got spears, but that is a lot of Lancers. Okay, so we could probably straight up kill Yellow right now. I've, I've been in his shoes. I've felt that wrath before. That's a rough one. That's a rough one there. All right, let's uh, get the speed buff so we can ride him down. And now we basically just karate chop yellow, and then we, we kill the other player, and then we basically have the entire top of the map to ourselves. Just keep making traders, because trading is OP. And it uh, looks like there's a shaman in the middle. Just get you down there. Can't have that relic, buddy. Okay, now let's just keep moving on. Yep, he's made, trying to make some spearmen. The sniper dragon is going to pay the troll toll. I'm sorry, sniper dragon. Somebody has to somebody has to get it. I'm not sure how it's going to go down, but we will uh, we will just take out the landmarks now. He's still H2 also, so um, pretty rough. Pretty rough. Okay. So we have all you guys doing your thing here. Let's set up some towers. Do this. Move you over here. Do that. So tower and then wood. Kill the spearmen as they pop out. Got to make sure to do that. And it looks like uh, we did stop them from getting the relics. Outstanding. And uh, now, buddy, we can get you on the transport ship. And then we can go jump on that island there. I wonder, like, he was asking for help over here. What was going down? All right. So now we can get our last landmark. So let's go ahead and just do the white stupa. Um, the white stupa we want to build um, near all of our pastures to get the extra resources there, right? So that's going to be what we do. And uh, boom, boom, boom. We can set up some cannon emplacements. Okay, so we're going to the next age. Yeah, no, definitely we're we're the evil the evil emperor, emperor right now. Yeah, we 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 didn't really have any early early fighting, so that gave us a huge advantage against some of these lads here who've just been having to scrap. Let's get the M network upgrade. Should have done that a while ago. Fishing boat's still going pretty bananas. Let's pull you out here. Do that. And the white stupa is coming down. The Kagane Palace just really isn't a viable landmark. In my opinion. I don't know. Some, maybe some people like it, but I've, I've never had success. All right. So let's get you guys. You guys. You guys. Select all the traders. And let's start going a little bit further. Get you guys and go a little bit further. Is he not dead? Okay, he's dead. So that's one down. Let's just keep the old Mongolian steamroller going. And uh, now you guys need to go over here and uh, move. And we need to get elite knights like ASAP. Okay, so let's get cannon emplacements. Just to be annoying. Cannon emplacements. And uh, let's go kill Blue now. I think Blue's up here. Yeah, and then we need... Uh, one of the first things we want to get is biology, obviously, right? Biology is really good, so... Let's get the... Uh, let's get the biology. Yes. For the horsemen. For the horses. Wait, so Blue has something up here, but I don't know if it's his main base. Is it just like a random house? Huh, it could be. Alright. 
Yeah, okay. He, he legit just has... Oh, man, I got fooled into thinking Blue maybe had a base up here. Okay, let's torch all these buildings just for the value. Because um, when Mongols destroy buildings, they get, you know, resources, right? So now we need to go ahead and do this. Set up a lot of archery ranges so we can, you know, if, if so, we don't want to just have just cavalry. Uh, you know, that can get you countered. All right, so let's go drop this off. We have the pretty long trade now, so it's, it's going to be good. And the white stupa is here. And uh, let's get a, uh, hmm. let's delete this firstly. Get you here. And what's going down here? Okay, so it looks like there's a couple bills coming. Yeah, Mongols feel pretty good in FFA, but like this is also like not necessarily how it would normally go. Okay, let's head down this way. Now it's time to to punish uh, to punish the South, as we have full trade here. It looks like. Yeah, that's gonna be really nasty. So Control Shift C, send these guys here. Bro, turn no. He says, <laughs> "Don't make me feel bad, bro. Come on." Do we have enough for the improved biology? A thousand stone, geez, that's that's a that's a serious investment right there. We can do mango dyes just because they're cool. Uh, and it looks like I never grabbed that relic there. All right, let's grab this. We can bring it back there. And we need to set up another prayer tent. So let's just set it up over there. So people are just now reaching the imperial age. It looks like we do have the Rus jumping out here. I think we have some cannon towers. But we'll start with red. We'll definitely start here with red. Okay, so let's do that. So Sniper Dragon is gone. GG, well played, brother. Yeah, red seems to be reasonably strong with veterans so far. But it's time to... Uh, yeah, they need to... If They shouldn't be listening to the stream, but if they are, they should be forming an last alliance right now. Because this is like this is like Sauron territory. 100%. Definitely Sauron territory. I'm sitting on so much gold right now. It's nuts. Okay, let's get you guys over here. Jump on the food. Okay, let's just start torching all these buildings. Take these down. Is there a way into his base here? Oh, there's a gatehouse. Okay. So we'll do that and drop you off here. Yeah, I gotta get used to the Mongol unique upgrades. I actually don't know what they do really, so. All right, so just torch all this, guys. And uh, the rest of the army can push in. There we go. All right, so it looks like there's a little bit of raiding going down, so that's that's good, that's good. I'm not sure where they're going. Here they are. Are they elite? It's hard to tell. Well, let's try and kill Red first. We, we have to methodically uh, take him out. Okay, so he hasn't fully like intercepted the trade yet, so let's dive back here. Get on these guys. Uh, upgrades still coming along. Let's get the rally upgrade, and we have a couple lancers going to fight. He, uh, he does have the numbers advantage though, so we're gonna need uh, we're gonna need a little bit more than that. Let's move in here. Keep pushing. These guys are still torching, giving me a ton of resources. All right, let's go for the TC. And our lancers were uh, basically swarmed there, but thankfully he hasn't shut down the trading yet, so the trade is still going quite strong. All right, all right, we got more lancers coming. Should be able to get that fight there. I need to get the torch damage upgrade. I always forget where you get that, though. Um, all right, so let's get you. Uh, let's go ahead and get the uh, the ranged upgrade. Gunpowder, building health. It works. All right, outstanding. Looks like the Lancers have uh, secured our lands. Why are, you, why are you guys not fishing? There's plenty of fish around here. Come on, now. All right, so where are his other landmarks? I see the Freemba Garrison back here, so we're going to go for that. And it looks like the trade is more or less secure. Get the elite mango die just because they're badass. And uh, where where the hell are those upgrades? The like torch. Oh, it's at the OVO, isn't that right? Yeah. Okay. So we need to get the let's see the improved torch damage. Yeah, that's gonna be the way. All right. Cool. Let's make some more lancers. How are we looking on food? And old firehand has been eliminated. Okay. So now it is basically. Yeah, one, two, and he's Castle Age, so he's got one more landmark somewhere. Uh, it's over here. Here it is. The dreaded Mongol horde continues on. And we need to just get more production. Just so we can spam, like, an unholy amount of units. Okay, so then who's left? So then we have red and pink. Pink is Imperial, so pink's probably going to be one of the biggest threats here for sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally forgot to do that. It's okay. Nobody's perfect. And cool. So stables are on their way. We're going to have a pretty big legion of them. Let's go over here, set this up, and uh, you guys just go purge the gold from the lands. 
and we also need to get the uh, packing speed movement. I always, I always forget that. Okay. GG, well played. All right, so that's one down, but oh, nice play. Look at this, we're being raided here. All right. The Chinese are uh, having something to say about my trade. Good thing Mongols can just make a million trading units. So yeah, we definitely need to kill Pink. Pink is actually strong, so we we got to get back and uh, we'll have a couple of the homies just keep torching all these buildings for uh, for resources essentially. So we're just gonna kind of go through all these buildings and just do that and this and this and this and this, and then that should do the trick. Hopefully, we'll see. And the rest of the army can move north. And yeah, Pink's got to pay the price now. I think Pink is like the last uh, last big threat in the old world here. Uh, do we need army tactics? We might need the arrow upgrades at some point. So he's trying to get to the middle to get some resources. And it looks like we've intercepted here. Found a couple units. All right, outstanding. And how are our lumberjack workers doing? Oh, that is not good. All right, because Step Readout decided not to set up here. All right, so let's take this down. We can just brute force this shit. Looks like we got Fire Lancers coming. And we'll head into the Chinese base right now as well. Looks like, uh, yeah, nice raiding here. So brute force down the keep, re-secure our trade. Heading into the Chinese base with all of our guys. Got Lancers popping out at home to deal with that. Let's get you guys back online. And good, now we got some reinforcements coming here. So we need to get these to become like cannon towers and shit. Uh, does he know I'm over here? He might suspect it, I'm not sure. Okay, so torch damage is going. We're in the Chinese base right now. Let's torch this down so he loses 800 stone. He's not paying attention. Okay, he's gonna lose the stone, very nice. So let's go look around, see what we can find. And then we can uh, constantly stream units into his base, basically. It's gonna be very tough to deal with. Those, uh, those Lancers are strong. All right, let's gather you guys up. Looks like we've dealt with this. Get you guys, and we need to get the trader really secure if we can. So we need to make like all these cannon towers, basically. How are we looking here? Yeah, he's pretty strong, actually. China might be able to put up a good fight here, guys. Straight up. They might be able to. Okay, how's the trade looking? You just need to keep producing the traders and have them go to the further trade route. All right, so who's still alive? It looks like it's just, yeah, it's literally just me and him, huh? Okay, so now we just have a 1v1. All right, now you guys get to see why I'm not good at Mongols. <laughs> Cannon towers are on the way. And these guys are just torching and getting us free resources, which is awesome. All right, control shift C. Let's head down here. Head to his base with the Dread Legion. We have pretty good food gathering, but we need to get the ooh, improved wheelbarrow. Sounds pretty awesome. And uh, let's go ahead and get the, uh, yes. So we see the Chinese army here. Let's gather, I don't know, hopefully we can take it, shit. He's got, what is it, mostly uh, elite lancers? Okay. So I could start switching in some spear units, but I feel like for Mongols to defend like all the space that you have, you're gonna want like a more mobile army. Okay, let's pull you guys back and uh, gather you guys over here. He's making fire lancers, thankfully, which aren't that good at, um, at fighting these type of units. Okay, let's do this. Take a couple of you guys into the back of his base. Go shut down the farms. Fire Lancers are going for trading. Maybe, I'm not sure. Eh, he's going for the TC here. Okay, let's garrison up the bills. And we keep uh, pushing in. See, this is where my unfamiliarity with the Mongols starts to maybe take hold, huh? How are we looking here? So those guys are getting dragged down. It looks like, uh, yeah, a little raiding into the backfield. Let's pull you guys down here, pull you guys down here. But yeah, he's taking some, you know, heavy losses here for sure. But um, yeah, we got you guys. Let's get you taking out those vills and get into his farms too. We have to counter raid him, right? We have to counter raid him. So let's move in there. All right, so how are these boys doing? Yeah, losing a couple vills. I'm still at 106, which is fine. So yeah, I think we're okay. Let's move up there and uh, you guys can go ahead there too. Let's do this, more traders, please. Raiding into the eco. Oh, see, he has the big fishing eco also. Yeah, so he's cackling for sure. Okay, looking good. Head into the Chinese base. Looks like the raid has been dispatched. No, actually, there's still some. And you guys get back to work. Back to work you go, minions. Let's go ride these guys down. And he does have the stone walls. Okay, so he's got the giant stone wall 
kingdom of the gods here. I don't have enough stone to really make all the emplacements that I want to, unfortunately. Okay, so we're going to have to get like siege equipment to actually finish him off, it looks like. So let's do this, pull a couple of you guys, and then we can set up some siege workshops here. You guys just chill here for now on the defense. A lot of horsemen just trickling out. Probably need to take uh, control over the sacred sites also. Just to try and pressure him even more. We are getting some like raiding in the back of his base though. It's not bad. Are these trade ships? Okay, he's actually trading in water. Oh shit. No wonder he's so strong, guys. He has naval trade. Oh my god. He's got the dreaded naval trade going. Okay, we need to go like harry this, this part of the map as well. Because he might actually be able to beat us eventually. What the hell is this? Yeah, seeing this shit? It's like a million nest of bees here. That's some weird stuff here. Okay, so we got some more lancers coming across. Should be able to kill a lot of that. Okay, let's pull you guys back this way. Do that. How are we doing? Our artillery's almost gone. Oh, guys, he's trading naval. Oh, man, that's why he's so strong. Okay. So that explains a lot, for sure. I was, like, wondering how he was keeping up. Okay, so did we kill the nest of bees and whatnot? Looks like we haven't quite fully wiped them out. So let's just keep that trade going. He's just got, like, nest of bees parked everywhere. Wow. All right, so how are we looking here? More and more Chinese cavalry swarming into the realm. That naval trade could be a huge problem. It could be a huge problem. All right, you guys, keep trading here. Keep trying to trade, at least. He's got he's got some sort of like naval action going, 100%. Two, three, and four. Let's grab a couple of you guys, uh, a couple of vills. We actually have like no one on wood right now, which is bad, so we need to do this. Let's take a couple of you guys and go uh, up here and then down here. That is part of the long-term plan. Oh my god, where, what was he doing with those nest of bees, dude? I like how we still have some like random ass lancers in his base. It's pretty funny. All right, where where is my legion of lancers? They're around here somewhere. Okay. So what is he attacking me with here? There's something shooting at me. I think he's got a keep over here, so we need to go head that off 100%. Oh, okay. He's uh, harassing my base with a couple workers, which I didn't build towers because I'm a bit of a potato. Should be okay. We'll have some reinforcements there shortly to deal with it, and uh, yeah, they'll get it, do a little bit of damage. Nothing too bad. All right. So he's got a random keep here. Do we want to take this down? I don't know. Let's go down here and see if we can find. It's a, it's it's definitely a whole different paradigm, like trying to stabilize um, an empire without walls. It's like a whole different playstyle, man. All right, so let's see what we got here, and then just keep harrying around. Okay, it looks like that's where a lot of his reinforcements are coming from. And you guys just keep going, keep getting that sweet trade. Oh, he's trying to get some walls up. Look at that. The desperation walls. Let's see if we can get around them. He's very strong. He's very, very strong. Oh my god, can we not get around that? Are you serious? What? Oh my god, the water. The dreaded water. Okay, it looks like we can't quite get around there. Let's see if we can move down this way. Looks like he's got like military infrastructure up here. So let's go start torching that maybe. Okay. Chinese horsemen all over the place. And thankfully we do have some cannon towers, but... All right, so yeah, more and more Lancers coming out, and we it doesn't seem we have like the eco to keep up. We have the food, but aside from that, we uh, we don't have the food. Yeah, our fishing boats, are they still active? They are. Okay, good. So that's, that's at least something going for us here. So let's torch all these down to try and shut down that pressure. Okay, let's just trade. Need 27 of you guys, so let's get you on the berry bushes here. And then we have 20 workers hiding in the TC, so let's get you guys back out for the food. All right, and uh, yep, just more Lancers for now. Oh man, his naval trade is crushing me. It's absolutely crushing me. Homeboy is just cackling a navy. All right, it's pulling you guys back, pull you guys back. And we got you guys, so let's do this and then this, and take some of you guys to do this as well. And uh, I could have sworn I had some bills over here. I, had, I have a little bit of a plan. We'll see if it works out. Okay, so let's get you back into the base here. Trying to defend our trade routes, but it's not easy. It's not easy. All right, let's get come. You guys take out his gold villagers here. So we found a little alcove. Okay, let's do this. And great. All right, so we got TCs to try and get our eco back. We are torching a lot of this down. A new con has arose, which is excellent. 
You guys need to go uh, just do some fishing here. It doesn't matter if it's super far. Okay, it seems like a lot of our fishing boats weren't active at the moment. Okay, so let's do that. And uh, yes. And you guys will uh, see what the grand game plan is here. Hopefully it will work. We need to keep the trade online because otherwise we're just going to fall behind so hard. Okay, it looks like we are more or less trading. We've been able to hunt down a lot of his infrastructure up here. Looks like that's where a lot of it was coming from. Okay, so let's get some more Lancers in here. As he's going to be raiding us here. And uh, yeah, we're still torching down buildings. Step readout is uh, compromised for now. And take these guys down. And cool. So we need to get Chads. Let's get the armor and the docks and all that stuff. Because if we can sweep him out of the water there, then I think that's our, our, our avenue of a comeback. Because he's definitely ahead of us. If he's been trading at water, then he's going to be a tyrant. 100%. Yeah, and it looks like he he has chads at the water as well. What was he doing in the water with, like, chads? It's wild, man. This is wild shit. Okay, let's uh, do this. And we can't really get into his base anywhere, unfortunately. Yeah, he's pretty well secured. He's got the dreaded Great Wall of China coming for us. Okay, uh, let's just keep getting upgrades. And uh, do we want piracy? Sure, why not? That's going to be marginally useful. Thankfully, our eco, our, our villager eco is staying up, so we're able to kind of stabilize here. Okay, let's move this here. Hopefully that cannon tower will be able to finish the job here shortly. And, uh, yeah, he might discover our Chad Inquisition before, before we're able to really party here. So we need to just keep wood. I mean, we have enough gold to last us a long time from the trade. Okay, let's repair this. I don't know if he's actually watching that or if it just, like, automatically does that. Huh, interesting. Alright, so how's this looking? We have the Chad Inquisition, so now we can try and shut down his trade here. I don't know if he's going to be ready for this, so let's uh, sail down here. And that's going to definitely put like a new level of stress. And uh, let's get you guys set up towers to prevent raiding. Is he trying to wolo low something? I don't know what's going on there. Interesting. Alright, so let's get the Chads. Keep going down this way. And you can see the, the pressure is kind of like dwindling a little bit, right? Now that now that we started to cause problems elsewhere. Um, all right, so let's get you. Send you over here. Do this. Cannon towers. And uh, cool. So now we're starting to get some good pressure on, on the backfield here. You can see he's got more chads coming down, but we are going to be able to potentially do some big damage. Oh, he's got so many chads. So he's actually, yeah, he's just cackling. He's, he's, he's going to be in good shape. I should have known that the Chinese would be the scariest threat and gone for them first when I was when I was ahead. We gave him too much time. Okay, so let's keep rampaging around, see what we can find. Yeah, and the Navy, at least it's a distraction, but that's pretty much all it is. Okay, step readout is here. We have a couple Lancers we could take up there. Yeah, we do. Looks like we have a random nest of bees here. And this. Okay, he's switching to Spearman, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like he's switching to Spearman. So let's uh, finish these. Chase down some of these lumber workers. Take the chads down. Make some demo ships. And great. So those workers are going to try and get through, but it looks like we should get him. He's got the Great Wall Gatehouse right there, too. Okay. Let's get you guys. Go here. Set that up. I don't think there's legit any way into his base. I think he's pretty well secured. Okay, so let's just make some more chads. Keep forcing that trading. Yeah, there's no way in. Outside of artillery, which uh, I'm, I'm working on. It's going to happen. But he's got so many horsemen, it's going to be incredibly tough to defend it, I feel. But this uh, this naval victory here is, is quite good for us. So let's just keep gathering up. Get the uh, HP upgrades. Keep defending. Whoa, he's just like spamming nest of bees. That's, that's really wild. They're not very good against horses, though, which is the one thing I have going for me here. Uh, we're probably going to need to switch into heavy pasture economy as our uh, like kind of docks dry up here. All right, so let's just keep you guys coming. Keep those chads moving along. Grenadiers. Okay, we don't mind grenadiers. That's not a problem. And uh, sure, let's get the improved uh, improved stats. We love it. Okay, so it looks like he's trying to shut down some gold here. Not that it matters too much. Get those lancers to head those guys off. And now we head this way and just kind of start purging random shit from the realm. Okay, so he's sending more chads, but we should have the naval superiority now. If we can do this, that's really going to screw him up, I think. I think it'll cause some heavy problems. 
a couple <laughs> random lancers back there. So let's uh, get this into a cannon tower. And in case he wants to raid the base again, we have cannon towers. And uh, we need to get that religious building to do this and get the upgraded tithe barns, which would be quite nice as well. All right, great. So that fight was won. So let's, uh, oh, look, see, he has, he has a sacred island too. He has a sacred island going. All right, I dig that. Definitely want to just remove keeps from the map if we can. Yeah, we gotta gotta keep keep his numbers down a little bit. Okay, looking good. Let's get some more chads coming along, and uh, yep, another dock would be nice. Got that keep, and now we can go sweep the last of his like his uh, infrastructure from around the lands here. It just became like a huge large scale one v one basically. Okay, yeah, looks like that should burn down. Oh, he's got a pretty decent little size Chad fleet, and his Chads are better than mine because they have the nest of bees. Although, maybe I have the numbers advantage, like enough of numbers to win this? I don't know. We'll have to see. Alright, so let's just make a bunch of bow Chads. Seems like it's going pretty good. Uh, let's head you guys down. Yeah, our cannon unfortunately got headed off here. Wasn't paying attention. And uh, did those villagers ever make it to the middle to set things, uh, set things off? No, it doesn't look like it. Okay. You guys need to do this. Looks like we're being raided pretty heavily. So the water, I think, is ours. I think we've taken over the water, so now we can start to, you know, punish his uh, trade ships here, hopefully. So let's get one trade ship over there. Because he's raiding well here. Okay, cannon towers, please. Nest the bees. And uh, let's just get lancers in the base. Let's get you over there, buddy. And uh, you guys can go here. Let's just secure this. Okay, so yeah, what's going on up here? Nothing, nothing terrible at the moment. Okay, step read out. Let's pull you in there. Looks good. All right, so the Chads, the Chads are going to do some work. He's going to start losing out on the water pretty hard. That's going to cut off the gravy train of uh, naval trade. Hopefully, <laughs> that's the plan at least. We have a couple more dudes here. All right, let's uh, get our trade going again because we're going to need it. Not going to be easy to set up though. Not going to be easy. Uh huh. Okay, so take down these random buildings here if we can. Losing a couple villagers up there is unfortunate, but um, yeah, he, we're winning this water fight, which is great. So, but the problem is if we invest too heavily in water chads, then our uh, our land-based army is going to suck a little bit. So, okay, so let's have you guys finish off these towers, get that trade going. Thankfully, we had some lancers chilling by our base to mitigate the raiding. And uh, what else do we have up here? Looks like there was a little bit of something, something going on. All right. So cannons and cannons. Heading down here. Looks like that's where he wants to party. He's just sending grenadiers from uh, over here, I believe. So let's just keep sweeping down here. We need to just keep pushing. Outstanding. These chads can come bombard his shores, which hopefully will do well. I'm so glad I decided to go for that water action there. Yeah, okay. How's the step readout looking? Step readout has paid the ultimate price here. Okay, so unfortunately, it's so hard to protect this trade against the Fire Lancers. They're so swift. How's our eco looking? Okay, pretty good. Uh, outstanding. Oh, he's, he's actually pushing back here. All right, so we need to just like straight up get him out of the water. We are getting the piracy, which is really nice. And uh, looks like the towers coming up here should be pretty good. Let's do this. Try and repair the step readout. These cannon towers should finish soon. Man, a lot of... The nest of bees are thankfully not like an efficient expenditure. Okay, let's get these boats down here. And how are we looking on upgrades? Um, sure, why not? Let's just get all the naval upgrades. And cannon towers, let's get some of these lancers here. Those guys are about to pop out. And uh, we can just sweep over here. And I think... Yeah, we have a nice little raid going there too. Good. Oh, look at that. He's sending some, some dudes to try and shut down my naval situation. Yeah. Holy shit. He went hard into the bow chads. Hard into the paint. Yeah, we weren't quite able to get the middle going. Damn. Okay, so let's uh, let's get up to the middle. We need to secure that trade somehow. We did shut down his naval trade, though, so overall I would call that a bit of a success. And it uh, looks like we got this going here, so let's take all these down. We got cannon towers on our southern border. Now we just need to focus on securing trade, really, and getting the step readout back online before I run out of gold, which is going to be a problem. Okay. 
All right, taking down the keep. Looking okay. Very, very uh, wild, man. But we are getting some infrastructure down. We did force him to expand a lot into the chads, which hopefully will do well for us. And uh, now let's go ahead and get the upgrades on the... Uh, what is that? Here we go. Yeah, China's, China has a better navy than us. So we had our window of opportunity. We still do have that sweet, sweet Mongol trade going, which we need to just keep pouring out. He's making some spears now, which uh, is a nice, nice transition for sure. Okay, so I think this like southern border is pretty secure here. So we need to just do this. Get you guys up to the middle. Get our Lancers coming across to help. Holy shit, that is a lot of nest of bees. You guys seeing this? Homeboy is, is just the bee lord. The lord of the bees, he's the Nicolas Cage. Wow, you see that pathing on that? You gotta love it, right? Okay, so we were able to crush those guys. Now we just get on top of the nest of bees and kill them, and uh, it should be pretty efficient for us. Yeah, I mean, we just killed like 10 nest of bees. Dude, he is so rich. Oh my god. All right, so we need more pastures too. Okay, let's do that. Looks like we get enough troops in to win that fight, and we also can start getting cannon towers here. Yes. That is good. And uh, let's just torch down more infrastructure if we can. Villagers, we have 113 bills, so we can actually afford to lose some. <laughs> Probably would end up helping us at the end of the day. So let's just finish this tower, and then we can garrison all these guys. All right, let's get them in towers. Safe and sound. Mm, kind of being dragged down a little bit. We might need to switch up our army comp a little bit. All right, so let's gather up the boys. Let's fight here. Let's grab you guys and set up some archery ranges. We could do barracks. I guess we could start making some spears ourselves. Come on, guys. We need to hold this position. This would be really big to hold, actually. Okay, you guys, can you build these pastures, please? I know I gave you orders. I could have sworn I did, but maybe I was wrong. Maybe I did not. Come on, Cannon Towers. We need you guys to stabilize this trade. We need you guys to stabilize the trade. We've killed the bees. We're definitely trading efficiently, but he has more money than us. His eco is better. Somehow. I, somehow Palpatine has returned. I don't know how, but don't ask questions. It's just, it just happened. Okay, so the cannon emplacements are finished. Uh -huh, let's get the upgrades coming along. Let's get you guys on the way. And we're losing a lot of traders at the moment. Well, that's unfortunate. What can you do? Thankfully, these cannon towers are just super good. Okay, let's pull back this way, gather up our forces, let the cannon towers just continue bombarding him. How good is his eco? Yeah, it must be really just crazy. Okay, so still trading okay here. And uh, I guess we could start maxing out some spears. And you guys in the meantime. We've got the pastures generating in full force. Yeah, these towers are doing the work of, uh, work of, the, of the con. But yeah, a lot of our trade is, is just simply not making it through. Okay, and it's Lancers and Hand Cannoneers. Might be able to actually win that fight here. We'll have to see. If he tries to ride into our base, we at least have cannon placements. Yeah, we lost some lumber bills there. Nothing too serious. Nothing we can't reproduce. Okay, so we held those guys at bay. Let's move over here. Head them off. Yeah, the late game China is no joke, bro. He's playing well, too. He's playing very well. All right, so cannon towers are last samurai many of his workers, which is good. Set up a trade post here. And he's actually getting the sacred site. Wow, yeah, I think we're really on the back foot here, guys. We're really, really on the back foot. Okay, let's uh, do this if we can. Is he still in the base? Looks like, nope, not a problem. He headed him off there. These damn fishing boats are running out of uh, fish, which is not good. I'm starting to lose momentum because of, of the food. And he is probably uh, has like actual true farms. All right, so let's head to the middle. Ooh, he's so rich. He's so rich, dude. How is he affording it? Oh my God. Anakin, I'm too weak. He's too rich. He's got all this water too. His food, he's probably completely interrupted on his macro. Okay, let's head to the north. Continue this, dude. He's got so much. Yeah, we're dead. We're toast, I think. I don't think there's any way of coming back. 
Outside of like some sort of a weird landmark snipe or something, I, I think we're I think we're in danger. Which is good, because then I can cast the finals and not have to worry about playing Control Shift C. Okay. Let's get you guys going here. Definitely made the mistake of not going for China early when they were weak. That was a mistake. Okay, what are we looking like here? Can we get any sort of trade going? Not really. Cannon Tower should be able to finish those guys off. We can make some hand cannons, guys, but we're we're pretty toast here. We're pretty toast. The step read out is trapped here. I can't get my gold back. Let's can all that. Could go for a wonder, guys. No, Mongol late game is good, but China late game is, is better. So there's there's not um, a whole lot we can do at this point, I don't think. We'll come down here and try like some little cheeky business with a bunch of spearmen and battering rams, but that's like more or less our uh, our last chance here. Okay, so let's just set up towers. He's coming with a sizable army of grenadiers and Jugnu. Okay. All right, let's keep moving. Oh, I think we could actually win this fight, which is kind of interesting. This is like our last desperate chance. His eco is just so superior to ours. Alright, so let's loop around the side. Gather you guys back here. Get onto the artillery in the backfield. Going to be pretty much our, our one bet here. And, uh, right, so the Ramstein is on the way. Nest the bees are being karate chopped, which is good. Somehow, Palpatine has returned, and we are being allowed to live, which is good. Let's grab you guys, do this, and just set up that. For a little bit of that. All right, I dig it. Villagers, you guys come down here. And, uh, yeah, this is kind of one of our last gambits here, really. Which is going to be some sort of a, cheese, a cheeky backdoor. He is, he's, he's just so rich. He's just been throwing money at me for so long. Playing very well. Hey, how's it going? Defending without walls, it's definitely different. I, I think Mongols are really good in FFA though. I, I legit have had a great time this game learning them. It's one of my first games with them in a long time and uh, overall I'm pretty impressed. Like they seem like a like a good sieve in FFA. Like yeah, the fact that like uh, you have really good early sur survivability is pretty, pretty massive, right? Like you can pack up and move and just do all sorts of crazy shit and uh, that's so valuable. That's so valuable. All right, so that's gonna be the, the last haggard Gambit there. All right, let's take the Lancers, ride through, target you, you. We might be able to survive a little bit longer. I think, I don't know, we'll have to see. Okay, let's uh, go through here. And we're getting raided a little bit, which is fine. We have cannon towers, so hopefully we'll be all right. Somehow we survived again. I don't know how that's happening, but somehow Palpatine has returned. All right, so that's enough. Let's get these rams and let's go over here. And uh, now we just need to focus on not dying in our base, which uh, is easier said than done. <laughs> easier said than done. I almost want to build some coastal chads for the uh, deeper reaching pressure. All right, let's go get you guys. Garrison up. Rams are going in. Let's send the Ramstein in, baby. All right, let's get you guys back. Get you in here. Okay, perfect. You guys go out there. Head him off. Dude, he's so rich. Holy shit. He must just be cackling in resources right now. Jeez. Okay, do I have any wood up here? I do. We can go jump on that. I have my haggard spearman to hold. Problem is he's never gonna run out of resources. <laughs> this is this is the issue. Okay, let's get you guys going. Get cannon towers everywhere. Aha! The Rams have gotten in. He's in, he's in danger now. We sure got him on the back foot. Okay, is there any sort of a weird comeback mechanic I could do? Like where I could maybe scrap my way back into the game? I don't think so, honestly. We did stabilize here. We could go to the middle. Maybe just mass horseman cheesing, I guess. But he, what are these? Elite spearmen? Yeah, it's going to be like hard, man. Okay, we got cannon towers. These guys can go do a little bit of raiding, I guess. We'll try and do something. We have to try and be proactive on the map. Come, minions. Hold, brothers. Hold. Okay, 18 vills. They're all obviously garrisoned up in different places. We'll set up more cannon towers. I feel like I should. I, I need a wonder. I know it's not going to happen at this point, but, um, you know, I feel like that's what needs to happen if I want any chance here. All right, Khan. Go help the boys hold. 
Look at that, the big plays, decapping the sacred site. Dude, we are on straight up death's bed right here. Oh, is there any, like, yeah, there's no trading options. He's got all the trade pretty much locked down. Just pouring units. He's got that whole side of the map. I really thought I was going to be a tyrant, honestly, with my how my start was, but he must have been pretty, uh, this big water here is really good, too. Okay, let's do that. And garrison you guys up. Hide the villagers. And, uh, yeah, I got a couple of bills kind of chilling back here. I feel like he's, like, always just knows where, I, where I'm uh, where I'm at. Just always uh, reacts pretty well. Dude, look at the nest of bees coming out. Holy shit. It's just the supply line of them, bro. Look at this. Just free nest of bees. All right, how are we holding here? Are we holding it down? Okay, cannon towers are going. We have a lot of stone. Okay, let's get you guys out. Let's do this. We still have the old tithe barns going for us, which is, I think, one of the, the things that's keeping us uh, alive here. It's pretty funny. Okay. There's just no way, dude. There's no way. Okay. So this raid is pretty much dispatched, so we should just pull back at this point. Run over you guys. He's going to start bringing artillery eventually. When the boy when the boy learns to bring the arty, then we're in danger. Hmm. Yeah, so I see the the Oh wait, is this a marketplace? Oh shit. All right, hold on a sec. There's a little something something going in here. One, two, three, four. Okay. I mean, it, it's probably a little too late for that to work, but it's still something. We have pretty good static emplacement defenses too. Control Shift C. Am I using stone to double produce units? I've been using stone mostly on cannon towers, which I think right now is a little bit more pertinent. Um, yeah, I could be wrong, but I, I feel like that's the way. Yeah, and then you guys need to set up some uh, towers here as well. We'll see if we can hold, how long we can hold for. He does have fire lancers. That's one of the big issues too. Fire lancers uh, kill buildings very quickly. You can see he's torching down many of the, the other ones. Um, yeah, that's actually a market, I think, isn't it? Yeah, okay. It's, it's a little too late. I don't think it would have saved me anyways. He's been uh, macroing just on full gear for a long time, and I've kind of been scrapping for resources. There's so many. There's so many units, dude. Look at these spearmen coming in. We'll try and get it. We'll try and move over there, but I'm pretty sure that's it. GG well played, man. Great game by, uh, by everyone in this pod. I feel pretty bad for some of the players who had to start like here. Oh my god. Like the guys who just were sandwiched. What an unfortunate one, but that's kind of how the cookie crumbles with Nomad mode. Yeah, I do have a lot of stone. At this point, though, my Uvus are shut down. I'm kind of in compromised positions. I could double produce, I suppose, but uh, he's just got so much eco, guys. We're about to see it. Yeah, no, I didn't recall that that was the Ottoman landmark. I didn't. Yeah, it's pretty rad, though. No, no, I'm, uh, next time I'll, I'll be ready for trading there, but yeah, GG, well played. I think I remember this guy from before. I think he, this guy won one of our really early FFA tournaments. But yeah, late game China, too strong, man. Couldn't handle it. We let, we should have gone for them when they were weak. Let's uh, take a look. The map was with me. Yeah, I had a good map spawn too. His was better than mine, but his was uh, not by much, honestly. Like I had a really good spawn too. But that Chinese eco, man, it was brutal. I thought maybe we had a chance. Should have gone Cognate Palace. Yes, then we could have gotten armies. Holy shit! Okay, never mind. I had no chance. I had no chance. Yeah, no. This is over. All right, this explains it. I was like wondering why he was so strong. I was like, oh, it didn't like. I thought the water ended here, so he just had a trade route. Oh, dude. I had no chance. Zero chance. Look at this. He straight up has his own island with double gold note on it, and uh, look at that. Oh my god, that is pure filth! That is pure filth! Oh my god! I was wondering how he was just affording so much! And the trades were so... Like, we were favorably trading, I would say. Like, killing a lot of his armies over and over. Oh, no wonder, guys. Uh, why you go imp when you... I, I upgraded all my units, yeah. My... My spearmen weren't upgraded, but my lancers were. I had biology. I had maximum blacksmith upgrades. I had all the Ovo upgrades. Don't know what you're talking about, bud. Uh, the trade ships here. Yeah, no, there was no chance. Yeah, no. There was no way. <laughs> there was no way, bro. Oh, my God. Yeah, let's check the timeline. 
It was a good fight, though. A really good fight. Super fun. Yeah, no, no way. Look at his resources. He 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 crushed everyone on resources. I thought I had good food, but he was one uh, 128. His wood was 113 because you bring back wood from trade also. And uh, his gold was 118. Yes, Pone, I have. I have. It's really good. Dude, you missed it in the battle chat duels when you were just solo land of trade ships and just went after the docks and said, yeah, but even still, he would have been able to stay. He had probably had like 10 docks. He was going to push me out of the water. China's water is stronger. So, wow, dude, brutal. Holy shit. Cody says I wasn't last. Atta boy. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Perfect. One sec here. Hmm. So where are we at right now? Checking it out, seeing how we're looking on the pods. I would imagine most of them are finished. Um, checking with Gunhound. Gunhound, how far are we along in the pods? Is there like two or three of them going? Because if there is, I could even just play 1v1 real quick. You you let me know. Dude, what a monster in the water. Thank you for the... This was like the opposite of historical <laughs> reenactment. It was China steamrolling the Mongols. Yeah. 220 gold in wood per trade. Yeah, there's no keeping up with that. That literally pays for a nest of bees almost with every trade chip. Yeah, crazy. He played really well, though, too. His micro was very good. He was, like, raiding really well. Like, just constantly just probably had rally points into my base, like, all over my base with, like, a, a 500 sables. Oh, man. Hey, oh, you're, you're Kobe? Hey, well played, Cody. You played like a champ. Honestly, me and La Rattel, we got the best spawns. Nobody could compete with us, probably. Just we, that's the kind of the thing with Nomad sometimes. We, we just got really broken spawns. So we were able to just kind of do our thing. I, I don't know if anybody like messed with him. Naval trade is crazy strong. Yeah, it is. I did not think it was that serious over there, guys. I did not. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, what a monster. Oh, Gunhound might actually be in a game. So let me check how the pods are doing manually. And uh, worst case, I'll go lose a 1v1 for you guys. Uh, huh? Okay, so checking here. Uh, Gunhound is, is he here right now? Let's see. How are the pods looking? Who has finished? Okay, trying to see who's done. Yeah, Gunhound looks like he was just checking in about 10 minutes ago. Yeah, no, we needed to, we needed to go for China right away because they were fighting people, but we, when we killed everyone else, it just kind of let them become a superpower. Yeah, that's a risky run. You're still playing, says Prince. Uh, let's see. I'll probably do, I could do a quick 1v1 match then. If your pod is still going. <laughs> Rah Rahul is like, he's like, ah, oh, we're, we're still in game. Okay. So it looks like we have one, two pods that are done. All right. So I'll queue up for a 1v1 real quick. Cause it'll take a long time to catch up and the 1v1 should be quicker. So let's do that. I, I went on a pretty good losing streak last night. So the time, time for the redemption arc. Man, crazy, crazy, powerful China play. He played really good, man. He played really, really good. He did such a good job securing that whole trade route. That is so money. I guess when the other two players died, he was able to go build docks down there without them doing anything about it. I felt bad. Oh, you're talking about the sandwich in there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, poor Blue. Blue got the worst of it. Oh, my God. I saw his TC was literally in between two bases. I was wondering how he died so quickly, but that was brutal, dude. That was brutal. What do you guys want to see, by the way? I don't really care about my rank, so we'll we'll play whatever you guys want to see. I guess we could put it to a poll. All right, where are we at? Okay. If you're France, I win no problem. That's true, Professor Pone. Fran I'm not that good with French, but they're pretty cool. Uh, we'll put it to a poll. Uh, fact, Civ, HRE, Delhi, uh, Auto, or Malians. We can do English in there, too. All right, what do you guys want to see? We still have a little bit of time. So far, only pod eight is done, and ours, and ours. Okay, so there's still, we have time. There's still several other pods that are waiting to finish. Uh, the Ottomans are, uh, they're pretty fun. I, pl I actually managed to get a win with them last night, even though I'm kind of noob at them, but they see I see the potential in them. I see the potential, but you guys vote on what you'd like to see, and I'll play them in ranked, and uh, we'll have a good time together. Oh, oh man, that was quite a game.
The god tier spawn on my part. I got a god tier spawn up in the corner with no one around me. I definitely had the easiest start of everybody. Which is truly a testament to how well the Chinese player secured himself. Because he had neighbors and I didn't, right? So I was able to just kind of cackle. Vote for my Ottoman boys. Well, yeah, I'm down to play them. I know you can go like Dark Age uh, military school and like impress people with that a little bit. Seems like kind of a cool strategy. I got to maybe practice that one. The Malian Empire. Yeah, Malians are fun. I wonder what the like meta... I know the meta with Ottomans, isn't it just mass archer spam with metters? Okay, Dry Arabia. You guys look like you want Ottomans, so we'll play them. Not my strongest save, but I certainly really enjoy playing them. They're super cool. Everyone uh, choosing auto now, hoping Turin can get a win after... <laughs> yeah, no, I, I definitely uh, did not win last night very much. <laughs> I sent you C-first Turin. Uh, Tomoko, thank you, I did miss that. My message uh, meant misfortune comes uninvited. Yes, it does. Oh, no worries, Gunhound. You were under your house, eh? <laughs> hope you're being safe. I yeah, hope all is well there, man. Hey, and Robin, thank you for the donation as well. Okay, so we can't do the Dark Age rush. How the hell do Ottomans beat English? I guess just mass archers, right? Yeah, you just go like a million archers and just kind of like swarm them and use the, uh, the, the drum guy. Because normally I would go for the fast school, but I feel like that's not really a good idea here because of the... Because uh, English villagers can shoot bows, so they just don't give a shit. They're like the honey badgers. They're going to they're gonna just poke you and give you a hard time. So, dude, I've been running into so many English on ladder. It's so brutal. If it gets the late game, I just, uh, I don't know. How have you guys, in your experience, I'm sure there's some folks in chat who are quite a bit better than me. How have you been able to, um, how have you been able to beat late game English in your experience? I find if I run into someone who's like high diamond and or conqueror and they, they're English and I get late game, it's like, no matter how good the early game went, unless it was really lopsided, it's, it's hard. Yeah, mangoes, mangoes could be very good. But then what, English can also dive your mangoes with their men at arms pretty well. Yeah. Looks like, uh, there we go, looking good. Very standard here. Just gonna go 7-3. Yeah, I've, I've, wow, we haven't, look at how much of the map we've explored. Not a, we've gotten one sheep so far. Oof. That's not good. That is not good. Probably gonna go the food landmark. Although trade is pretty damn good. But um, I don't want to do the trade abuse. By trading when they're not looking? <laughs> yeah, that seems like the way. Yeah, that's pretty funny. So 7-3 is pretty standard for age up, and then you can just get the rest on wood or something. Um, okay, let's go down here. Nest the bees. Yeah, China, I feel like China can can late game trade with them. I feel like China definitely can. But what I've, most English players lately have just been rushing me nonstop. They just, a constant flow of units, and then eventually they just go castle age while you're like desperately defending. That's kind of been my uh, experience so far. Our gold is pretty damn exposed. England can definitely come down with some sort of a rush. So we have to be privy to that. Probably open with, yeah, archery range. Like, and just go double military school. We just need enough gold to get uh, up to age two, and then we go military schools from there. So just check in the back of my base for sheep. What civ would you like to see? I would, I don't know. It's hard to say. I would really like to see, like, a Scandinavian civilization. And then um, also seeing... Uh, Seeing what's it called would be really cool. All right, so that's done. So let's move over here. Go get on that. Do that. I would like to see Japan would be a really fun one too. Hey, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Do it. Everything is fair against English. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so we'll we'll see if we can find the trade posts. I feel like it's going to be too hard to trade with English pressure up in your face. Granted, autos can muster a pretty massive army. So I'm hoping that that will be the uh, saving grace here. Okay, so very close to going to the next age. Grab a couple of you guys, turn in, and we can do the uh, berry building. Because with English pressure, we're going to need, like, consistent food. So um, I think we want to do that. Do you have a Discord link? Yeah, if you go to my website, totaltavern.com, or one of the mods here can hook you up. Um, we can we can get you guys a Discord link. Okay, did we not get a food turn in? There we go. Okay. Okay, let's just kind of keep creeping around. We almost have enough for a military school. We're going to need to save up a little bit more. Hopefully, just hopefully we beat the English. Oh, wow. Did we really run out of food here? Wow, classic. Good times, good times. So good at this game. All right, so let's go get on the berry bushes. 
How did they get through those three sheep so quick? Usually I always thought it took a little bit longer, but thankfully we had a bit of a food surplus, so it wasn't the end of the world, but I suppose I should have taken them back a little bit quicker. Yeah, we're going to idle villagers for a second. Classic potato move. Um, we need to save up for two military schools, which we now have enough, so let's do this. Pull back. And now we can get the double military school. And uh, let's get a house set up here too. Good. And once we get one big turn in, we should only idle for a moment, so yeah. Okay, so turn in, please. Can we give it to me, Precious? All right. Shouldn't run into those problems anymore. I always like to, I always feel like 2TC could be pretty good with Ottomans also, but I don't really know. Don't really know. Okay, so let's just hit that wood hard. I think it costs, how much for the military school? It's 150. Yeah, so 150 is pretty substantial. Okay. We're gonna have the berry bush building soon. Make sure I make 10 trade posts, yes, that is the way. So we do see the trade, uh, I'll consider it, but yeah, with English like map control and pressure, it just feels so dangerous. So let's go see if he's gonna start streaming out dudes. He might. We're gonna have our berry bush building and I'm almost tempted to build uh, this, but let's go ahead and turn you guys in here. Go back to the safety of this and go. So we have the berry building and now we need to go ahead and get the military schools pumping out. So we're gonna start setting them up down here and just get archers coming out of those. And then we can get an archer range as well, which is gonna be uh, very necessary. Yeah, see, he's already on his way, which is nasty. The first longbowman. So yeah, it, it seems like, I bet you some YouTuber or somebody who's really good, like a top player, someone like Beastie made an English guy just saying that this is the best way to play because I've been seeing this pretty much nonstop, this type of pressure. Okay, so let's uh, get you set up like so. Let's do that. And uh, do we want to try and wall this? We could do that, but I don't know. I need, I need like every ounce of wood I can possibly muster. Okay, so let's do that, and that looks good. Although, Horseman is probably better initially. The Sipahi. Cool. We have enough for another military school, so we just have to kind of hope the English can't get too crazy here. Okay, so we got an archer range. We gotta start making some archers. And the pressure will be here very, very soon, but hopefully we'll be ready for it. I mean, we have good food. We have these berry bushes if we need. We got the English longbows looking to cause some problems. So I almost wanna wall this off. It's gonna be tricky, but we'll try it. Let's uh, pull some more bills and do that. I don't know which way he's gonna go. Okay, Sipa, he should be out soon. Okay, let's get you guys on here. Pull in there. You guys go down here. So that's so they can't like surround and get around the back of my base here. And then eventually, hopefully I can get the momentum and just get like a lot of units. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna go around the back, which is good, because I, I already preemptively walled that, so. Yeah, I was pretty fortunate how that worked out. Okay, so they're gonna need to go around the other way. Military schools producing units. The cloning facilities, as somebody in chat jokingly called them, which I thought was really good. And uh, now we need to get a military school, 100%. Another one, just to get that sweet production. Then we get the sheep tech too. It fe I feel like the Ottomans can really um, play under pressure well. Okay, looking good, do we have enough for that? Almost, we just need five more. All right, let's get you. So once we get one Sipahi, we're gonna go mass archers, we'll get a blacksmith, and then we can push out. And pressure the English, actually, once we start to get a good, you know, massive units, basically. You can see here, this building is uh, giving us some goodies. It could be feigned pressure. It very well could be feigned pressure. No, no, he's still there, but it's only a couple units. I don't wanna push out until like, cause there could be a lot more uh, lying in the shadows, right? So, all right, let's get the sheep. That's a really nice one. It just gives you a ton of food to play very defensively. And uh, yeah, he's got our gold camped, but we don't really care too much about that. All right, let's get a blacksmith. And uh, outstanding. So you need to stop making spearmen. So let's make archers. Looking good. Now let's go see if it's only those three units. Yeah, I, I guess we could kind of poke our head out now a little bit. Yep, it's just those three. So should be able to kill them. And then we just go resecure our gold and we just go to the next age from there. All right, so it looks like I get a little bit of a freebie. It's gonna be nice. Pull back the injured archer and then uh, do that. Looking good, so we got three free longbows and now we now we go press in on him. We can set you up too. All right. So let's go press, let's go say hello. We're gonna do that, get the English armor upgrade. Could even go 2TC if we want to, I'm not sure, but we need to go harass him as well. Okay, let's get the wheelbarrow as soon as possible. We're gonna need a little bit more gold for that. And uh, we can go harry the English base to an extent. 
The dreaded free unit printers are here. Looking good, looking good. No drama so far. I feel like in Castle Age, I can fight them well. Um, we're doing very, very good on food also. So we can probably go Castle Age here very soon due to how good our food is. But yeah, he's gonna he's gonna have to respect this pressure a little bit. And uh, we need to switch this over to the drummer man. Okay, so we're not gonna catch on boy here. So let's just kind of circle around his base, see what we can find. Archers are on their way. Looks like there's a longbowman right there. So let's get the ranged armor upgrade. And he's expecting pressure. Okay, so he's just gonna go castle probably. So let's go around and the other side and push. I don't mind too, because I'm about to go castle as well. So no problem. And then we just get like a million units and we just kind of do our thing. The mass Ottoman archer strategy does seem pretty good against the English. Okay, let's chase him. Just kind of harry this guy. And if he wants to move out into open field, we can totally do that. I'll be ready to advance here in a minute. Okay, we get a little bit of poke there. No problem. Let's go around the back. This is good because it's forcing him to like build static defenses, right? That's kind of the whole the whole idea here. Yeah, I, I really like how defensive the Ottomans can be. Okay, so he's like straight up walling, preparing for a late game, which is fine. So we could do like a, a Castle Age siege push against him. And yeah, he's Castle Age now, so he's going to be reasonably ahead of us in that regard. But we'll get the uh, the grand the grand armory here in a moment. And uh, yeah, we'll just keep massing units and keep pressing and stuff. So let's do this. Let's do that. Let's get the, uh, the armory. So we'll set it up back here. And pull back. And uh, just keep going. I almost want to get two TC. I almost want to get the dreaded second TC. So let's go over here. Let's set up a little bit of trade. We can start kind of playing the trade game a little bit. Because I feel like we got to plan ahead for the late game, right? We got to just be expecting this. He's going to be spamming men at arms, but we can um, get crossbows and and we should be okay. All right. So that armory is going to be coming up there. Looking good. And let's do this. Outstanding. And uh, cool trade's going to be coming up. Let's go do a little bit of exploring and kind of see if he's going to get crazy here. So the drummer man is here. All right. Cool. So trade will be coming up across the map. And uh, we can also start pumping out some bills here. Okay, let's go do some scouting. Need to get that armory online so I can start getting some mangonels. Oh shit, is he actually attacking me? For real? Okay. I guess we'll make some more archers. And we'll just start torching through this back gate here, which is going to be kind of funny. Looks like he's moving in with the longbows. He doesn't give any shits, dude. He's just straight up going for it. Alright, let's uh, take these guys out, obviously. Yeah, we're going to be Castle Age, no problem. So this this strange pressure is uh, not going to be too big of a deal, I don't think. All right, so we got 10 dudes. Let's go ahead and build some houses here. One. And uh, for this one, let's go ahead and increase the production of military schools, or the amount we can build by plus one. We build a couple of you guys. We're torching the back gates there, and you guys have finished the house, so let's get you back on wood. We can take a couple of you guys for stone, so we can obviously get some more military schools. All right. That was a very strange push. I think that might have been a pathing mistake on his part. Okay. You guys run around here. Let's do this. Start doing some trade. Nothing too crazy, but yeah, definitely want to get the trade machine going here. And another house, please. Yes. And we need to get more military schools online stat. That's going to be pretty big. We already have a couple. We have the armory, which is going to give us some pretty good map control. Uh, let's go chase down that mended arm right there. And uh, grab the Sipahi, move them into the army. And uh, yeah. I think we have enough on stone. I think that's going to be all we'll need for now. Okay, so hunting. Okay, so he's got a decent little army. We definitely need to get our archers upgraded to the Castle Age. And you can go ahead and get the ranged defense. But now we have some crossbows mixed in, so we should be okay. Okay, Sipahi are on their way. I think my army is bigger than his. It's a little bit hard to tell at this point. Alright, so let's get this. Okay, let's get you guys moving up. I could wait for the archers, but I kind of want to like press him while his army is not super strong. I love how I just have like the one janky trader. Hopefully that will force a bit of an over response from him where he's going to think I'm actually like trading substantially and I'm just not. That would be, uh, that would be quite good. Alright. So we need to get start gathering relics too. If we want to compete with them in the late game, we need to. 100%. Archers coming up to the next age shortly. And uh, religious building. Yes, please. So let's grab you. Military school. Okay. Yeah, we definitely sm smashed this army, I think. 
Okay, so let's do that. Let's just move up. Two, three. Okay, so we need to just start focusing down the longbows. Okay, perfect. So we're getting nice picks. We're killing all of his ranged. Looking pretty good. The drummer boys are doing great. Let's pull that Sipahi back. I don't know if I have enough crossbows in this army. Okay, looks like I do. So we should be able to just get that good pressure going, honestly. And uh, let's go set up some forward infrastructure by his base, because I think we had a decisive enough victory there that we can actually start to cause some serious problems for him. So we'll get a couple of minute arms mixed in just to kind of screen for our front line, mix some Janissaries out, just because they're badass, and you should always get Janissaries if you're playing the Ottomans. Okay, so let's just keep going, looking good. As far as upgrades go, let's get this and this. Outstanding, so that was a great victory for us. And now let's get the religious building and uh, just pop it down here. All right, keep that trade going. House, pick off units if we can. All right, looking good. So yeah, so far, I mean, man, that's that's pretty solid. It's pretty solid. We have that villager coming. Yeah, villager is going to set up a little outpost here, and uh, we can eventually set up a keep too. Okay, so this is almost done. We can even go two TC if we want to. Let's get you, buddy. Grab this and come back. And uh, Janissaries. I don't even know if they're the right choice, but they're just so damn cool. They're so damn cool. All right, so upgrades. Do we have enough? We don't. All right, we probably need more gold at this point. A lot of food. So let's sell a little bit. He knows we're trading now. What's his response going to be? He knows. The boy knows. Um, okay, so yeah, let's do that. Then the military schools, um, which I believe we have three of now. Yes. Military schools can produce, uh, we can produce knights. Look at that. He's, he's trying to poke there, huh? Okay, so let's just do a little bit of razzle-dazzle here. Ooh. Oh, that shot. That was so money. All right, so let's grab this relic if we can and bring it back. Grab a couple of you guys, do this, and we need to go ahead and do the Great Wall. Uh-huh. And then we need to do this. And then we need to do a little bit of this as well. So we're, we're just going to kind of press while we're um, while we're trying to... Uh, and yeah, also I think a Siege Push is going to be warranted here. So we'll grab a bunch of you guys, come up here. So he's obviously pretty entrenched here. We'll set up a Spring Alden placement, no problem. Get some more houses there. He is raiding us, unfortunately, so the trade is going to be shut down for now. Which, um, yeah, I can send some guys over to go deal with it, I suppose. All right, so let's go uh, do this and this. Okay, so we're setting up the Great Wall. We're also going to be setting up a keep right in front of his base and just straight up setting up siege engineering and the whole works, basically. Yeah, so he's entrenched. Like, pushing into the main base here is going to be kind of ugly. Do those villagers, do they all die? Hmm, that's not good. Well, anyways, that was a little bit bronze -y of me. Okay, so let's set you up like so. Get a really aggressive position here. And these guys are going to go, and then they'll come across and clear that out. Keep printing out free units. And we definitely need to get more food. So let's get you. Get you, buddy. Did he actually grab all these relics on the map? Holy shit. Usually you don't see English players go after relics super hard, but this, this gentleman did. Okay. Hopefully we can win this fight. This is going to be pretty big. If we lose this fight, we're actually in some serious danger. Shit, I don't know if I have enough Janissaries to beat all these horsemen. Yeah, I think my whole strategy, I might have just thrown the game. Okay, let's get in the tower. Okay, keep going here. Okay. Oh man, it's getting real shady. Having those guys chilling out in the keep is quite good. Janissaries do do decent damage against armor too. They are basically guns, so. We do have the spring tower. Man, I should have pulled more vills. I should have pulled more vills. Man, such a bronze Odia throw, potentially. Alright, so we got knights coming out. Maybe they'll be able to stabilize this and we can still get the keep up. Not sure. Okay, so the Great Wall is being built, which is good. We have that Spring Alden placement, so let's kill this uh, this Spearman if we can. 
Okay, looking okay. If we can get, if we can somehow push this. Okay, I don't know what this trader's doing. He's getting a little bit crazy, but let's not ask questions. I ain't judging. I ain't judging. This, the fact that we have this like spring tower here is pretty nice. Oh, there's no way. There's no way. The Great Wall is being finished though. But we're kind of trickling in units now, which is tough. So we need to gather some forces before we try and push again. And let's grab you guys and uh, set up some more of this. One and two. All right, so the gold node has been purged. Let's come down here, do this. A couple more of you guys here. Gather up the boys. And the military schools, I believe, are producing all nights. Yeah, man, such a shame. Such a shame. It was, it was a good attempt, but yeah, it was a little bit sloppy on the execution. Okay, so let's get you guys over here. Let's try and get these bills out. And now we just have to hope that the trade can somehow carry us into the sunset. Okay, back you go, buddy. Let's get you guys down here. I think this is the time for the double TC and just like endure and secure trade. Okay. Come on, company. Let's go. Come on, guys. We need to we need to survive the wrath of the English here. Okay, another men at arm drag down there, which is nice. We do have some reinforcements coming. The trade is going well, I suppose. We do have a sacred site here, which is awesome. And the trade is uh, kicking in. We could definitely buy ourselves another TC, which I think I'm going to do. So do we have any stone around to mine? Not at the moment. Okay. Are they really going to attack me here? What, what are these traders doing? Is there an opening in the wall? Why are they going that way? Oh my god. What is this shit? Okay, Janissaries will be very good against the fact the fact that he's making knights is good. Because Janissaries have a bonus versus those guys, so they'll be able to really pound them pretty good. Make some of you guys. Let's go over here and get on some stone. I like how I just have these two like random priests. Just the battle popes here. Okay, so what do we want to do? Um, production speed of military schools by 25%. Yes, please. And, oh my god, wait, why did I make a spring ult? Oh no, it switched to a spring ult! Uh, well, whatever. Might as well use it, man. You know, might as well use it. Okay, so let's make some spears, although spears are very, very weak against the archers. I like how this keep is still here. I should probably cancel that to try and get some stone back. Okay, so let's do this. Set up a second TC. We can set it up over here. He's got, like, monk battle monks coming in. Okay, and then we just make archers. Yeah, it's a pretty even trade, I suppose. I don't know, I feel like it's not going super hot. I need some of those big knights to come out of the military schools now. Alright, let's pull back to this uh, tower here. And we can do that, pull you guys back and back, gather up, and make archers, and you guys can make another military school. All right, the trade is going. I really have no idea what the trade route thinks it's doing. It's weird. The pathing on that is so strange. Yeah, they're like really hugging this. Okay, so let's get you guys back and see if we can do this. Continue chasing them. Uh huh. Make some janissaries. Gonna have to make some more uh, farms here in a minute. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, and Spring Tower's up. That's nice. That'll kind of help us against the uh, pressure. I think Men-at-Arms might not be a bad idea, but we're honestly so tight on resources right now that we can barely produce anything. All right, guys. Gather up here. Gather around, children. We got to try and survive. We had our window that was pretty damn sweet. But uh, that window is definitely dissipating here. Okay, so we're going to start trying to secure the trade and, you know, however we can. Okay, so let's just keep moving out. The dreaded English uh, push continues. He's chasing the traders, thankfully. And fighting under the Spring Alt Tower, which I'm not going to complain about. Okay. I love that I just have two Spring Alts right now. It's hilarious. Come on, guys. Come on, grind him down. I might need to build the defensive keep here, to be completely honest. Yeah, he's got knights raiding us there. So the trade is going to get shut offline for now, but we, we're, we're going to try and find a way to stabilize it. 
Okay. How are we looking here? Looks like a couple archers are moving around. And then we can do this. Just slowly start setting up a trade empire. We'll see. We'll see, man. We do have the spring. So in case he decides to just randomly get some artillery, we're gonna we're gonna have the, uh, the appropriate tools to deal with it. Yeah. I almost want to go triple TC and just be like turbo greedy. Okay, is he still gonna keep trickling in units? It looks like it. Okay. So the men at arms should be able to kill those archers, and then we can head off these knights hopefully. Crossbows. I think we just spam crossbows. Well, Janissaries are pretty damn good here, but yeah, we don't we don't really even have any trade. We only built like maybe five or six traders. Yeah, just uh, trying to poke me here, getting extra sweaty. And uh, these bills can hustle back now. They've done their job. And how is our farm eco looking? It's looking better. Oh my god, those men at arms are taking like ten years to finish these guys. Jeez. All right, so let's get you guys set up, set up a little bit of trade here, or set up a keep. We're gonna try. I don't know how this is gonna go, but we we need to get like the English can just push you all day. You know what's really sad about this is he's gonna be imperial in like just a minute. He's gonna be imp just cackling in my face. So we need to uh, we need to put an end to that for sure. Okay. Okay, so we're getting a tiny bit of momentum, which is hopefully going to yield something here. And uh, now we can get a couple more trade posts. Let's just set them up here. And just keep pushing, man. Hope for the best. Okay, we got to keep up. That should blunt the English pressure for now. Is there another patch of trees here that isn't going to be opening me up to uh, being raided? Oh, it looks like there kind of is. But... Okay. You guys get back here. Do that. Guys, turns trading. I know, I am, I'm definitely trading right now. Our food eco is, definitely needs some love. Okay, let's just keep luring him into the towers. If he's uh, not paying attention, we can maybe get some freebies here. And get those knights. And he's got a couple knights chilling over there too. So scout doing its thing. And we can start on the great stone wall here. It's going to be hard, but I think this is the only way we can win. Although he's going to get the sacreds and force me to push out. Yeah, well played. Okay, let's do this. Thankfully, I have free, something called free units. Okay, let's go get the scout here. And uh, then once we get enough units, we'll go try and pick those guys, those knights that are sitting over in the, the, the old realm over there. Okay, uh, let's do maybe this. So I think we have to just try and blow him out with Eco. Let's see how this goes. And I know the knight's riding over, so he can he can hopefully head this guy off. And the free units will uh, you know keep our armies uh, keep them afloat. Let's get the ranged upgrade for those guys. Let's move over, see if we can get those knights for now. Let's have a little tower here, which is going to be cute. And the knight will finish off his scout in my base. Okay, sacred victory is obviously going down, which is scary. That might actually work to my benefit, the sacred site in a way, because he's gonna um, he's gonna probably play really defensively, thinking that like you know he could just sit back on the sacreds. Okay. Set up more farms, please. Our eco is doing okay. We can start doing some trade in just a minute. Although, how's our gold looking? I guess our gold is doing okay. And now we have another tech. So what does this do? That's, this is the increases the gold collected by traders. Yeah, so that's going to come into play here very, very soon. Oh my god, I knew that was going to happen. I knew that was good. shit was going to happen. I just, I could feel it in my bones. I just didn't check it quick enough. And now I'm basically just dead, I think. He's just going to cackle and... Oh, that's so annoying. It's so annoying, dude. All right, so let's do this. That's, I can't tell you how many games that's been my bane. Because now I'm just going to lose like 100 bills to this raid. It's okay. Life is suffering, you know. It's, it's good to have these lessons every now and then. My comeback was there, and now it is not. All right, we're going to go try and at least decap this. I don't know. Like, can I even fight this army? I did get the breach shield. <laughs> get her done. Okay, so let's get you guys. Have them shoot into the batch of archers. Looks like he's watching here, so that's not going to fly. 
And, uh, yeah, we still have that other TC, which hopefully can finish eventually. Okay, big mango shots. Kills a lot of archers. But he's just going to jump on him with his knights now. But, yeah, hopefully we can... If we can at least survive this, I'd be pretty happy. Okay, we killed all of the archers, and most of the units are going down here. Uh, we are idling hard, though. So let's get you back here. Have you guys do this. Yeah, really? And he's running his reinforcements that way. Okay. Existence is pain, exactly. No, this is this is life. Life is suffering. Uh-huh. So let's get you guys on this and have you get on the stone. We do actually survive, which is cool. So he didn't kill us. Uh, so that's nice. And you guys have finished that off. So let's get you down here. Onto the golds. The Ottoman free units are basically the only thing keeping us alive right now. But the fact that he's not Imperial gives me like a, a, a shimmer of hope, I feel. Yeah, because he is just losing units randomly here. So maybe we can push out and decap that sacred site. Who knows? Okay, so we need to save up for that TC. Again, the only way is uh, we still manage to keep most of our eco, which is really good. So, Okay, so let's just keep grinding these guys down. Do that. we got 11 of you guys. So out of the towers, out of the towers you go. Back to the farms, please. Now let's just see if we can push out. He's trying to build a keep over here, which is kind of interesting. He's just losing bills. So maybe maybe some misplays on his part will uh, get us back in the game. Who knows? Who knows? All right, so let's get this. Yeah, no, he's Imperial. Eng England's just so, so strong. I mean, I've made, I've made plenty of mistakes here, but... Okay, so let's turn you guys in. We have enough for the keep. We do. Let's set that up here. Do that. Decap that sacred site. And uh, we're just going to get a, a keep set up to try and defend our farms here. And, uh, hey, at least we're not going to lose right now to this very thing. He did just lose like 10 bills to that, which is pretty pretty good for us. Okay. So let's get you raiding. Set up the keep. All right. Take you guys. Move over here. And, uh, yeah, there you go. The keep is going to come up at the very least. So we're not going to die to that. He did finally get that up. Set up a little tower here. And uh, garrison you guys in the keep. All right. And good. As good as possible. Okay. So that's going good as the keep is blasting. But we are losing just a million villagers. You guys come down here. Jump on the berry bushes. Give us that sweet, sweet economy that we need. Yeah, we definitely could have could have won the game. If that stupid keep had gotten up when I was pushing him and I had pulled more bills, I think we'd win the game. We, we were winning all the early trades, like all of them. Just we blundered and let it get to late game, which is so frustrating. But, you know, it is what it is. It happens. Okay, let's go shut down that other sacred site. See what we can do. Is there any way we can come back from this? Um, I don't know. I don't see it. I honestly don't see it. But, you know, whatever. Let's let's try and hope he just keeps banging his head into my keeps and just losing units. And maybe I can find a way to wrap my way to some sort of a comeback here. Okay, you guys jump out. Let's do this. And do we have any production of any sort? I know, I should just jump out. How are the pods looking, by the way? Uh, okay, looking at the pods and minimizing really quick. Okay, don't see anything yet. So I think we have a little bit more time to suffer. So let's do that together. Okay, and then we can also buy some more stone and go with another TC down here. It's the only way. It's the only way. It's just a million town centers, and uh, he just keeps trickling units in and giving us the value. <laughs> Air quotes value. All right, let's pull these uh, these siege pieces back. He's actually, oh my god, he has Barkshire on that landmark. Jeez. All right, so let's go reseal this just for the memes. Yeah, I need to pr practice my Ottomans too. I'm not very good at them, so it's, you know, obviously largely... My haggardness. Okay. Turn in, turn in. How are we looking on the old free units department? These farmers are just literally being beaten over the head while they farm. It's the best existence they could possibly hope for. Okay. We got the TCs coming, baby. Look at that. He's just got a bunch of idle units there. Oh. Oh, I'm too weak. Okay, knights. Let's go. Let's go purge the lands of these heretics. And then we, we make the, the epic comeback in the corner. Okay. Comeback time, baby. What is he doing here? He's just trickling units in. I guess trading trading those guys is probably the way. And then uh, we have you guys. Oh, do we have four TCs right now? I think we do, actually. Shit. I love it. 
All right, that's one way to keep our eco up under this horrific attrition. That is one way to do it. Um, I definitely need to get some burning oil. So, uh, is there any way I can afford it? Not burning oil, so 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 much gold. Jeez, it's 500 gold, really? Okay, so he's discovering our little rat's nest in the corner here. We'll start just massing crossbows since he's basically just making things at crossbows counter. And uh, yeah, the keep's doing its thing, but that is a lot of English game. English well boys. Okay, let's move down here. We we will abandon that that position for now. Okay, gather up minions. He's getting that one back. We can throw some arrow slits there and just cackle. Don't worry, guys. We're still in this one. Uh, Gunhound, how are we looking on the pods, by the way? Is it time? Let me know. Okay. Okay, let's see what military we have. Yeah, we got we got like a military of sorts. Our eco is 66, which considering the pressure is pretty good, but he's he's got like elite everything now. So he's certainly quite comfortable with himself. I've come back from games, but yeah, this, this would be this would certainly be a milestone to come back from. Alright, so what do we got? TC's getting torched, he's got the sacreds, although we can probably get that sacred back, we'll have to see. You guys keep going down here, keep swarming. Yes. Pull back to the siege equipment. All right. He fears. He fears our one relic. I'm sure. Okay. Keep grinding here. I do like the Ottomans though. I, I'm gonna practice them off stream so I can, you know, get these games like that, like this. Uh, we got the four free knights coming out. I mean, do I, any upgrades I want to get? It's just Castle Age versus Imperial English. I'm just kind of holding on with the TCs here, but we're about to lose that gold node, which is going to be very tricky. We got them in a choke point. Quite literally the worst position they could be in, but those men-at-arms will probably still win because they're elite. Come on, boys. Drag them down. Come on. Let's get some men-at-arms of our own, some Janissaries. I think he killed all our lumber workers. Yeah, so we're basically dead in the water. GG well played. That was stupid, man. It was so sloppy in the beginning. His attacks were, and we just like got a bunch of free shit, but that keep push was so dumb. We pulled villagers, we we idled. We should have either secured trade or all in aggressed him. That was really the big thing. All right, let's see how we're looking on the pods. Uh, where are we at? Uh, looking here. Where are we at? How are we looking on pods? Is it almost time for the finals? Maybe so. But yeah, that was kind of an indecision thing. Like the the greeting, the greedy trade behind the um, the keep aggression. That's like sp spreading yourself very very thin. It wasn't that long of a grind though, to be completely fair. It wasn't that bad. Wait, this game's gonna be on Xbox? Oh my god. How are people gonna play that? Yeah, it was a good game. It was a good scrap. I need to learn Ottomans. I don't really play them, so it's uh it's gonna it's gonna take a little bit of practice, but. I think they have a ton of potential. Like the free units, the uh, the pressure you can put on, the free siege equipment. I mean, there's so many cool things they have. There's so many cool things. Ottomans are all about archer spam. Yeah, it seems so, but Ottoman ar like spamming archers against English men at arms and longbows doesn't seem very good. Yeah, it doesn't seem very good to me. Could be wrong though, could be wrong. Uh, no, we're not waiting on pod one. How far along are they? Anyone, uh, anyone see the state of the game? I could just do an all-out rush. If we have more time, I could just do a rush game. Okay. I'll do a rush game then. All right, so let's try a match and we'll just rush. And then we'll start the grand finals after that. Yes, we need more doom wheels, correct. It'll be interesting to see, watch the China player from our, plot, uh, our pod play without fo fog. You're saying fog of war? Hmm. Yeah, autos seem fun, man. Seems really, really good. Yeah, I, I dig them. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to do a rush for you guys because this game needs to end quick because there's still one more pod going, so we have some time. Uh, who could I rush? I mean, obviously, English is the most mouth-breathing sim in the game. I could just do that. But I, I feel like a French rush would be a little bit more different and fun than what we usually do. Uh, archers with a meta and free sepa heat from the military school is how Ottomans beat English. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. That seems like a really good idea, Kyrie. Hmm. Mongol tower rush. Oh god, don't put that evil on me, dude. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. 
Oh, I forgot about the soundboard. Here, see if it works. Hold on. There you go. I should have yelled that when I was attack when I was making my epic attacks. That was actually my plan. An HRE rush? That seems kind of janky. Let's go. Let's go French rush. I'm not very. I'm not amazing at them, but I, I understand how Good it works. Luck. Have fun. Good luck. Have fun to you too. Let us see how this will unfold. Yeah, Cody. It's gonna be really fun. I'm super excited for the grand finals today. The English villager rush? Oh my god. That would be some Bronzodia shit. Hey, look at that, another English player. Well, good thing we're rushing, because, uh, yeah, it needs to happen. Oh my god, more English? Yeah. You guys like that? I thought it was pretty good. We'll do that when we get a cap charge. I'll, uh, I'll have that one at the ready. Alright. Let's try and uh, see if we can continue our, our losing streak to the dreaded English. Okay, looking good. Good luck. Have fun. You too, man. You too. Uh, there we go. I don't know the emoji for that one, so I had to kind of kind of wing it a little bit. All right, so let's get a house, and then you can go down here. Oh, that was a really really good cheat find right there. The Nomad Finals is coming. We're waiting. Um, they're not done yet. There's still people playing in games, so that's that's why we're doing these in the meantime. I've seen Nomad games go like two hours plus, so you know it's uh it's a it's a serious serious business there. Okay, we're actually having really good luck with sheep, or this map just has a lot of sheep on it, and I'm I'm just kind of you know feeling feeling like that's the case. Okay, let's keep looking around. The French the French are coming for him, dude. We gotta we gotta defeat my. You know, I used to think I was like, you know. I, like in the early days, I was like, I, when I first got Conqueror, it was with English mainly. English and Holy Romans. But um, I feel like there's a bit of a false skill inflation with English. Like when I play English, I can definitely punch above my pay grade. I feel. Then when I'm forced onto other civs, I feel like it's a little bit different. Granted, it could just be that I'm really familiar with them. I don't know. But it, it definitely feels like a bit of a false skill inflation, for me at least. I got to like relearn a lot of fundamentals, which you can just get away with not worrying about when you play them. Okay, so seven and four should be pretty good. And then we'll get one more here. You want to get the knights out quickly, right? Yeah, this is prairie. Oh, is, is, is this map known for having a lot of sheep? Is that what it is? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have found the sheep. So let's uh, go up here, go to the base. I just want to get like as fast of a tech up as possible. And that is a whole lot of sheep. Okay, so he's probably getting a similar amount of sheep as well, huh? That's actually really good for us. It's definitely very good for us. So we'll be able to just pump out French Knights, no problem, from the uh, school. And then we uh, make archers to kill a spearman. And that's basically what we do. And then, you know, like Castle Age, Castle Age, we do have Arbalists, which are pretty decent, I feel. Okay, so can we get that turned in here? Okay, there's the English farm, not farm, but there's their gold outcropping. Dude, I got, I got, I maybe had a glimmer of coming back last game, but then when he got into the wood line, it was just like, it was just game blouses. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty rough. All right, so let's get the school of calf. Now we need to start getting some wood. Did he already, really? Wait, it looks like it's done. You see that? Isn't that funny how that works? It like looks like it's actually finished. That's pretty stressful. Okay, but he's just now building it. Okay, so we'll have a French knight coming out like just in time for the longbows. Yeah, killing villagers is easier said than done. I'm gonna try. Those little guys, they got wheels, man. Villagers run pretty quick. Okay, let's get you. Switch this here. Looks good. So we just need a little bit on wood. At first, we just need to be able to make the knights. Okay. Let's kind of circle around the back of his base. Get the lay of the land. Where are we at? Oh, buddy. What do we got here? We obviously need wood so we can build houses. Okay. Hey, you know what? This is great. I haven't idled villagers. I haven't been supply blocked. There's so much going on here. Yeah, we're going all out aggression this game, though. 100%. Uh, hopefully, I finish first. I think, I think he might. He was actually building really, really quickly. He was building very quickly there. We need to just keep hitting the food. Make sure we can build the knight like right away. Okay, so see how he's pulling. 
He's going barracks already, so that's basically just all in aggression from him. So we're gonna need to um, we're gonna need to get some more lumber ourselves. Yeah, he's just like I feel like every English player is pure aggression now. It, it used to be a little bit like there would be some variance with that, but now it's basically just seems to be pure uh, pure balls deep pressure. So we'll get an archer range going. He's coming straight at me with the longbow, so we'll attack with the scout just to soften him up. It does actually matter. Like it can make your knights a little bit more effective, but we want to constantly be getting knights, dude. Look at what look at the pressure he has coming already. He's already got three units coming out. Isn't that nuts? It's crazy. Yeah, because if he manages to shut down my lumber here, like where the hell do I go? I guess just back there. Yeah. Okay, so the first French knight is out. We're going to be getting the archery range soon. And uh, I could just kill the one spearman. I could try. Let's wait for the second knight before we alpha strike in. And uh, now we need to get this, get you. Let's keep scouting, see what he wants to do. Where did he go? He's up here somewhere. Okay, he's, he's chilling. He's pulling back now. It could just be feigned aggression, but usually you don't invest in a, you know, barracks if it's going to be feigned aggression. He asked if I got any sheep. That's pretty funny. Okay, he's got a pretty decently sized army. I have a couple knights. But we need to get our archer range up. Let's get you going. Do this. And we'll fight in a minute. How are we looking on food? Be able to get another knight coming out. All right, archers. Perfect. That's going to go down. We have another knight. The knights of Bretonia stand at the ready. I'm trying to wait for him to like overextend a little bit. And then I can maybe go in and just give him the dirty, right? Nope, no, I just made a scout my, at my School of Cavalry. Not what we want to be doing. Okay, he's going to probably go for my gold node, which would be pretty catastrophic if, catastrophic if he ends up getting it. I only have one archer. Not enough to really like put a dent in the spears at the moment. Let's do that for the upgrades, because French get some free upgrades, which is quite nice. So very, very cautious play on both sides. Very, very cautious. Okay, he's scouting. Is he, where's his army, though? We need to go find his army. He could just go for my lumber line. I think uh, I think I have enough to fight him now, for sure. Okay, so we're going to go here. Do a little bit of raiding. Keep everyone else at home. Go see if we can get some bills. And uh, the gold. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit vulnerable, for sure. All right. Uh, I, think, I think we got to... I think we got to... Like harass him a little bit okay let's get in there does he have any gold workers he does not so ooh, that, that, he could be more all in on feudal than i thought okay he's got some longbows here and a lot of spears so it looks like he pulled back to his base all right so let's uh let's go ahead and push let's grab the crew he's not mining gold though which is interesting no gold is being mined whatsoever Okay, team, let's get over here. Let's do this. Let's get the ranged armor upgrade on the boys. Let's make everyone durable against the longbows. Do that and set you up. It's outstanding. Take down the dread wolf. House should be finishing in a moment. So let's go just do some night raiding. See if we can find anything. We'll just gather like the rest of the bows and stuff here and have them on standby. Didn't we have a house coming up? I could have sworn I built a house. Oh, there we go. All right, guys. So we can go castle behind this too, but I wanted to end this game quickly. Okay, he's 2TC. Okay, so we definitely need to go pedal to the metal. Is that knight going to survive? I sure hope so. We got to get the grail juice. Come on, knight. Oh, he's down. That sucks. Okay. He still has a big army though, man. Still has a big old army. Could go siege engineering, but not going to be easy. I don't know. I'm so like uh, not practiced with French. Well, it'll be over one way. It'll be over quick one way or the other. That's that's the one thing we got going for us. We do take that boy down. Okay. We have pressure coming. Do we have siege engineering? We do have the ranged armor upgrade now. So let's get you guys heading over this way. Good, good. Let's head around the side. See if we can do a little bit of pressure. It's crazy how many units he was able to muster, all whilst uh, doing this kind of style here. Okay, so let's creep around the back. And yeah, we can always just go castle. It's probably what's going to end up happening here. 
Okay, let's get into the base. Give me some villagers. Nice. I'll take it. I'll take the freebies. Looking good. I'm here for the scraps. Yeah, longbows will do pretty well against us. So we have to be careful. And yeah, we're just going to go castle behind this. I wonder if we can win this fight here, actually. Let's like lure him out a little bit further. He's got a lot of spears, guys. I don't know how this goes. So let's go, go do a little bit of a split push. And then we just come down under here. He's going to chase one side. And then we come back under with the other one. Do a little bit of harass. And cool. So maybe we'll be able to get a little something something here. I'm not sure. Let's get in. Hammer some villagers down. Attack the spears. Okay. We'll just keep running away. Get you guys into the archers here who are isolated. Very good. And now we do this and build the guild hall. Okay, that was actually a pretty big MLG play. We just caught his longbows, like, unprepared. Yeah, so that was that was very good. He lost a handful of longbows there. I think two, three. Okay, so let's pull you guys back. The spears are still a little bit too strong. Okay, let's see if we can head some of those guys down. You guys come under here. Pull the Grail Knights back. Okay, back we go. Castle Age is upon us very shortly. So we are going to have Castle and Guildhall. And we have like had some raiding success. Not much. Probably only like three or four bills. But we're going to see what we can get done. And maybe maybe I even go 2TC here. I'm not sure. Wouldn't necessarily be a bad idea for like trying to catch up. But yeah, I've been having fun with this. French, French are cool. They're definitely cool. Looks like some men-at-arms raiding into the base. Interesting. So let's do this. We got the guild hall. So let's get you guys back on gold. A couple of you guys jumping out here. Get you guys back here. And wow, where the hell is... He's got like a proxy, like... Like proxy situation against us, huh? Okay, we need to stabilize this shit in our base. Because this is just bananas, B-A-N-A-N-A-S. I don't know what the hell he's doing with these guys. Or where they even came from. But yeah, there's like a bunch of angry, angry armored dudes in my base. Okay. So let's set you guys up. Head them down. And uh, just keep cleaning up shop, I guess. Guild Hall is going to collect food. Yeah, because I think that's going to be the way. He's pressuring pretty hard, actually. Okay, kill the spearman. I have, like, no food at the moment because I'm, like, so idled. And then you guys can come down here. Let's see if we can actually win this fight. It's going to be tough. Thankfully, I do have that armor upgrade, so... And you guys need to just go jump on these deer camps and uh, these berry bushes. Yeah. Okay, so we did drive that back, which is nice. But, like, where the hell did those men-at-arms come from, dude? I have no idea. I almost want to save up stone and just build a second TC or something. All right, so we're heading back. Uh, I think I'm just, like, so behind, I feel. I mean, I'm Castle Age, but he's got just a lot of aggression coming. A lot of aggression. But thankfully, we did get that tower up, so we're going to be partially protected here. Uh, we don't need much on gold at all. This is just silly right now. Get you guys over here and uh, have you do a little secret agent action there. Yes. Good. Good. Okay, let's get some knights. Let's get them upgraded. We got the farming going there. Hmm. Okay. Yes, more knights. We're going to get that operation going there. We're saving up food so we can age up, although, I don't know. The food the food seems like a silly idea. Because he's going to be castle here in a minute. That's the problem. He's going to be castle, like, right behind me, and, you know, he's uh, he's kind of cackling there. So I guess we'll come over here and just start mining some stone. Go see if we can do a little bit of poking. I'm pretty sure he just straight up had more units than me, so. Okay, uh, let's see this. Let's go move up the map, see if we can just kill a couple, you know, lumber villagers there or something. I don't know. And uh, you guys start on the stone, and we'll, of course, uh, build that up in a minute. Okay, so villagers, nice. This is how we equalize the game, guys. He just gives us uh, villagers while not paying attention. All right, hey, three vills there ain't bad. I'll take it. Three vills there is not bad. So let's take these knights around the back and go start raiding because that's pretty much our only chance in this game. Is going to be that kind of play. And uh, yes, lure him back to the towers here. Get the knights upgraded to the next age. 
so we can take advantage of our, uh, our, our age advantage, which feels horribly insignificant right now. But we do need a marketplace. We have like a huge excess of gold, so we're going to be trying to trying to get something going here. I don't have enough wood to get the relics, unfortunately. And there's Castle Age. English are up 2TC. They're pretty much ahead of me in every way. Oh, here we go. Nice. Yeah, we need these like lucky little picks like this to get back in the game. Okay. Cool. Give it to me, Precious. Give me those eco villager kills. I sure as hell need him. Okay, here comes his army. Oh boy. Okay. And uh, let's build that TC down here. We're gonna need it. Shit is getting real crazy. Okay. Just keep carrying these units. Okay. Here comes longbows. Do we do? Do we ever get the Grail juice? I don't know if we did. Okay. So let's get another knight. Go around the top. And just kind of harry over there if we can. We can just hopefully claim these deer before he starts aggressing again. And, uh, yeah. All right. So the food, yeah, I don't think the food's going to be useful, so we're going to switch to gold. And we need um, we need wood, 100%, to start producing, like, good quality units. And uh, let's get you out here. Set up a little tower. Come around here. Get you over the top. Get you on the gold node here. And just we just got to hope he doesn't aggress for a while. <laughs> Okay, he knows we're here in the corner. The boy knows. So let's do a little bit of this. Head off another villager here. Oh, those are those are the those knights are embarrassing. They're people here. Definitely embarrassing. Hey, look at that. We're actually doing some damage. That's cool. The haggard raiding must must continue. It's our only chance. It's our only chance here. All right, so let's make some more archer ranges. And let's get in here. Move you back here. Is he watching? He is. Okay, his whole army's over here. Let's get in there. Take those guys out. And get this guy. All right, so we're actually doing some good eco damage here. I mean, he's, he's losing bills. Uh-huh. Then you guys can build this. More archery ranges. I don't think my men at arms are going to be terribly efficient here, so we're not going to probably bother with that too much. Set you up, and we got you guys. Need to get on this little deer camp down here. Okay, and you run back to the base. Gather up with the boys. And then we'll do a little bit of a frontal push here. Uh, archers, uh, probably just arbs, honestly. I think arbs are going to be the way. All right, Grail Knights, down here you go. Let's move you guys over here. Just get ready to chill. Looks like we got some more farmland down there. Grab relics. Nice. All right, so yeah, the raiding continues. And now we can move in and do this because he's probably going to pull his whole army back here to deal with this. I would wager. So, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to do something. Ooh, man, he's taking huge losses, guys. He's taking big losses all over the place. Okay, so back you go. Let's get you to the trees. Ouch. Now, as long as I can survive, you know, we'll be okay. Okay, and then we want a couple of you guys for some more stables. Yeah, okay, that was really nice. Okay, let's turn and fight. We could probably kill a couple spearmen. Oh, man, he's losing a lot of villagers back there, guys. He's losing a lot. Okay, so let's go back here. Do a little bit of this. One, two, three, four, five. Farms, please. Oh, my God. It's brutal, brutal. Okay, take the relic. Take that back, and then you can go up here. He just now noticed, too. So he might be able to just honestly keep front pressing him while, uh, while getting these raids in the backfield. He just noticed. He said, what did you kill, 10? Definitely quite a few. Definitely quite a few. Okay, just camp those guys in the corner for now. And uh, let's go set up some more farms. Okay, get those, some of those men at arms. Let's go get Friar Tux to grab all the relics on the battlefield. And uh, you guys just do this. And uh, now we can move the Grail Knights back in. The Knights of the Grail. The French harass is on. Take you, and then you, buddy, come down here. Grab this relic. Come back here. 
Ah, he finally noticed. He finally noticed. And he's got a keep too, so he's trying to trying to get to the late game basically, which is obvious. Oh no, we don't want that. Which is very smart. Uh, capturing a sacred site, yeah, obviously we don't want to do that. So let's take our dudes down here, see if we can pick off any of the berry bush dwellers, uh, if possible. He's got his keep, which is a bit annoying, but hopefully we can set up a siege workshop over here. Am I really supply blocks? It looks like I am. All right, so let's head around here, and homeboy, the relic got taken, so we might as well take the sacred site. Let's go see if we can do a little bit of harass here and get you over the top and uh, down here. All right, Grail companions. Is this, uh, is this all he has here? If that's the case, I might be able to actually get some pressure. Okay, let's just keep moving in. Okay, let's get you guys around the back. Just go be annoying. Keep you guys going here, you back here. And you guys go look for any scraps you can find. Keep trading with those longbows. So where, where, where are your goodies at, brother? Okay. So overall, the trading seems pretty good. Let's go get this last relic if we can. Take it back to the base. And uh, you guys can come and set a siege workshop up here. Yeah, we're chasing his farmers down again. All right, so let's get the Grail Knights. And uh, they can come open over the top. You guys move in here. You move into the top of the farms, run to the back. All right, guys. I think we're starting to actually get back in the game, which I'm really shocked about, but I'm not going to ask questions. I'm just going to take it. All right, let's do that. And then we can go ahead and set you up for the uh, the influence. Okay, Knight, get in there. See if there's any uh, villagers around to Harry as we start to uh, build up siege. You know, this position actually seems kind of crap. We should do um, a forward position so we can actually, like... Yeah, get some work done here. Okay, knights keep doing it. Looks like our arbs are still around. So they can keep going after villagers. We have these knights. Let's go up here to the back of the map. Just kind of keep trolling. Let's get the keep going. And we can set up some archery ranges around the keep too. Okay, you guys come down here. Have to summon the old conqueror. The old conqueror has to be resummoned from the deep. No longer shall we be the lord of the pits. We have to beat an English player today. All right, so, yep, let's keep going. Go, Grail Knights. Harass. Harass, be annoying. Fan out so his spears can't cover all the spots. All right, so let's just do this. Yeah, see, so you kind of want to, like, just tether them however you can. Yeah, so now he's going to start losing a lot, and the trebuchet pressure in the front is going to add up. Okay, it looks good. Definitely losing a lot. Looks like we may have lost our first knight. No, he's still gone. What a chad. What a chad. How are we looking? All right, outstanding. Farms, farms, farms. Aha! Keep going, Grail Knights. Wow, that guy made it? Holy shit. Look at that. Just bonking these villagers on the head, just methodically. Just bonking them. Those spears aren't able to keep up, man. Okay, do we have some more villagers to bonk over here? We do. So let's take you around. See where they want to chase. Yep, they're going to chase that one, so then I just get freebies here. I think he wants to live, so he's going to... Oh my god, he's building stone walls. He's tired of this shit. He's had enough. God, you have to work so hard to just break the English, man. It's nuts. Okay, he's got a couple minute arms diving. Maybe I'll be able to save this. Do I have any bills nearby that can repair it? I do. Cool. Okay, how are we looking on the key pressure? Is it going down slowly but surely? Yes, it is. Okay, the knights, I think, have run their course. I don't feel like getting repetitive stress injury, so we're going to just continue sieging on the front, and hopefully we can break him. And uh, we do need to take some map control, too. The fact that I haven't already is pretty bad, so let's do that. And then you come down here, buddy. Do a little bit of this. And you guys come down here, set up some towers. There's just, like, some wolf feasting on my dudes. 
All right, so let's uh, lumberjack. And where are my knights at? All right, need to go stop this guy from doing his thing. All right, so villagers are on the way. We should be able to get the sacreds here. And the, the last of the Grail Knights was caught. So now we can just go ahead and keep sieging. Keep moving up, slowly but surely. This is going to be decapped. And uh, we do have a villager who's going to be able to decap this one. All right, great. So now we get all the sacred sites um, and try and, you know, get the pressure going that way also. Okay, looking good. Is this a Spring Alt Tower? I think it is. And yes and yes. He's got his longbows. He actually has a good army too. It's crazy. Even after all that harass, homeboy is still like just cackling. Okay, burning oil's up. Pick off some of these guys. Let's uh, hit this and this. And it looks like we're there. Let's get some spring emplacements. And we'll just max a million, a million of these knights. Okay, where are the other 16 idle bills? Okay, you know, just get a little bit of stone. Sure, why not? We should probably cut down the villager production now. And uh, consider trying to go to the next age. Oh, don't want to charge into a bunch of spears. That would be a great way to lose this game. Okay, he's got a couple units that went outside the walls. So let's go for them. Not sure where they're trying to go, but let's not ask questions. Ah, oh, they're trying to shut down the sacred sites. Okay, you got it. Okay, how's his army looking? If he gets Imperial, he could beat me. He could straight up take me down. Can't believe we got back in this game. I, you know, honestly thought I was dead after that start. He was like on 2TC and shit, and it was just like, it was looking ugly, brother. It was looking real ugly. Uh-huh, and uh-huh. We can also um, aim for some trade. I don't know where the trade post is per se, but yeah, okay, it's right there. Okay, so let's uh, run past these vills. Torch this down if we can. Nice little wall there. I was about to do a huge run by into his base, so that was um, really good. And we can just, I guess we could just treb down the walls, right? Yeah. What's the concern there? We have trickles, triple spring, spring tower there. And boom, boom, and boom. So at least we have a win condition there. Uh, you guys need to go and find more golds. And we'll create a, a run by opportunity. We will create a run by here in a minute. Oh, that's not quite optimal there, is it? Okay, so let's get to the corner. And as soon as there's a breach there, we're going to take like 500 knights and just run into his, the back of his base like we've been doing all day. Okay, let's see if he's watching. If he's not, we're gonna get in and just go harass his base. Okay, we're in. It's a it's a it's a tight breach, but it's gonna work. Okay. Okay, so let's ride. Just start harrying the economy super hard because it's the only way you can beat the English. I feel. And just keeps going, and yeah, you can see villagers are being taken out on pretty much every front. We're into the base. Let's go ahead and uh, knock down the walls again. Run you guys out. And uh, I believe we're about like ready for the next age. Yeah, we should we should be going elite here in a minute. All right. Yeah. So let's run to those towers. Looking good. So let's do this. Just go after all these bad boys. Do quite a bit of damage. Okay, so those guys have just absolutely routed them off. Let's get you guys in the back and just hide you. All right, so we need to do this. And we have some villagers in the middle, I believe, which can build the um, the Red Palace. So let's do that a little bit closer. Granted, it might be vulnerable against Trebs. But yeah, we'll have to see how this all goes. Cool. So Red Palace is on its way. Uh, you guys need to go find some lumber on the map. You got these guys hiding. He's losing so many villagers, dude. He's losing so many vills. Can I not get that block there? And now now we just move into the farms back here, and hopefully that does the trick. Oh, a little bit of a cute raid there. All right, let's go do this and see what he finds. Are these crossbows? Yeah. Oh, oh, he actually just cleaned, cleaned me out pretty good there. So yeah, well played to him. Good comeback. 
Oh shit. Oh, oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. I need to get this. I need to get this. Okay. We need to get that. I, I blundered pretty hard down here. I wasn't paying attention. He was able to make me pay the troll toll. The Knights of Bretonia should be able to get down there and save him. He's losing a lot of ills in the back of his base too, though, to be fair. So, you know, both of us are kind of getting wrecked in that way. So let's garrison up. That thing becomes a machine gun when it's uh, fully garrisoned. So we're going to do that. Machine gun. Get that going. Oh, yeah. So we're both, we both like screwed up pretty hard, but I would say at the end of the day, we'd probably come out a little bit ahead there. Okay, let's do this. Get trade going. You guys can run through the walls. This probably is GG back here. This like raiding in the back. Okay, so let's uh, set you up. Although I feel like the keep pushes are kind of stupid. Because he's just, he's just like waiting for it, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is brutal back here. His farms are just getting absolutely punished. We'll keep a couple knights down here. We got long distance trade going. And, uh, yep, let's get on the farms. <laughs> yeah. I noticed I was losing villagers, but not till it was uh, a little late, my friend. Okay, so he's got a lot of dudes running around the map, but I don't know what they're going to do. Uh-huh. Do we want to build like a keep here for the influence? Probably not a bad idea. We do have the sacred victory in the pocket, too. Oh, brutal. Brutal, brutal. Okay, a couple dudes here. Let's get some knights to ride them down. We got idle vills. So you guys have been idle for like 10 years because I'm a potato. But that's okay. Um, I'm not sure where he's going with those guys. A little bit of deep reconnaissance going is afoot. Yeah, but he's got like no farms right now. I, I don't know what he's going to do. I mean, I took a beating too, but I'm certainly uh, not in as bad shape as this. Okay, he's, he's got some dudes here. I need to get that food eco going again, though. And I do have the guild hall, too. I have the guild hall sitting on 6,000, which is nuts. God damn, how is he getting so many units back? Yeah, I guess he must have had a lot of food um, in the bank, right? Uh, yeah, we'll just take it. Collect food now. Sure, why not? Okay, so let's see this. Do we have any idle vills up front? I think I have some in the vanguard somewhere, right? I'm torching down some buildings. So let's go and get this and this and this. Outstanding. We're trying to farm to the best of our abilities, but he did purge our farms down there pretty good. We'll get some of you guys coming up here. Let's get him up to the front. And we can go ahead and get... Um, we can get some men-at-arms too mixed in, I think. Although, I don't know. Maybe just the knights are better. Yeah, and the knights seem pretty good against his dudes, actually. So let's just stay with the knights. Uh-huh. And we can build them around here to get the influence. And just keep sieging. He's got some raids coming down here. Thankfully, we kept some longbows or some uh, French knights here. Should be able to head him off. Uh, Tithe Barnes is active. And looking good. So the trade is in full effect. Got you guys, which can build another keep uh, right here. Good French knights. Good, good, good. God, we're finally going to beat an English player. The dreaded English, their reign of tyranny must come to an end. He's got to be pretty crippled, though. He's got to be in really bad shape right now. Okay, so let's attack here, see if we can head these guys off. Uh, we need to get the biology upgrade. He's lost so many villagers, man. He's lost so many vills. Uh, and didn't we have a siege workshop here? We did, so we can make cannons too. All right, so biology as soon as we can for the horses. I never got the grail juice upgrade, but we'll get it now. Yeah, French knights are pretty chad for sure. They definitely don't mess around. Let's get the influence upgrade because we do have quite a bit of that. Dive that. If possible. I guess we have the sacreds as well. GG. Oh my god, Jesus. Yeah, I know. Seriously. English so bad on this map? What are, these, what are you talking about? English are good on every map. You don't even need wood. You just, like, make men at arms. Okay, so we're into the base again. I don't know if he's actually going to leave, though. Yeah, you definitely... He de lost a lot of villagers to the raiding. Oh, my God. Yeah. I saw. It was wild. All right, so let's grab you guys. Uh, we could do a little bit of this. I'll make some archery ranges. I can't stop. He might be trying to come back. I don't know. 
He said those two nights. Yeah, that's all it takes. Oh, we still got it, baby. We still got it. The old man, the old decrepit old man APMs are still there. Shit, maybe I should just play French. I should just, but it's too much APM for me. My hands start to hurt when I play like that. He did a castle in my food line. <laughs> GG. That guy was really nice too. He was a great sport. Holy shit. Oh, we've done it. We've done it. All right, time to go jump into the finals, baby. Oh, we still got, I can't, I would have been so sad if we lost that. Hmm. All right, guys, that was, that was, that was a good comeback. The, the Haggard rating was strong. You can see with like high micro, if you really push it, you can, you can get a lot done with those knights. All right, so where are we at? We're in the grand finals. Um, he's in the finals, right? Yeah. Finally, Turing got on Team France. I'm not very good at Ottomans, honestly. I'm pretty mediocre. All right, guys, enough games. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we're here with the grand finals. It's going to be Uravity on the Mongols, Acre Ford on the Holy Roman Empire, Emperor Jaren on the Malians, the Chinese by La Ratel, the Mongols with Superoxide, the Ottomans, Chris is back, Arakan on the Abbasid Dynasty, and Sir Nicholas. Hey, look at that. So Sir Nicholas is the um, is the the miniature designer who created the Demipug Knight that my uh, my smoking hot wife, who also just appeared in chat, uh, has made. So yes, it's going to be going down. All right. Yeah, we got a soundboard here. We have um, we have Howard Dean. He's there. We have um, we have Palpatine. I need to increase the volume on that one. We have we have the classic do it, and then we have the laugh as well. So we got we got all kinds of stuff on the soundboard. Yeah, on the old stream deck. So it is nomad mode. Here we are. We don't know where anybody's going to be, but oh my god, look at this water. Whoever is going to be spawning up in the north is going to be the cackle monster. Immediately, we see Uravity setting up there. So that's very, very smart, right? Setting up near the water, uh, has a nice Ovo spot right here, has a gold vein. I mean, this is a, a dream spawn. Is there a naval trading post? It does look like there is. There's one right here. So yeah, this is going to be a very, very hotly contested spawn here. Very, very hotly contested. So Uravity is going to be up in the northeast. To the west, we do have Emperor Jaren coming in with the Malian town center. To the southwest, it is going to be the Holy Romans who are going to be helmed by... Let's go ahead and take a look at what color this is. It's going to be Acreford. To the south, we do have what appears to be an Abbasid player. Is this an Abbasid? Wow, Abbasid, a very risky pick, but that is going to be Arakan. Arakan, of course, a very, very strong player as well. Down in the far south, we do have Super Oxide, who is going to be the Dark Lord of the Mongols as well. And there's some crazy formations here. I mean, look at this. You could literally have towers up on these hills. Um, is there space for a wonder? I don't think so. I. Oh my God, look at this wonder spot. Back here, guys. Back here, it's the wonder spot. Oh yeah, look at that. You just like lumberjack in and you get that spot in late game and that's like a wonder victory, okay. right? La Rattel is the winner of my pot. So you can see this was the Chinese trade overlord who had the massive uh, naval trade, which was certainly uh, doing pretty good. Over here to the west, we do have uh, the Malians, like I said, and that is it. So the players have been playing for about 13 minutes. So I can do a little bit of fast forwarding and uh, kind of find out here. Yes, yes. Hope you guys enjoyed the painting video from my uh, that my wife uh, did and we put up this morning. Amazing stuff. Going to be one of the generals of my great empire uh, army in Warhammer Fantasy. So we'll do a little bit of fast forwarding, which is great because, you know, letting them get a little ahead via the gameplay was, I think, a good choice. So I'm curious who's going to be the overlord of the seas. Honestly, this is going to be a bit of a water map. Um, obviously, the Mongols are going to be getting fishing going. They can get piracy if they want to and try and take out enemy fleets. Uh, Sir Nicholas is also going to be playing water with the French. And over to the far east, west, we do have Ottomans on the water. Wow. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Oh, my God. Check this out. So right here. We have the Holy Romans on the water, and the Ottomans are just south of them. It's Chris's back and Acreford. Oh my god. So there is going to be just mortal combat going here. Now, somebody in chat saying, uh, Cody certainly has a good point that the spawn is very good, but I would also say that Sir Nicholas's spawn is not very good. Because over to the east, he's going to be sandwiched by the Chinese. He's going to be getting bottom pressure from one of these two players and could potentially be attacked from the west as well. It's a very vulnerable center position, which I think is uh, a little bit precarious for sure. 
Hey, Conrad, you're welcome. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the stream. Yes, yes, and big thanks and shout out to Gunhound for organizing these. He is the reason these events are happening. So if you guys really want to thank someone, make sure to thank the Gunhound because he's putting in all the organizational work. Another dot coming up here. Very nice. I'm going to be giving Gravity uh, some good water presence. Over to the Far East. Even though the Chinese player doesn't have water, he does have like the best part of the map, right? He's sitting here. He's cackling. He has no natural predators. He's like when they released uh, when they released uh, wolves into like uh, you know a, a place where maybe they shouldn't be, and they have no nat. <laughs> they just overpopulate, and you know he's going to be able to take this whole landscape. Oh man! Oh my God! Look at the wonder position. Look at this. So you cut into the mountains. You get a wonder, and like oh my God! A wonder back here would be pure filth. And Uravity knows this. Uravity is a seasoned FFA player. He's like scouting it. He's like, oh my God, look at the potential back here. So we could see this. We could see this. Now, this also could be something if the Abbasid find a way to defeat Superoxide or, you know, vice versa. This could be a pretty powerful situation for one of these guys. Getting the entire south side of the map could be very strong as well. And again, we'll do a little bit of fast forwarding to catch up to the players here. As we do see landmarks coming down, the School of Cavalry for the French, no surprises there. And uh, down in the south, we see the House of Wisdom. And uh, yeah, look at that. Oh, I love it. Guys, the Mongols are packing up and moving to the hills. I love this so much. Because they were so close to blue, it was so dangerous. And now they're just truly safe in the corner. And they have everything they need here. They have a pasture set up. I mean, you lose maybe two villagers uh, by moving like that. But I think it's worth it just for the safety of position. So yeah, that's quite strong. Look at this. We do have villagers up here from Chris. Chris actually has a lumberjack up in the hills, which is pretty funny. And it looks like his scout's going to be coming as well. So the Mongols are going to be moving down to the south and trying to get away from Blue, who's obviously nearby. The French in quite good shape. I mean, all the water civilizations, probably just like in real life. You know, if you have access to trade and the sea and, and uh, you know, the food that comes with that. I'm sure many ancient civilizations settled near water for that very reason. But um, yes, this is going to be very, very strong here and uh, it is going to be tough for the non-water civs to compete with them. Granted, the water is very heavily contested, right? There's a lot of people kind of going balls deep in the water. Emperor Jaren actually not going for any water himself. Interesting, and he's... Oh my God, Emperor Jaren, where, where's his gold node? How is he getting gold? Where is this? Okay, he's got the Mansa quarry. He's got three houses, but they're not built around anything. Let's go ahead and look at Emperor Jaren's vision. Okay, guys, I don't think he... How did he get that gold though, is my question. Was he long distance mining? That's some, that's some strange stuff. I'm not sure where he was getting the gold from. Because he does have a gold node up here, but it's kind of far away. Jaren actually has a relatively rough spot. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of safe, but like he doesn't have his gold close to his base. So he's certainly paying a, a little bit of a toll. Now, these two have not begun to fight yet, but it's going to happen quickly. Look, we get the Mindverk Palace with Siege Engineering. Oh, dude, blood is going to be drawn here. Duhas is going to be blasting over those loudspeakers, and the Ramstein is coming for the soul of everyone. All right, guys. Triple barracks, triple the Ramstein. Uh, how ready is Orange? Chris is back? Where, where's his infrastructure? Um, I think he's dead. He is obviously still in the first age. Is he going to build his landmark somewhere else? He does have this wild villager over here that, uh, of course, started there in the nomad mode. But look at that. Oh, the poor guy. He's trying to set up some walls. That's not going to save him from the Duhast, which is already almost fully operational. He's got marching drills. He's got iron undermesh coming out. He's got man at arms spamming, and uh, I think Orange is going to die. Yeah, poor Chris. The Duhast is not going to have any mercy. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Holy Romans go north and kill these guys afterwards if they can manage it, right? So look at that. Oh my god, Chris is fleeing. Chris is fleeing the scene. He he, he escaped with his villagers, so he could start building uh, his, his wonder, not wonder, but his other uh, tier 2 landmark here. He's probably going to build the berry landmark so he can get a perpetual source of food. But Chris is fleeing the scene. Yeah, so he is just like peacing out. He's running to the east, and uh, I don't know where he's going to set up. We'll have to see. Yep, okay. He's building the Sultani Trade Network instead. I would have thought maybe the Berry Bush building would be better, considering that you're about to lose your main base. But um, yeah, the, the Duhast already has four men at arms, uh, producing as quickly as possible here. I don't know where the Holy Romans are getting their gold from. Um, looking around, do I see any gold nodes? I see that they're fishing well, but I really don't see where they're getting their gold from. There's like some sort of a node I'm missing. Maybe somewhere else on the map there's been a guy kind of mining here. But yeah, we do see uh, him building his landmark in the corner, getting up onto the high ground. I, I love this from Chris. Chris is going to be our favorite underdog this game, I think, as he's probably going to get pounded here in the north or the west, I should say. 
But um, yeah, it's only a matter of time. The first ram is coming. So uh, here comes the pressure. Malian's building some sofa, it looks like. So we, oh no, warrior scouts. Actually going to be getting the warrior scouts. Maybe to go torch some landmarks or something. We do see a scout and a villager to see. Oh my God, Chris. Chris thinks he's on a water map, guys, I think. Or Jaren does. Like, looking at Jaren's vision, he's only scouted... Okay, he scouted over here a little bit. He's got his ore pit. Okay, this is where he's getting his gold. All right, so he didn't see this gold up here, and he used his nomad to build the ore pit on this side. Wow, that's really rough. He might have thought this was, like, straight up an island map, because the way he's playing, he has a villager and a warrior scout in a transport, which makes me think that he is expecting there to be, like, islands and different stuff like that. So, um, yeah, he's going to finish this before he dies here, though. The Duhas is going to be clearing out the base. And the question is, will China allow him to just kind of chill over there? And China's doing a really good job. Uh, La Rotel obviously won my pod. Very, very good player, it seemed. And is able to set up the town centers and just get that huge Chinese eco going. We have China setting up the Walmart Great Wall of China in the south. So there is going to be a Chinese wall kind of blockading out the, uh, the Mongols in the south who are building a silver tree. But not really going to matter. Mongols don't have access to any sort of trade. In the meantime, Uravity is going to be really scary. Uravity is uh, already trading massively. So Uravity has a trade network going and is trading right up the middle, very safe along the coast, and might actually be one of the strongest players in the game right now. It's hard to say. I would say China with the, the, the triple TC, because if your opponents all have water and you don't, you know, three TCs will help you keep up with that, 100%. It's a little bit risky, of course, but, but yeah, should be okay. Now, over to the west, we do see uh, Sir Nicholas here with a beautiful navy. Very, very good stuff. Got some galleys, got some water going. It looks like everybody's kind of trading. And has the Ramstein come in yet? No, the Ramstein is being very, very slow to push. Uh, the military obviously getting these bad boys set up. And, uh, I, I mean, they could go in there and kill him right now for sure. But Letting Chris get his uh, trade network in the hills. Looks like he's got his two traders in there. And he's doing a little bit of lumberjacking. So even if Chris does get steamrolled here, he is going to be able to take his villagers on a giant exodus and move over there. So taking a look at China's visibility right now, China is, yeah, they've scouted all this. It just is a little bit weird how it works um, in terms of replays, but China is very, very privy to the, the knowledge of what's going on on the map. They, they've scouted very well in the North Pen uh, Peninsula and uh, yeah, they know what's going on. Still no do hosting. I mean, four battering rams is definitely overkill. Um, wow, he's building that landmark in his base. How are the Holy Romans? I'm surprised he didn't build it over here and try and restructure his empire. That's probably what I would have done, become like a hill dweller. You know, like lumberjack this out, try and build a little farm civilization down there. But yeah, it's funny. Red probably probably has an idea he's there. Uh, Red is about to go Imperial Age with the Imperial... Oh my God, guys. The Imperial Palace with the spies is going to find Orange in the Hills. So it's going to show Red that Orange has a base behind him. And I'm sure China's Fury is going to be swift and ferocious. As the Ramstein's coming in. Yeah, Chris is like, screw this shit. He cancels the armory. And it's going to be fleeing with his villagers. So he's going to be trying to get to his island nation, heading past Red. He might have to do some diplomacy with Red. We'll have to see. But overall, it's going to be tricky. More rams coming in from the Holy Romans. They are going to be clearing out the uh, the Ottoman presence here, which will give them access to this gold node, which they very much need. Akrafor does have a really nice naval economy, but he probably is lacking on gold. If we look at his perspective, you can see he's sitting at, well, 1,300 gold. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Look at this. Oh, my God. The Holy Romans took a gold node behind the Malians. And the Malians are getting no gold. Emperor Jaren is going to be very, very weak. Um, in the beginning, at least. Yeah, he's only getting gold from his ore pit on the other side, which isn't even developed. So one landmark is going to be paying the price here. The Holy Roman soldiers uh, just stormed through the lands. Going to be taking out the dock and clearing out all this. Looks like the villagers... What? Are the villagers trapped by the sheep? Look at this, guys. Look, the dread sheep. They were blocking the villagers from passing. But it looks like the sheep decided to kind of let him pass there. So it's going to be all good. Now, in the meantime, oh, we got to get that back to how it usually is. There we go. Got to get that nice perspective right there. And uh, yeah, Holy Romans have cleared out the pressure. Now on this side, Mongols trying to get their silver tree online, trying to get a little bit of trade going. Very much cackling in the corner, building the double town center to get a massive villager eco, setting up an outpost just in case it get attacked. And uh, it looks like Chris is going to be fleeing. So he is truly a nomadic Nomadic lad right now as he is forced to move to the west or the east, I should say. And uh, is going to be trying to set up his island nation. But the imperial spies have discovered him. So China is now aware. If you look at La Rotel's perspective, you can see he knows Orange is here. And is there going to be any response? Look, the Mongol silver tree is trying to get up in the hills too. 
Just everybody's like desperately trying to hide in that corner, which is so funny. I mean, oranges or green spot is good. The only issue is he only has one gold node. And to get more gold nodes, he kind of has to push past blue's base. So it would probably be the best for the Mongols to try and all in and kill the Abbasid, but that's not going to be easy. Oh my god, the Holy Romans are just hunting, dude. Look at this. So many feudal men at arms. We got 25 of those bad boys, and they're moving in. And uh, yeah, they do torch those villagers and are able to end the uh, empire here. Yeah, so now Chris basically has to be an island dweller. Look at this. Gravity is going to be going for the kill on China. Very smart. Before China can try and get to the late game, he doesn't want to suffer the same fate I did, which you certainly will. Um, late game China will pretty much always, like, in, uh, depending, unless there's insane trade for the Mongols, will typically always defeat you. Uh, they're, they're just, they're, oh, their food income and their uh, ability to build buildings quicker and just everything kind of compounds and it's very, very scary. Scout raid going down. We got the Burgrave Palace. The Burger Palace, holy shit. We're not seeing the Regnets, which I guess he has no relics, so why would you go Regnets, right? There's no relics nearby. Just just go for the uh, go for the military aggression. But Uravity is, is getting some good pressure into the Chinese. Chinese do have keeps up, but Uravity is going full aggression. He's not going to be making the same mistake I made last game. And he also has a beautiful trade network, which I'm surprised the Chinese haven't tried to shut down. Yeah, I'm surprised they haven't, but a lot of casualties for Lovertel. It looks like his only five military. China was being so greedy this game. Oh my god, he's just now pumping out spears. And look at this! Look at that, Chris! Chris with the wall off! And with the fleeing of the villagers into the hills! And he might actually be able to survive in the hills, simply because China is potentially being killed by the Mongols right now. Ooh, I like this play. So he's going after the villages, which could eventually lead to a supply block, depending on the wood situation. I think La Rotel is dead. Yeah, so Uravity, he chose the right target for his first kill. He went after one of the best late game civilizations, and now he's potentially going to be finishing him off here. We'll see. So I've got a couple crossbows and some spears, but yeah, it's only one spearman, and uh, those crossbows are not going to be able to hold. China, I don't think, is going to be able to get back online. Um, they do have a lot on wood down here. Maybe they can form a Helm's Deep somewhere if they can get a keep set up, like right here, and just like maybe get a wall up or something. It's hard to say, but uh, here comes the big keep there. Yeah, so he's going to be trying to survive. In the meantime, Chris heading to his mountain fortress. Oh my god, he's setting up a TC. Chris is going to be the mountain people. I love it. Chris is the lord of the mountains. The Holy Romans, in the meantime, still stealing the gold from Emperor Jaren. Emperor Jaren finally found this gold pit here, so he's going to be uh, probably building up those houses. Holy Romans, did they continue their pressure? Doesn't look like it. In the meantime, Sir Nicholas coming down. Sir Nicholas is able to uh, do some big, big damage to the Abbasid. It looks like he did end up winning the fight with his French knights and archers. So he was able to kind of clean up that front line, now going after the other TC. So that's going to be a huge bonus for the uh, for the green Mongols, for Super Oxide in the bottom corner, who's actually pretty weak right now. Um, one of the lower scores, but you know, certainly could come back. Now, a lot more knights raiding. Lancer's getting in there, running over the Chinese villagers. La Rattel is currently sitting at 77 eco, which is pretty good considering the circumstances. But yeah, he's is he going after landmarks? He's like looping around, running away from the spears. Trying to get on the villagers, I suppose. Looks like some of the spearmen here are going to be lanced down. Big, big charges as Uravity continues to pour the pressure on. Clearly, this man knows how to play Mongols. He's got traction trebuchets. He's got just infrastructure being set up, barracks. He is a Mongolian Chad, that is for sure. So, as far as naval combat goes, nobody's really fighting in the water. Uh, the Holy Romans are just going to keep pushing. It looks like they are Castle Age now, so they have men at arms and they have Lancenecht, and they are going to be heading to the southeast to maybe attack blue it's hard to say Arakan does reach castle age and is being pressured very heavily but a good defense as these spears are mustered against the french knights so they are able to kind of hold right there he's the smeagol of aoe4 he is he's the golem dude he's sitting chris is sitting in the mountains he's just chewing on a raw fish right now yeah that's, that's basically what's going down china should be dead in the water um Uravity is a very very high level player and should be able to kind of finish the job and again, China is pretty vulnerable, not vulnerable, but one of the best times to get them, obviously, is in Castle Age. I mean, their Castle Age is still very good, but if you let them get Imperial, it's going to be tough. Um, also, China doesn't have trade this game. We saw China last game with, like, insane trade, so they don't have that to kind of buffer them. So, uh, And Uravity does. Uravity's trading like the Heathen Kings of old. He is just... Oh, China tried to wall him. La Rotel with almost the MLG play. Oh, man, he almost got the wall off, but it wasn't enough. As the Mongolian Lancers continue to just absolutely ravage the lands here of China. Looks like they're going to be uh, forcing some of those villagers into an idol right now as the Barbican of the Sun drops some shots. But I would imagine the trebuchets will uh, start knocking down the landmarks one at a time. And China's going to be falling here. And that really is going to set up your avidity to be, you know, public enemy number one. He is uh, 
hands down the strongest uh, player. Well, I mean, uh, he's a very strong player, but in terms of like his current state in this game, he is the strongest player. There's um, there's no one that has the eco he has with that trade. Um, Sir Nicholas is very strong as well in the middle, but Sir Nicholas, um, you know, doesn't have that trade infrastructure. Maybe, you know, some decent gold mining, several TCs, good water eco, but that trade is going to be, you know, the big deciding factor potentially. Now, Smeagol up in the mountains, um, he has his his landmark up here. So he's got the uh, trade landmark fully equipped with traders. Uh, he does have this a little deer encampment, which I love. I, wouldn't it be funny if Smeagol found a way to like win? Yeah, that would be that would be pretty great. Gold node being taken here, more docks being set up by the Holy Romans. And the Holy Romans are marching to war. They're actually going to be heading down to try and finish off the Abbasid, which would be a huge win for Sir Nicholas. If Sir Nicholas managed to win this, that would probably be the most impressive considering that he started in like a surrounded position. Although the most impressive would obviously be Smeagol here. But like in terms of like start positions, starting in the middle of the map is pretty much always a death sentence in um, FFAs. Like if you if you set up like that, it's just it's just rough. But China's dead in the water. Um, they got their keep. China basically the best they can do is call for help right now. Down here we do see China trying to set up a little bit of eco. What they could do is build stone walls here. If China was able to build like a big stone wall network and like kind of wall themselves in the corner, maybe there's a chance that your avity would get attacked by somebody else. <clears throat> we'll have to see. So green up in the north. It looks like he managed to get a little bit of a rat's nest empire. So see, see Proxide has just the random step readout and the white stupa in the north. Oh my god. Look at the Abbasid. The Abbasids are trapping him. They set up a tower here, and the Abbasid military is very aware that the Mongols are here now, and they're going to be trying to flush them out. But, I mean, uh, Super Oxide is going to be able to survive, and this is the strength of the Mongols. They can move, they can pack up, they can definitely do their business, as China's entire empire is going to be torched by the Mongols. We will have to see. So, Green, yeah, he's holding it down, man. Arakan, uh, enemy destroyed Arakan's landmark, so Arakan is paying the troll toll. That's pretty unfortunate. The Duhas has come in. Guys! This is what sucks about Abbasid and FFA, dude. They lost their main TC, and now there's a bunch of rams going for their, their main one. If he loses the House of Wisdom, you just straight up lose the game. The Holy Romans down here crusading, taking it to the Abbasids here, as we get all these rams just moving in, and you can see the desperation as the villagers of Arakan are trying to take down the rams. But ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Roman Steamroller is continuing to just kind of eliminate players over here, which is just... Oh, I love this play from Arakan. The Wolo Low. This could save his empire. It pushes back the Holy Romans, but those battering rams are still going pretty strong, guys. As his uh, his second landmark is probably going to be going down here. Feels feels a Basset, man, losing this. As the Holy Romans do also have a counterweight trebuchet, which is going to be blasting this landmark. So, yeah, that is going to be the end. Sir Nicholas is happy. That's probably one less opponent he has to worry about. He was obviously in a very pitched fight there. China is running out of landmarks very quickly. If we take a look here, we see the Imperial Palace. And China has fallen, so uh, Uravity really looking to be a tyrant in this game. As he flexes his FFA muscles, showing that his timings are really, really good. And he's not going to be showing any mercy. So two players die at once, literally in sync with one another. We have the Abbasid um, dying down here. And over to the east, we have the Chinese falling. Wow. That's something, man. Smeagol now has this entire empire to himself, guys. Maybe, just maybe, he's going to be able to get a little bit of action back. He does have a military school, doesn't really have much of space to work with. But honestly, you just got to lay low in the mountains, I would say. Um, obviously, Uravity is going to be purging this empire right here. Just going to be going around and uh, burning down all the buildings to get the loot from it because Mongols do get a reward for doing that, which is pretty rad. Sir Nicholas playing the French Helm's Deep, which is smart. I think at that point, that's the way you do it for Sir Nicholas. Maybe try and shut down uh, your opponent's trade here. He could go and like set up a little bit of pressure, but... Well, the issue is if you if you poke the head of the beast, you know, your avity might all in you to try and protect his trade. But if you don't do it, then he's just going to become insurmountably strong and you're probably going to lose the game, right? So it's, it's a bit of a double-edged sword. Uh, the Holy Romans, pretty secure. We have three monasteries here. Is he trying to grab relics? Do the Abbasid have... Oh, the Abbasid do have some relics in their base. Okay, they have at least one. But it looks like the Holy Roman War Machine has chilled out for now. And that actually allows the Mongols to live here. So it looks like we might have seen a situation where the Mongols and Super Oxide could have paid the price. But now he's able to kind of survive and maybe even thrive down in the corner of the map. So we'll have to see. Up here, what do we have? It looks like there's a loose relic right here. I would imagine that your Abadu will grab that at some point. This wall never quite got finished as the uh, Chinese were attempting to block the trade, but they weren't able to get it. Step read out. Looks like it might not be able to fit through there. A little bit strange. Prayer chant coming down to grab the relic as well as that sacred site. And uh, do we have any more conflict in the south? It does not look like it quite yet. 
Sir Nicholas just Helm's Deeping. He's just playing the classic French turtle, where you just get use all your stone from the guild hall and uh, you know you live your best life in that way, which is quite good for sure. Some more rams down here. And uh, are they going to be attacking anybody? I'm not sure. We do see a big tower coming up on the hill from Super Oxide. Kind of spy on his opponent's landscape. Wololo -lo -lo coming down. And is he going to be Wololoing -lo -lo that army? Look, the Holy Romans took all those uh, those soldiers. They took the crossbows and the archers. Yeah, look at that. They've, they've joined the, the... They found the power of the Jesus. And now they're going to be going to join the Holy Romans. So over to the east, what do we see? We do see the town center coming down. And another town center from the, from the Ottomans. Smeagol has emerged from the hills. He is here, letting loose a mighty battle cry as he uh, as he moves up from the hills and uh, goes for the, That just makes me laugh every time. Sorry, guys, I couldn't resist. As he moves down from the hills to secure this uh, this land that China once had. The Ramstein, will it march on? Is he going to be continuing? It kind of looks like he is. Holy shit. Acrofort is being so aggressive with the Holy Romans, man. He is just just getting the, getting the boys together and... Uh, Looking to keep fighting, but the French are not going to be an easy fight. They have like hand cannoneers, they have elite knights, if I'm not mistaken. They have a very, very elite army, which is going to be very tough to deal with. And it looks like French are doing a little bit of raiding, trying to shut down Super Oxide's presence on the central area of the map. And uh, Smeagol has moved down from the hills, setting up military schools. Dude, could we see the comeback of Orange? Could Chris's back make his way back into this game after literally having a horrific spawn here and just getting absolutely run over? Yeah, I knew, I knew Pwn would appreciate the BR. Yeah, that's pretty great. Relic sitting here. Looks like there is any mom kind of sitting there with that bad boy. Good grab that one. The Mongols are also freed from their uh, their pen now as well. They're able to kind of move out and take some map control. Jump on these woods here. Not much gold though. That's really the problem for the Mongols, man. And also no access to trade. They're really trapped in the corner. So this isn't this isn't the uh, this isn't like the best corner position. Corners, you know, they do have that risk. Sometimes you can be a little bit far away from the action. So. Heading up to the northwest, we do see the Emperor here. He is uh, sitting with the Siege Workshops, freeing by Garrison. Uh, no real action that's too crazy, although what is this? In the middle of the map, we do see a keep coming down? So Jaren's going to be setting up a keep like right in the epicenter of several empires, which I suppose isn't a bad idea. Looks like he's going to be taking down that Imam there, maybe trying to set up a school of his own to get that relic. We'll have to see, but yeah, I don't know how he's being allowed to do this. Like, he set up a, an ore pit here. The French are chilling. You know, Uravity's nearby. But Uravity is just so villainous right now. He is so villainous. Now, we're not quite live. I could fast forward a little bit. So I'll do a little bit of fast forwarding as we speed up here. And we can do some... Uh... But yeah, this is wild how he's allowed to have this presence. I mean, he's taking a lot of stone away. He's actually, you know, taking some of the gold off the middle. But um, yeah, public enemy number one has got to be Uravity. Like, we'll take a look at the public resources here in a second. Looks like there could be a little bit of a conquest coming. We do actually have a fight here. So we have the Holy Romans. Okay, it's weird. It's like, even though I slowed it down, it seems like it still is like rapid firing. Okay, can we pause that and then go? There we go. So yeah, we have the French and the Holy Romans fighting. The Holy Romans actually getting pushed back pretty badly by Sir Nicholas. Does Sir Nicholas have anything to take down the keeps? It doesn't look like it. And the Holy Romans are kind of using the dreaded Reaganomics as they do kind of trickle those units in. And uh, some of those guys are uh, getting pounded. As they move in, the trickle-down theory is on. Uravity has had enough of these shenanigans. He is the only Mongol power in the north, and he is going to be able to take out Super Oxide's presence here. So Super Oxide is going to be forced back to his uh, rat's nest in the corner where he doesn't really have too many resources. So, yeah, this is going to be the uh, step readout going down. Looks like there is one cannon tower, which uh, I'm sure he'll move and take. But look at this. We have the town centers trying to flee. Look at that. The double town centers trying to flee. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm surprised they're having Jaren is doing this, but this is putting a lot of pressure on Sir Nicholas. It's going to be for, kind of forcing him back a little bit. I can't believe nobody's trying to shut down Uravity's trade. I mean, I guess people just don't know about it because it's very a very slick trade route that you can't scout from this direction, really. And uh, yeah, look at that. Both town centers are taken down, man. Brutal, brutal. So that's going to be setting Super Oxide back. Smeagol's coming, uh, coming out of his pen here, guys. Chris's back is growing stronger by the moment. But um, the issue being is that he's not going to really have good gold. There's not going to be any sort of big trade or relic presence or anything like that. So now this uh, whole northern position, you might as well pack up the white stupa as well as the step read out and start running it to the south or trying to hide it in the corner. As these lancers are going to be able to kind of clean up everything here. Holy Romans were pushed back, but they were able to stabilize. Sir Nicholas seems very strong, but also in a very, very precarious position. Potentially being pressed by the, uh, the Malians here. Emperor Jaren, and uh, yeah, just very, very heavily surrounded. And once Uravity kind of finishes with the north, I can totally see him crushing to the south. 
Because nobody is aware of Smeagol right now. Nobody is aware of him. Like, he's just kind of hanging out. Nobody is even thinking he's a threat. They probably just think he's he's mostly dead, hiding somewhere in the corner. But he's actually starting to take some decent map presence. Uh, granted, there's not too many resource nodes over there, so we'll see how good it actually is. So the White Stupa and the Step Redoubt, 100% going to die here. There's no way those are going to get away. The Green Mongols in the corner just kind of cackling and, uh, you know, mining and building villagers and enjoying their best lives. They are going to be losing two very powerful landmarks. The White Stupa does give you a, quite a bit of gold or food or wood per minute or stone. Jesus, Mongols. And the Step Redoubt uh, is obviously great for reasons. It gives you 50% more gold on each node that you are mining. So losing that is going to be a little bit painful. Nothing at sea, man. We, we see two galleys coming out for Sir Nicholas. It seems like there's like some weird like trade pact where they don't want to like kill each other's naval trade. But what's going to happen is your avidity is going to get so rich. You guys want to take a look at the resources? You ready to be disgusted right now? So looking at the, oh, we can't do it. No, that's weird. Okay. Well, we can look the manual way. So your avidity is sitting on 21,000 gold. I guarantee you nobody else is nearly close to that. So we can look at Jaren who's at 1.5. Uh, we look at Sir Nicholas, who's at 7.8. Uh, we can look at Chris, who's at 123. And Acreford is at 2,000. So clearly nobody is, is is doing it, right? So Emperor Jarn is actually being attacked by a Holy Roman keep push? What is this wild ass shit? The Holy Romans just randomly just went to go build a keep in the middle of Emperor Jarn's base. And uh, holy shit, what the hell happened? Oh my God, I look away for one second and the Holy Romans get steamrolled. Who did that? It, it was the sofa. So Emperor Jarn actually wiped out the Holy Romans in literally a blink of an eye. I look away for like a minute and they're just able to come down there and steamroll. Oh my goodness. Wow. So, okay. Emperor Jarn, the Lord of the Malians, is securing a northern patch for himself, which if there was some trade here, maybe. It doesn't look like it. We have the Ellsback Palace here and the Holy Romans are going to be building multiple TCs. And uh, one, two, and uh, yeah, Ellsback will help them survive for a moment. Holy Romans bringing back some units. They got their sheep hustling over. They have their keeps, and it uh, looks like they do have a relic down here as well. But Emperor Jaren is on the warpath, man. And he is going to be able to probably, probably finish off the Holy Romans, I would imagine. Any other conquests? Um, Smeagol is setting up his empire, man. He's getting those big walls, and he's got that nice corner position now. So at the very least, he's going to be able to kind of spam horsemen and troll, like CP he and, you know, do all that kind of stuff. Do a little bit of fast forwarding to try and catch up to the live time of the players. It looks like enemy attacking the landmark, which I think is these two. Uh, I don't think we're seeing any other action outside of this. It looks like your avidity is coming and just kind of cleaning up the scraps here in the north, which of course is working well. We have a silver tree hidden in the trees here, and this landmark looks like it's going to be going down. So there are trebuchets and the Malians are coming in from the north to finish off the Holy Romans. And now they just need to take down the Ellsback Palace, which um, shouldn't be too hard to do, I would wager. Gravity setting up archery ranges, moving his buildings, showing why he is he is the lord of the Mongols. And yep, nice sofa play. He's making him sit on that comfortable sofa. Oh, this is like one of those sofas that's certainly not too comfortable for the opponent here. As the dreaded a triple TC is out, Holy Romans is the right idea. That's pretty much the only way to come back when you're really in the pits is to do like a triple TC. And what the hell is this? There's, there's a Mongol town center attempting to be placed here. It looks like somebody's trying to move over. Gravity sharing gold with uh, Chris. Looks like they're good friends. They're going to be uh, sharing this node right here. Obviously, the node will be uh, cleaned out pretty quickly in that case. And uh, nobody is contesting Gravity's trade. Hey, there you go, finally. Sir Nicholas putting in a little bit of work. Going to be killing some traders. That needed to happen like 10 years ago. Hey, look at that. Oh, yeah. What a play, dude. The revenge of Super Oxide. So he built some docks before they were killed. And he built bow chads. And he drove Uravity out of the water. Okay, guys. That changes things. The trade route is cut off. Uravity uh, does not have the fishing. He's going to have to get his pasture economy going. He's setting up for a wonder. Uravity setting up for a wonder, guys. Beautiful spot for it, too. Oh, my God. Look at this. Is he going to go for a wonder with this many players in the game? Super Oxide became the Pirate Lord. Yeah, no kidding. His bow chads there. Able to really, really clean out his opponent. Looks like there's going to be a Malian Town Center coming as the Malians have not discovered this Holy Roman position. It looks like Emperor Jarn is going to be moving there as well. And here they come. Yeah, should be able to clear that out. I'm not sure why they're not finishing them. Maybe there's some sort of a weird vassalization going down. Nope, doesn't look to be the case as they will be moving in and uh, taking down these town centers. So there they go. The French just helms deeping it. Very, very uh, Nelosi style, as I like to say. And uh, we do see keeps and red keeps. 
So killing the French would certainly not be easy. Um, you would need to bring a lot of siege equipment, and uh, you wouldn't be able to just kind of steamroll them with basic units. But yeah, Uravity's gravy train is over. Um, that trade is not going to happen. Sir Nicholas is going for blood. He's going to try and kill Uravity, whereas the Bowchad here is uh, bombarding the French army as they do move. It looks like there's some cannons. And will the Mongols be able to defend this? Sir Nicholas is actually very, very strong, guys. So here comes the Royal Knights, and they're backed up by hand cannoneers. A couple of cannons going to be moving up. It looks like they do snipe down that bow, Chad. And here comes the fighting as the French Knights engage against the Lancers. French Knights are stronger than Lancers, unless they have the improved Uvu biology, in which it becomes a little bit more even. But even still, French Knights have regeneration. They have a charge bonus. Uh, a lot of good stats. So Yavity actually being pressured now, which is going to be forcing him to spend some of that gold. You can see he has no gold income right now, but he has such a good bank from trading for so long that he should be okay. Bombard cannons are getting in, and they're actually uh, taking down some of the pastures, which has got to feel pretty good. Traders are trying to make their way back, but uh, I don't think they're going to be allowed to trade, as the two galleys are kind of quarantining here. And, yeah, Holy Romans pretty much karate chopped. Um, the Ellsback Palace is in the corner. I would imagine Emperor Jarn will discover that in due time, as the Holy Romans are basically, uh, you know, a broken empire. They're going to be running across the map and just trying to, you know, pull a Schmeagle somewhere and survive. So, this is a great match. You know, I'm always, there's, it's always kind of the, the upside of when, when I do lose in the first round, instead of making it to the finals, is we get to see the full perspective, which I think is better, honestly. I should probably just, like, not play in these, just so we can guarantee it. It's just so much better when you see everything. It's so much better. All right. So, over to the east, we see the Great Wall of uh, Schmeagel coming up. He's got the Great Ring hidden back here. Seagate Castle in the back corner. Very, very nice. And look at this. Man, Chris is back. That's his name, and it actually is quite fitting as he is now a player in this game. Here you can see uh, Sir Nicholas able to have a nice little attack there, but it was thwarted by the Mongols. He obviously didn't have the supply line, so he's gonna need to be taking a little bit easier. And we do have the Pirate King. So we have uh, we have Super Oxide, the great equalizer. He's just like knocking everybody out of the water with like two ships, which is pretty absurd. So that's gonna be setting back Sir Nicholas as Gollum is gonna be moving into the middle of the map and he's gonna be taking all this gold right here. So that is going to be uh, that's going to be very strong. Green, in the meantime, just kind of look at this. All like the, the haggard, you know, scattered empires are like setting up in the south. You have the green Mongols here just trying to survive. Then you have like the Holy Romans here chilling out. But yeah, it's going to be game blouses for the HRE. They don't have any more landmarks unless they can build Ellsback real quick. Not Ellsback. Oh, wait, no, that is their Imperial landmark. It is Ellsback. But yeah, it's going to fall. And uh, the Trebuchets are going to knock that bad boy down. And that will be the end of our Holy Roman uh, Emperor, who actually had a really good game. He knocked out two players. It was very, very aggressive. So, uh, yeah, I, lo I love to see the Duhas, man. It's one of my favorite play styles is the aggressive Holy Romans. Granted, it's not their strongest play style. But, you know, when somebody starts literally within t striking distance of your TC, you have to do it. You don't really have too much of a choice. So, it looks like Sir Nicholas might have stabilized the water. Nope, doesn't look like it. Literally, everybody got pushed out of the water here by Superoxide. And there's no more trade for the Mongols. Uravity has a big bank, though, but he currently has no one on wood. Is there no wood for him up here? Yeah, he's... He, dude, Uravity has, like, no wood except up here. Okay, he's going to have to move up that way to get that. In the meantime, check this out. The Sipahi and the Elite Knights, backed up by the Janissaries, they are going to be... Uh, Potentially pushing and attacking. I would be. I wouldn't be surprised if they come over here and try and shut down uh, your boy Uravity and keep him out of the middle, which would be a very very strong play. Sir Nicholas, in the meantime, gathering up a Doom Legion. So he's got all of his elite royal knights. He's got his hand cannoneers and company, and they are all hanging out and good to go. Over here to the east, we see more knights. Where are they going to go? I definitely think you got to you got to take down this. You can't let him have those resources. But yeah, no, Smeagol is straight up getting all the resources here in the middle, like all of them. A little bit of Haggard rating coming in from Super Oxide. He's got a couple Elite Lancers who uh, are not upgraded at all, but they're going to be able to get some Torch bonuses, which is quite nice. Your Nicholas grabbing some resources here, and he still has a couple nodes. And obviously, Naval Trade could be a factor as well. Somebody could Naval Trade here with one of these trading posts and be very, very strong. So the Mongols trying to clear out the galleys, but the galley ships uh, put a little bit of poke on these guys. Is Orange going to bring his army over is the question. He definitely could trade well into the Mongols, since Mongols are so heavy on armor as well as uh, cavalry. The Janissaries would be able to just pop them in the face and uh, really, really take them apart. So I would imagine Orange's army will... Uh, yeah, okay. This is, this is going to be a little bit of a conflict here. We see the Orange villagers actually torching that. Now retreating uh, probably southward to go get one of these other gold nodes. But yeah, the Orange army should move over. Um, Chris really needs to move over here and get on this. So 
All right. I wonder if Chris is going to change his name to Smeagol after this. Is this name going to stick? Is this going to be his, uh, his, his, his future? The Holy Romans have fallen. So the Emperor is no more. And we see Sir Nicholas coming down here to finish off the threats from the south. So they're going to be moving on here to push into the town center as well as all these uh, stables. And this could be the end, actually, of, um, of Super Oxide. Let's see. So he's got his town center landmark. No, he's hiding his actual town center in the trees. That's so troll. He literally uses it, like, that's the thing. Mongols are so hard to finish because of that. They can just, like, hide shit around the map. He has nothing to... Oh, my God, and he's repairing up here. He can repair the white stupa. Oh, my God, that's so troll. I love it. Just, Mongols are definitely really good for being scrappy. Like, you know, you can... If there's multiple people in the game still, you can, If it's one-on-one, -on -one, yeah, you're going to die. But if there's multiple people, you can get some work done. So, yeah, um, Super Oxide here. He's going to pay the price. This is probably revenge for uh, killing uh, Sir Nicholas's entire uh, navy there. Did Sir Nicholas get any food economy going? He's got some farms. Got triple relics too. Very nice with tithe barns. A decent little farming economy. Seems to be pretty well rounded here as the Mongols down here are completely steamrolled. So there you have it, man. Are they going to be able to get back? It's basically just running and just kind of being the rat in the corner now, which is one of my favorite things to do. We have the silver tree being hidden over here. So literally landmarks just hidden all over the place. Silver tree is going to be, it's going to be walled in. Look, silver tree is getting walled in. I don't, I don't know if he even knows it's there, but um, he could definitely torch that. But Yeah, Sir Nicholas just absolutely destroying that Mongolian base in the corner. No chance for that one. Emperor Jaren is securing a nice northern empire. Now, the question is, can Emperor Jaren get some trade going? Um, if he can, he could become one of the big powerhouses. But without trade, it's probably going to be very tough to do that. Uh, like, if you could get, like, a market down here, and if there was somehow a trade post up here... Maybe he could work out something with one of his opponents who's also weaker, but I don't think there's anybody that would want to trade with him right now. So, yeah, Jaren has a really nice position. His base is hard to attack. Gravity just preparing for a wonder, 100%. Like, look at the, the planning that's going into that. Like, he, he started doing this so long ago, and you can see there's actual cannon towers being built. So he is really, really planning for that wonder at the moment. So, yeah, here comes the raiding force from Sir Nicholas heading to the north, heading off villagers, riding them down, and making sure to kind of secure the lands here. So you can see the villagers getting karate chopped. The hand cannoneers are right behind them. And really, you know, this is this is a situation I've been in many times, trying to finish off the old uh, the old uh, <laughs> Mongolians as they, they scurry to the corners of the map and uh, very, very nomadic lifestyle, obviously. Gravity, though, is being allowed to get this gold, which is not good. He's probably going to win the game if this is uh, allowed to continue. Trade coming in from uh, Schmeagel, but it's not like amazing trade. He does have Seagate Castle and some other tech that can help with trade, but overall, um, the trade should be coming from further back. Like back here is where you'd want the trade. I think it's literally just going like right up here. Yeah, that's a pretty mediocre trade route. It's better than nothing, but why is Orange not doing anything with his army? Okay, it looks like he might have fought something. His army's a little bit damaged, but he needs to punish your avidity. You can't just let him do this. Oh my god, look at the Cannon Lord! The, the Lord of the Seven Seas, Super Oxide, setting up the bow chads all over the place, dude. All over the place. I love it. And, oh my god. Man, I love how scrappy Super Oxide is. He is such a scrapper, dude. Just not giving up, just constantly moving about. He's, he's getting routed down here, but he's still setting up the naval fleet, which honestly could really, really punish um, the trade. Looks like there's a little bit of trade going down. Where is he even trading? Where is he getting that trade? Okay, he's still... Wow, they're letting him trade again, too. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Orange needs to just take control of the center, like hardcore. He could. He's got a good army. He could go and take all these villagers. And, you know, the army of Yuravity isn't actually that strong. He's not even maxed out on supply at the moment, actually. So Sir Nicholas is just looking to finish off the Mongols. And it looks like Sir Nicholas is going to be engaging against Smeagol. And if Sir Nicholas ends up fighting Smeagol in the mountains, then it, it probably gives Yuravity the game. If those two go into, like, a big war with one another... I think Gravity will probably take the game, 100%. We'll have to see. Looks like he's getting in, doing a little bit of raiding. Cannon's on their way. But Schmeagel is not going to be an easy one to fight. Yeah, and you can see a little bit of a fight here as Janissaries do engage against the Hand Cannoneers and some of the other French units. Uh, and now the French Knights are going to be, oh my god, oh my god, 47 villagers potentially about to die for Schmeagel, which is going to be tough. What is he sitting at? Um, he's sitting at 125, so it wouldn't be the end of the world. But yeah, diving these cannons with all those villagers seems a little bit uh, precarious. I don't know if I like that. Yeah, just literally losing like 100 villagers to kill like two cannons maybe. Oof. That's a really rough one. And yeah, it looks like Sir Nicholas is going to be going to fight him, which, again, a big mistake while Yuravity is just trading here. Um, Schmeagel doesn't have access to like oppressive trade, so he's not going to be as strong. But um, yeah. 
Somebody's got to deal with your Avity's trade, or else it's just GG. He's just going to build a wonder, and we'll see if it's too late. He, he's very close to building a wonder. Chris is actually, wow, look at Chris's back. He's actually very rich. So your Avity's sitting at 37,000 gold, guys. 9,000 wood almost. So that's when the, the wonder is going to come up very soon. Like once one more player dies, I suspect we'll uh, we'll see a wonder. So Smeagol's going to be retreating back to his empire as Sir Nicholas does purge the outskirts of the empire with a very, very nice French force. So the Arbalists as well as the elite royal knights are able to do some really good work. But Sir Nicholas is going to be forced back as we do see bombardments coming in from Superoxide. So he's taking down the, the French coast, which uh, will do a little bit of damage. I really do think he should be killing the trade. Like this is this is just so this is gonna be so backbreaking for everybody. It's gonna be so backbreaking. So Nicholas actually finds a way in. His cannon's able to kind of get into the base here. We do see an Ottoman keep, and the Ottomans do have some Janissaries rushing forward to defend. But uh they're gonna get run over by the knights and hand cannoneers. They just don't have the numbers to really fight that. And could Schmeagel be in some danger? I don't think so. Like, yeah, look at this. He's got the royal bombard up on the hills. How cool is that? How cool is that? Just a huge high ground cannon just bombarding. I feel like there's that's probably happened in history, hasn't it? But this keep could be in danger of dying. The Royal Bombard Cannon, can it reach? It looks like it is able to reach. So one, two, and boom. There it goes. Knocking down another cannon right there. As uh, Sir Nicholas is going to be harried on multiple fronts. So now he's moving up. And I think Sir Nicholas is going to discover Euravity's trade. Really nice pick here. He actually kills a fair amount of these villagers who are uh, mining there. And uh, he needs to shut down this trade and just forget about Schmeagol. Schmeagol is, uh, is, you know, not super strong. So I think you got a, you got bigger fish to fry. Superoxide and uh, they probably need to work together to take down you know this. But again, it's easy for me to say that because I have all the knowledge. I can see everything. Uh, they don't necessarily know how strong they are. Superoxide actually getting torched once again by Uravity. So Uravity sends some Lancers up there. Superoxide uh, trying to get trade ships, which I love actually. Okay, that's actually bringing back a fair amount. The Bowchad fleet needs to be blockading the coast once again. Uh, I think when they were sitting here, they were the most effective. It did mitigate a lot of the pressure coming across, and the Chads are just kind of sitting there and chilling right now. Now, Perjaran is just kind of on his own here. Looks like he's setting up a lot of stables. Got a nice little military right here. He's got stone walls in the north, so nobody can really press him. So Jaren could also be a threat. If Jaren can find a way to save up enough for, like, a wonder, he could be, like, uh, definitely a threat in that regard. But, yeah, he's not quite getting that gold he needs. And uh, looks like he's trying to set up a naval presence again, building a bunch of docks. But here comes the Chads. Chad's going to be heading up river. And uh, it looks like gravity was pushed out of the middle there. Sir Nicholas is still attacking the Ottoman Empire. And they're getting a little bit of work in there. Yeah, they're, they're taking down whatever knights kind of scrap their way out. Janissary is desperately rushing out to try and deal with the French knights. But they need to consolidate their forces before they try and uh, fight that here. So here comes the Chads. And we do see the trade ships. And how much are they going to bring back? Eh, 38. It's not insignificant. I mean, you know, you got to do what you got to do. But yeah, your Avity is just absolutely pounding Superoxide's base up here. So there needs to be a little bit of vengeance going down. He needs to get these, like, these big warships and start bombarding all these traders to keep him from just cackling. Because look how much he's bringing back. Stone, wood, food, like everything. Oh, man. Where is he going? He's going the wrong way. Bit of a shame there. Sir Nicholas, though, in the meantime, continues to fight Schmeagel. Schmeagel just holding on, trying to bite his finger off. We'll have to see how that unfolds for him. Some elite knights coming out on both sides as they do keep trading. But um, yeah, that is good pressure. It looks like the Ottomans are trying to reseal the wall. Uh, so they're building this up. They have a couple of hand cannoneers here, which might be able to kind of uh, dispatch that builder. But it might be able to kind of secure. I would imagine Sir Nicholas, um, yeah, it looks like he wants to finish off Schmeagel. He keeps sending his units over there. These battle chads not really doing a whole lot. Just hanging out and just, uh, you know, definitely should be here killing these traders. He's aware that that's happening, I'm pretty sure. So looking over at Emperor Jaren, somebody in chat asked, what is he doing for food? Well, uh, he's got a lot of food. He's got trade. You can see a lot of farms. He's got fully fledged cattle ranches in the back. Very standard for Malians. And even is developing a little bit of fishing. But overall, it looks like it's mostly cattle and farms, which is all you really need. So Sir Nicholas is about to get sandwiched. And this is, this is why his spawn is probably one of the hardest spawns to win with. I think he needed, he needed, he needed Smeagol to be fighting Uravity. And he needed to be fighting uh, Emperor Jaren's push that's about to come. He's going to be forced back super hard, and then Smeagol's going to be able to get his bearings again. That's a lot of cannons, and are those the Royal Cannons? They're just regular cannons, yeah. It looks like he built the Red Palace, which is the better landmark. Um, the Royal Armory is okay, but Red Palace is, is really like a big, big difference maker in terms of landmarks. It's very strong. Enemy destroyed Superoxide's landmark, so once again, Uravity just going balls deep and just running over all of the uh, his fellow Mongol stuff here in the north. Down to the south, we do see a TC coming. Oh my god, Superoxide's so scrappy, dude. 
And he's like impossible to finish too, because he's got um Oh my god, wait, is he trading with this? Can he actually get to that market? Oh wow. Somebody just left a market in the hills. Can he get through there? Oh, we can get through! I love it! I love it. And we have this market from Sir Nicholas that you can see Superoxide's gonna be taken back a pretty good haul. Oh my god, and he's got his two traders going here. Just the pure scrappiness. All right, so the Chad fleet needs to get up on the coast here. They really, really need to. In the meantime, Sir Nicholas continues to uh, dominate the fight here versus Smeagol. Smeagol obviously uh, did not have the big army. He obviously was just getting back on his feet, but without the big army, it's going to be tough to fend up these bad boys off. Down in the southwest, we do see uh, Emperor Jaren starting to show his teeth as he's got his elite sofa and his elite warrior scouts. And uh, he is going to be attacking someone pretty aggressively here. It looks like he's purging all the walls, taking this pit mine, which is going to be very nice. Finally giving him pretty good sustainable gold. It looks like just getting her fourth one now. So he's missing out for quite some time. But where are the Chads going? Chads are heading up north. <clears throat> looks like they're trying to pop your Abadie's army. And uh, they will probably just purge the Vampire Coast here. So they're just going to be moving down and bombarding whatever they can. But they should really be hugging the coast. Definitely a mistake not to because you would be doing a lot of damage. I love it. I wonder if Sir Nicholas is going to notice this. Like, Sir Nicholas could delete this <clears throat> to troll, which would be hilarious. Um, it looks like we don't see more traders coming out, so it's going to be like a really minor uh, trader investment. As we see villagers trying to uh, get themselves going. We still do have naval food for Superoxide. Jarn, in the meantime, I'm not sure who he's going to go after. Probably Sir Nicholas, but I mean, Sir Nicholas is so entrenched. He's so, so entrenched. And he's Sir Nicholas is literally having to dig Smeagol out of the hills, which is not easy. Because Smeagol has like a whole nother layer with a castle back here. He's got like landmarks up here. He's just so difficult to kill. He's got that entrenched mountain position, which is such an incredible pain. I love this trade though. This is hilarious. The fact that he's able to kind of get this online is so funny. Jaren is just going, man, poor Superoxide. Every time Superoxide like gets something going, he is just getting hammered again. He's about to be discovered by the big Sofa Legion. So you can see Emperor Jaren gonna go in, gonna kill these two TCs. Is one of these, oh man, that's the actual TC too. That's rough. And then the only other landmark is the silver tree, which I believe is hiding up here, which could easily be killed. All right, he's running with it. Jaren sees it though. He's hunting it down and that's gonna be the TC. Okay, now suddenly the, the life of Superoxide is in the hands of Smeagol. He's got, he's got the silver tree in his clutches. Is he gonna kill it? Obviously, I don't think so. The fact that he's left it there for so long makes me think it's gonna be staying there. And uh, yeah, Super Oxide still getting torched by uh, Uravity's troops up here, it would look like. As the boats are not shutting down the trade, man. Just letting uh, Uravity get even further and further ahead. He's currently sitting at 41,000. So the reason why he hasn't built a wonder is because he needs to also make sure he has enough to, you know, build an army afterwards to kind of protect himself. Oh man, the Bow Chad fleet is going to be brutal. Jaren's force is going to get absolutely hammered on the coast here. But there's not much you can do about that. You kind of just have to pay the troll toll. Where are they going? They're going to take down the villagers who are making the houses up here. Yep, looks like a little bit of a raid. Nothing too serious. But that market's also going to be destroyed. So the gravy train for the uh, for the Mongols is going to be coming to an end right there. <laughs> Green and orange are just living in the walls like rats. It's true. I love it. I love it. It, it adds a lot of spice to the game. 100%. These scrappy players. You never know. One of them could end up winning. For about an hour into the game, no one is like, uh, there's no, I mean, there is a clear power in terms of eco and like the, the wonder situation. Like this is very scary. Especially if Gollum keeps getting pounded by Sir Nicholas. I don't know if Sir Nicholas could take your Abadie's defenses on his own. He probably needs the help of like at least Jaren and one of the, you know, Emperor Jaren as well as a, a Smeagol there. It's going to be tough. Green though is just kind of trolling about, trundling and blasting down these pit mines and Looks like he's shooting some walls right now, just being kind of annoying here. Uh, trade ship's coming, and they're bringing back a fair amount of resources. 38 wood is not insignificant. It's not a ton, but it doesn't hurt either, so those guys continue making progress. And Sir Nicholas now able to finish off the trade of the Mongols, so really just kind of bouncing about, and uh, looks like he has lost interest in attacking Smeagol here. Perhaps some sort of an agreement has been uh, made, as uh, we do see a lot of keeps coming up. Oh, shit, he's going to go for a sacred victory at some point. Sacred site, sacred site. Sacred Sight. All three of them in the clutches of Sir Nicholas. Wow, that's actually incredibly strong. As the raids in the south do continue, we got more raids over here. Looks like uh, the Great Bombard Cannon could be harried. Ooh, the Mehmet Armory is actually a little bit vulnerable. That actually could die. Smeagol could lose this right here. We'll have to, we'll have to see. 
Down in the southwest, though, looks like uh, the Ottoman army has pushed into the French lands, but the French should be able to kind of fend them off with the keeps that they have here. Those Janissaries obviously quite strong, but not going to be able to kind of hold up. Pretty cool looking units. I love the hats that they have. Their hats are so cool. But they will be falling as the reinforcements do move in. Arbalist hand cannoneers, the works. So what raiding is going on from the Bow Chads? The Chad fleet is um, still just harassing Jaren's coast. Jaren is definitely feeling the wrath of that. He's got some ground-based troops, but really not a whole lot. And look at this. Oh my god. Schmeagel is building another town center over here, guys. He is building another town center. The wonder is up! Oh my god, Uravity went for such an early wonder! Oh, wow. Now, everybody needs to stop fighting right away. Or, Sir Nicholas needs to go for a sacred site. And then, you know, be the new villain. It, it depends on how you... But the thing is, if Sir Nicholas goes sacred and fails, Uravity guaranteed wins the game, basically. So, there would have to be some, like, weird diplomacy with that. You know, that, that's how it would have to go down. But, yeah, he needs to get these guys and, and start heading to the north. So the Battle Chads are heading that way. Probably going to be uh, just... Can they actually sail up this way? I don't think so, yeah. I, I don't think they can cross these little fords here. So they're going to have a little bit of a problem. Jaren is heading up north. Looks like he's setting up his infrastructure for a push. But unfortunately for him, green is in the way. So that's going to be very tough. I honestly think Gravity is probably going to get this. Um, he's very entrenched. He's been planning this long time. They let him have trade forever. So I think, uh, I think it's going to be tough. More and more keeps coming up. Yeah, I, I like this play from Sir Nicholas. I, I like, he, they don't obviously know it, but Uravity is so entrenched that I just don't think like anybody's going to get in there without really heavy coordination. And Sir Nicholas is still punishing um, Schmeagel, right? But he has the he has the trade sites. He's got knights kind of parked on all three objectives here. And the sacred victory is on. So the Chads aren't going to be able to do too much about that. We do see a lot of knights coming down. Is he going to be able to defend here? That is a hell of a lot of keeps, guys. That is a hell of a lot of keeps. But it looks like the Sacred Site might be dispatched. We'll have to see. If he decaps the Sacred Site here, maybe, just maybe. We see a couple knights moving across, being shot by keeps just nonstop. And uh, this Sacred Site could just be decapped right here. I mean, there's not any French presence on it. So very good play by Ravity, guys. Shutting it down as we do see the trade finally being shut down by the Bow Chads. As the Sacred Sites are not going to last. Um, the French don't really have anything there. Looks like they sent a knight here. I mean, it's going to kill Ravity's army for sure. As we see, uh, he is able to get this, but how much time do we have on the Wonder? So the Wonder is currently sitting at... Okay, so he still has time to recapture that Sacred Site. He still has a little bit of time, but he would need to get someone there, like, immediately. Okay, he gets some Knights back on it! And it looks like he is going to be maintaining the Sacred Sites. It looks like he's going to be holding on. Knights over here. This one, pretty safe as well. Okay, guys, he's holding on to the Sacred Sites, but just barely... Got hand cannoneers, gravity sending everything he can onto the objective, but the keeps are just putting out so much DPS. Each of these keeps also has a cannon in placement as well, which is going to be so tough. Man, he is going hard today. Sir Nicholas is like pressuring like several players, and honestly, the Malians can't really get to him. I I do I think this is the right play for for Sir Nicholas. He's got to know how entrenched Homeboy is up there, and the keep DPS is starting to give the advantage to Sir Nicholas. And also the Bow Chads. The Bow Chads are camping the coast and they're just blasting this army. They're killing traitors. They're doing quite a bit of damage. Is this keep being built? Looks like it's not. And the French are able to push them back. Man, what a scrappy, scrappy game here. Green is still very much alive. He's still got his little navy here. Jaren uh, just kind of chilling out, building up a big stack and looks like he's going to be moving across to try and get to the Wonder. Uh, but it's not going to be easy. We see Manganel's coming down and the French are able to push them back. The fact that the Chads... Oh, you know what's going to happen, guys? Oh, my God. They're going to try and negotiate to get to get your avity to delete his wonder. That's the play. You be, you, this is the play. You say, your avity, if you do not delete your wonder, we're not going to help you get that sacred site. Have fun 1v1ing an entrenched French player with like 10 keeps. That's what you have to say here. That is an MLG power play. 100%. Because uh, then that deletes the wonder, and then everybody can collapse on Sir Nicholas and try and stop it. And stopping the sacred site would be way easier than trying to get that wonder. So that's that's got to be the play here. Oh, on a wall attempt coming in, but that's not going to work out as those villagers are going to be run over. Uh, looks like some of them are going to be trying to get in as the French do move forward to engage. And uh, some of the walls might go up here. But yeah, that's you got to try and talk them into deleting. Okay, they got it. Uravity deletes the wonder, guys. He deletes his wonder. That must have been the negotiations that were going on in the game. So now the other players, including Schmeagel, are going to be gathering up and trying to help. Now, there's only one keep down here, so maybe they would be able to, but this is going to be tough. Your Avity getting a lot of... Oh, my God. Look how rich he is. It's so gross. He's got so many mangonels, but the trade gravy train is gone now. 
it's straight up gone. Look at the naval trade for Super Oxide Man. Okay, is he going to be potentially getting back in this? We'll have to see. That is so many keeps, though, guys. That is so much damage coming out of those positions. Like, anything that gets close is just getting last samurai And the French do have good supply lines. Uh, they're going to need to bring some villagers to repair these keeps, though, or else they could 100% die. Sir Nicholas back rowing well, though. Continuously sending units up. He does have his own cannons on his way. And it looks like he's trying to get back to the Mangonels, which is a bit of a mistake. Don't want to be diving back there at this point. And look at this! Super Oxide with the back door! Oh my god! Look at that! Super Oxide's coming into back door here, haven't he? Oh my god, the memes! And now, obviously, this push is going to be thwarted with the back door attempt. And the Chads are no longer camping the uh, coast there. Sir Nicholas might be able to win on Sacred Sites. We're going to have a little bit of action here. Uh, there is going to be uh, Schmeagle will be getting a force in. And he's actually got a decent little army. I mean, it's not amazing, but... If your Avity uh, gets pushed back, then Sir Nicholas should be able to react in time to deal with that. We'll have to see. So the cannon's doing their thing. Super Oxide with the back door. He's obviously not happy because he's been getting attacked the entire game. He's been getting attacked the entire game by your Avity's tyranny. So here comes to the, the Mongols once again. As the French rush to intercept them. Schmeagle's on his way in though, guys. And this wall's not finished. Ooh, this one is probably going to get decapped. And then we have a normal game again, because there's no wonder anymore. Granted, your Abadie could build... No, he doesn't have enough wood to build another wonder at this point, so... That would not happen. We got the Balchads moving up. Balchads going to be killing traders. <laughs> so your Abadie's trade fleet is being punished pretty hard as the cannons continue to shoot into the Mangonels. Sir Nicholas uh, certainly trading pretty well here. And on the south side, Schmeagle is here! The Lord of the Mountains has come! And uh, the villagers are trying to defend the sacred site to the best of their abilities, but... Uh, looks like there's a handful of units going down there, but he is being pushed so hard on two fronts. Yeah, he does have the advantage of having the keeps there and whatnot, but it's going to be tough. Are Smeagol's units elite? They are. Okay, so he does have the elite units, and it looks like Smeagol's army is very damaged. Sir Nicholas is fighting so well on two fronts, guys, but I think this is going to be the end. As, uh, yeah, Uravity is getting in there with a million trebuchets. The sacred sites are going to be shut down, and uh, what is Jaren doing in the meantime? Okay, he's just kind of chilling. Yeah, he looks like he can't get to the action. He's kind of like really landlocked over there, so he's not able to do it. And man, Sir Nicholas is holding. Let's look at the sacred timer, guys. Oh, man, we have no actual timer. It's so crappy how it doesn't tell you that. But yeah, it looks like Gravity is going to be able to decap this one. He's taking a ton of damage, but he also has like seven trebs now. Mongols can build trebuchets like, like it's nobody's business. So yeah, for Sir Nicholas here, you just have to like be like, okay, guys, that was fun. Haha, <laughs> let's, let's go back to our like peaceful state. Because uh, it's going to be tough. Which the Schmeagol back door say actually saved the game. If he didn't come over here and stop this, then it would have been uh, pretty disastrous for sure. The keeps are holding pretty well, but the trebuchet is knocking him down. Your Abadi, uh is going to be pushed back. But not before he decaps the sacred site. And that kind of sets things back to normal. So GG, man. Wild stuff. We'll do a little bit of fast forwarding here. The knights move to the north. Gravity is going to lose all these units, which is very good. And, you know, at the end of the day, it did, it did shut down the Wonder. So that sacred play by Sir Nicholas was very strong because it did shut down the Wonder. And now the French Knight's getting into the base, killing every single traction trebuchet. But Gravity is still quite rich. It looks like he's going to be staying and fighting here. He's going to do a little bit of fast forwarding to get up to the live state of the game. And Smeagol is still gathering a force here. For what reason? I don't know. Uh, I guess he was getting attacked by Yellow pretty heavily. And this is where, you know, the middle position becomes very very um shady so let me pause it real quick okay it's like sometimes the replay client has some problems even when i go back to the to the lot normal speed okay there we go so we're back in business so yeah the french getting momentum against the mongols the mongols actually have like no wood i think they had some yeah oh man the mongols don't have any wood they're not going to be able to make artillery anymore on the bottom side look at this the the corsair lord landing he landed a fleet in the french base Sir Nicholas is being attacked. He, he needs to make some friends real quick or else this is going to go like super south. Uh, bombard cannons obviously being attacked and uh, finished here. They are able to get a little bit of damage, but probably not a super cost effective trade. But yes, the Corsair Lord did land a little bit of a coastal invasion, but overall, um, Sir Nicholas still does have, you know, decent sacred control. He's got relics, so he's going to be getting good perpetual gold. Looking at his income, it's not bad. Not great either, though. He's, only, he's down to 30 villagers. His military is 170. Um, so that's how he was kind of, you know, managing to fight off multiple players by having a huge, huge, uh, you know, gravy train there. So on the bottom side, we see the Sipahi moving out. And it looks like Sir Nicholas is still, still trying to kill. He's still trying to kill him. Although, wait, I think these units have been trapped here the entire game. Oh my God. They got walled in, I think. Yeah, I don't think they can escape, which is pretty hilarious. Your is probably going to be able to finish the job though. Sir Nicholas being attacked by multiple people is tricky. Because, man, your Abadie's just going to build another Wonder and win. 
Yeah, if Sir Nicholas falls, I don't think anybody's going to have the strength to fight back against Mordor. Gravity's definitely Sauron. 100%. We see the Bowchad fleet is here. I don't know why they're still here, though. Sir Nicholas clearly uh, got pounded pretty good by that raid. They need to be shutting down the trade. That is for sure. The Nicholas going to be fighting the Ottoman Empire. Ottomans obviously super entrenched back here. There's no way they're going to get back there easy. They get a ton of effort, although he's taking down quite a few houses and infrastructure. And, you know, he's trading pretty well in these fights. Jaren is um, hanging out, really. <laughs> he's just he's just chilling. He's enjoying his vacation up here in the north. And, uh, yeah, I don't know how he's doing eco-wise, though. Jaren has no gold income, guys. He's only getting gold from his ore pits, which is rough. Uh, so uh, it's going to make it tough for him. He does have 38,000 food, though, so he's pretty comfortable in that department. And you know what? We might actually not see a wonder from Yavity for a while because he has no wood. He's trying to find some wood here. Mongols uh, do get a nice little foothold. We see the triple French keeps here holding and just a huge military as he continues to try and kill uh, Smeagol over on the, south, on, the, on the east here. Hasn't been easy though. Has not been easy. Honestly, Sir Nicholas has been fighting on so many fronts for so long. Now we get traction trebuchets coming in. Looks like there's a cannon tower which is going to be picking off traders. But yeah, he, he needs to make peace with Smeagol somehow and be like, hey, like let's kill the wonder guy. But instead, he, he's uh, perpetually fighting him, which, I mean, uh, I understand. Like, he's trying to trying to get rid of the threats to his east so he can focus on one player, but I don't think he realizes the depth of this this base here, just the trolliness that it would take to actually finish this guy off, this mighty Chad, Chris. So he's got Seagate Castle, he's got this, and I think that's his only landmark. I think he lost one here, and uh, yeah, he lost one here. So he does have the two landmarks there. But the Mongols are on their way in. They're going to get cannoned, and there are some French knights on standby to try and deal with this. The Keeps still doing their thing while uh, Super Oxide trading. Well, man, Super Oxide's going to become a player really soon. He's going to become uh, a, force, a force to be reckoned with with this naval trade. He's actually getting good wood. See these villagers? The Mongols obviously need wood. We'll see if the French are going to be able to push them back. They do have the support of the Keeps, but, you know, a lot of his military is fighting on two fronts. He's basically trying to cripple Chris, so Chris can't, you know, backstab him like that again and then maybe he goes for the wonder again we'll have to see but yeah you're gonna need your the full strength of your army to deal with this mongol pressure uh these keeps are gonna start faltering and i guess there's more keeps where that came from holy shit he has got a lot of keeps currently gathering up stone and man super oxide with a raiding party here i'm really curious why they're raiding him i mean he's got the sacred sites i guess okay so maybe it's it's the the inherent threat of the sacred sites but it just seems like such a such a mistake to raid him when I guess they don't know how strong the other players are. Yeah. The Mongols are kind of teaming up on uh, Sir Nicholas here. A little bit. As we head over to the east, we do see Sir Nicholas, despite being attacked in his base, still trying to kill the Ottomans. A little bit of blood feud action, I suppose. Probably should delete those knights over here. It's kind of a dead supply, as he does have some units kind of sitting idle. But the Mongols are being uh, held back. I'm getting a lot of wood, though. Um, Uravity's out of gold now, guys. Wow. Okay, maybe he's not as much of a threat as he once was. The French, in the meantime, bringing over a million arbalists, going to be uh, taking down Uravity's uh, lumber position here. So, Uravity is actually running out of resources. Okay. That's interesting. And the guild hall in a little bit of danger. Really, really good map awareness from Sir Nicholas. He's being attacked on so many fronts, and he's microing so well. He's defending every angle just so efficiently. Now, let's take a look at our mountain trolls. Oh, my God. Look at the mountain trolls. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Super Oxide and Chris have an alliance because of the Silver Tree. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. He, is he guarding the Silver Tree? I suppose he is. Silver Tree could go here. But the French are able to hold back the attack once again. A lot of Arbalists going to be uh, looking to fight this army. They have their pavises if they want to lay those down. Trebuchet is knocking down the keeps. And the trade is attempting to be online. Looks like uh, some of the traders are going to make it through. But the French, for the most part, do have the better supply line. So they should be able to reinforce a little bit quicker. But yeah, I mean, you know, we could see Sir Nicholas start to run out of resources. He's setting up more keeps on his uh, back door here to prevent some of the raids that have been perpetually coming here. And the traction trebuchets, there's only two of them, so it's going to take a while to get through the keeps here. As uh, Uravity's villagers are sent packing, yeah, they're, they're having to run again. And more men at arms coming in. And taking a look at the income of Uravity. He has, fall he has fallen quite down quite a bit, but he's made progress. I mean, he's put a dent in Sir Nicholas's empire. Jaren, Jaren could honestly win this, guys. Look at this. Jaren, Jaren is moving, and he is going after it. He's taking his haggard archers and attacking Bowchads. Now, what is he gonna do? Is he gonna is he gonna move to the north and try and take out this base? Oxide's gonna have to fight him, obviously. Jaren, uh, 
Jaren using his dreaded archer swarm to fight these bombard ships, which is pretty hilarious. Uh oh, demo ships! Demo ships! Oh my god, doing a bunch of damage. A lot of those archers getting folded. But Jaren has been waiting for this for a long time, and his supply lines are going to be quite fresh. You will find them quite operational. As his soldiers let out a mighty battle cry. Just one more time, guys. I'm sorry. All right, there they go. That's the Malian battle cries. They continue to charge, engaging against the Mongolian fleet. And, uh, you know, the Chads are doing good, but still, there's so many Malians here that they could probably push in. Emperor Jaren was just being the emperor in silence for so long, but he's finally moving out. Look at that. They're even getting on the shore and torching some of those bow chads who are, uh, yeah, they're, they're getting the business. Yeah, the chads are kind of dwindling in numbers. No artillery, but more and more lancers coming out, but lancers aren't going to be super efficient against a spear-based army. There's a lot of spears in this army, the Donso. Some of the better spear units in the entire game there. And on the other side, we do see the Mongols continuing to press the French. Are the French giving up on um, killing? No, they're not. <laughs> I was about to say, have they given up on trying to kill the uh, the Smeagol in the mountains? But no, they just have. It, the, the, the levels of, of this base, there's just so much to it. This is where he would need to go to really take Smeagol out, though. Yeah, let's we'll see. Oh, no. Super Oxide's about to get fat trade. That's going to be huge. Look, he's trading with the uh, docks of Chris. Yeah, getting 100 a pop is really, really good. So the Chads are kind of getting worn down, but eventually Jaren's army is going to, you know, pay the troll toll. That's too much sustained DPS coming out of these warships. And he's shooting the docks with his archers instead of actually shooting the enemy army. So a little bit of a micro mistake there, but he is potentially wiping the docks out. We'll have to see. And it's not like he can't remuster. Jaren down here. Whoa, what is he doing? He's setting up a huge doom legion of infrastructure. Oh my god, look at that. Godsmack, yeah, no. Sir Nicholas is for sure listening to Godsmack. He definitely stands alone. I stand alone. Here they come. Big fleet. 47 French knights. 100% will steamroll this. He needs to shut down your Avity's trade. Without the trade, your Avity will fold. He's not going to be able to continue pushing you like this. So uh, that needs to be priority number one. Because Smeagol is already kind of weak. Like Smeagol isn't like going to be able to really deal with your keeps. Like you need to just kill the Mongols in the north and push your Avity back. That's got to be the play. Big fight going down. As Sir Nicholas continues the Royal Rumble. We see the archers and hand cannoneers and company doing some big, big work in the back. But overall, the French knights are going to carry the day as we do see the Lancer army getting karate chopped into the Shadow Realm. Archers, of course, doing good DPS against some of the lighter units, but uh, that is going to be the end of the road there. And now, I would imagine, he pushes north. A lot of spears coming out. You can see the army composition is going to be switched to spearmen. And uh, they are going to push back the trade. So that trade cannot be allowed to uh, continue unless you want to have a bad time. Look at this. Oh, man. Oh my god, the Emperor! Emperor Jarn getting up here! Is he gonna start picking off the trade boats? I'm not sure. Where's he going? What is this? What are they? Where are they going? Are they gonna go? Are they killing your Avity? I think they are. Okay. Your Avity uh, might be in some danger. See, walls coming up finally, which is gonna mitigate some of the pressure coming in. But what is Jarn doing? Is Jarn? Is there a wonder? Did I miss something? What is he? Where is he going? Oh my god, he's going for it! Oh man, here he comes! The Emperor just shows up in the Mongol base. He like crosses paths past Superoxide. And uh, he lands in the Mongol base. And yeah, he's gonna lose this fight. Mongols will win it because of the home field advantage, but this is uh, this is definitely gonna be draining. Oh my god, and Sir Nicholas from the other side! Uravity is now suffering the 2v1 that Sir Nicholas had been. And uh, it's on. Those traders are running for the hills. The knights are chasing. These are villagers. They have their daggers out. They're trying as the knights are just all over them. Okay. Man. This is some really impressive play surviving in the middle. But the naval trade could give actually get Super Oxide back in this game. Looks like he's loading up a couple warships. But Jaren is, stands at the ready, man. Looks like Jaren is going to be heading off uh, attacking Sir Nicholas's army there. But um, those French knights did do quite a bit of damage. The traders are able to run. So he is able to get those traders back. And uh, they're going to be heading back to the north, to the trade post, I would imagine. And that push will be mitigated for now. Nice wall is set up, so that's going to keep the Malians from raiding. And, uh, yep, looks like the stone wall is fully secured. This needs to be stopped, though. <laughs> the fact that that's going down is pretty funny. And uh, Jaren is ready for an invasion, though. The trade secret must have gotten out. Yeah, I think so. Hey, Den, thank you for the $28 donation. I missed that. It was about an hour ago. <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate it, bud. And, uh, yeah, dude. Now, Yuravity will survive, though. He's a really good player. Very scrappy. 
Uh, but it's going to be hard to get that trade back. And now he needs to kind of figure it out. He has food. Um, doesn't really have any gold. We see Super Oxide becoming the Lord of Trade. But the Malians are like really close to being able to shut it down. The Malians could just come kill all these docks right now. I'm surprised they haven't actually. But it looks like here they come. Uh, are there any Chads? Transport ships coming. See, transport ships. Interesting. What was he looking to do? Was he looking to attack the, uh, the French? Could be the case. French are going to be setting up keeps again, so I'm probably going to go for another sacred play at some point. And uh, look at that. We just have a random trader coming by. That's so funny. And look at the traders. Look at them. They were all trying to move down there as the bow chads are going to just bombard the coast and shell them. Oh, man. This is crazy. This is crazy. Okay, so bombarding those units. They're fleeing the scene. Up in the north, we have the Malians. have had enough of this shit. They're going to go try and take down the Mongols here. Probably get their docks down. The fact that uh, Super Oxide has been trading. Wow, Super Oxide's rich, dude. I mean, for how, how like beat up he was. Wait, what? Jaren just deleted his whole army here. Oh, it's because he's trying to produce an army down here. Interesting. Now, I wonder if there's some sort of an alliance of sorts. Why Why would he not kill Super Oxide? That's what's perplexing to me. And we see this like little landing, fo ran uh, landing force here as well. And where is this army going? Okay, so... Jaren deletes those units too. Is everybody going to team up on Sir Nicholas in the middle? It feels like it could be the case. He's not even going for the sacreds, but I suppose the fact that he has all three sacreds is making everybody want to take him out. Which I, I, I certainly understand. But it looks like they're going to be maybe teaming on him. I'm not sure. It kind of looks like that could be the case. As he easily fends off that raid. And it looks like there's some trade ships coming over here. Got a little wall coming up in the north, but I'm surprised he didn't just come through and purge all this. Because Jaren is going to get backstabbed super hard. If um, if they like manage to kill Yellow, then suddenly there's a huge threat on his northern border. But yeah, we'll see, guys. We'll see. Yoravity basically, you know, just on the defense now. He's, he's kind of poor. Has no wood and no gold income. Just food. So he can't really do a whole lot. He just kind of has to sit and chill. Smeagol able to get a good army. And, you know, Sir Nicholas has been attacking Smeagol a lot. So Smeagol could want vengeance. We'll see. He's a, a vengeful little golem, that is for sure. And I feel like we might see a sacred. I, like at some point, it could happen. The warships blasting in. It looks like he's trying to make way for the armies, for the traders. I'm not sure. He mainly just has chads. He's the corsair lord. Over here, we just have like a random amalgamation of different players, just kind of like coexisting in the corner of the map. Big trade from the Malians. Are they going to be able to get any sort of trade? I don't know. But now, wait, are they going to kill Smeagol? Could, they could be. 100%. Okay, so we see a lot of spears moving over this way. Bombard cannons. I think, oh my god, I think they're going for Smeagol. I think they might be. Yeah, Smeagol could be in danger. It looks like uh, Emperor Jarn's going after him. That's really interesting. There's so many weird circuitous attacks in this game. Like, people who are just, like, attacking from the strangest angles and, and trying to... Oh my god, look at the traitors. They're trying to... Where are they, where are they trying to go? Okay, Jarn going to head them off. Doesn't look like it. Traders are going to run. Very quick reaction from Yavity there as he does get his traders away. So he's able to kind of pull those bad boys back. And the trade ships for uh, Super Oxide continue to bring home huge payloads. A little bit of a collision there. Some of the trade ships do collide. Bombard cannons are on their way up. The Sofa Legion. This is just the weirdest game. I wish we had a little bit of insight into the chat to know what was going on. But three players have been eliminated today. This is our grand finals, by the way. Bombard, bombard, bombard. They uh, look like they want to kill Smeagol. Like, why would they want to kill Smeagol? He's a peaceful little golem up in the hills. He, he doesn't even... I don't think he even really has any gold. Yeah, no, he hasn't had gold for a long time. He, he can spam Sipahi and Archers, I guess, which isn't a bad combo, but that's pretty much it. All right. Uh, looks like some of the, the TC is being shot by the uh, Sprangles. Okay. A little bit of a funky notification right there. As the, the Dread Malian Legion, dude, if Emperor Jaren wins this game, I'm going to be really impressed. He, uh, but I think, like, the ultimate underdog would be Sir Nicholas now. That he's, he's, like, surrounded by everyone. He's been getting attacked nonstop by, like, several players. Yeah. That's for sure. Gravity is no longer Sauron. He's now, like, a, a Moria goblin. You know? Maybe, maybe he could be, like, the, you know, one of those. But, you know, they're cunning creatures. The Balrog may show up and help him eventually. And then he'll be able to... Get, if he gets his trade back online, he's suddenly back in the game, right? Looks like there's some resources up in the hills. A little bit of a trading post going down here as uh, Jaren opts to pull back. 
He sees Chris's little wood expansion. No, or where is he going? Okay, maybe he's gonna go kill Green. Oh, look at this, Super Oxide. With the uh, little backstab down here, the Sofa are gonna be fighting the Lancers. Sofa, I think, have uh, are not quite as strong as Lancers head to head, but obviously they have the backing of Spears and Donso. And it looks like Green is gonna be pushed out of the corner. So yeah, this, this little weird raid that we had down here is gonna be dispatched. So cannons are in, spearmen saturating into the green army, bombard cannons thumping and almost one-shotting the knights. They hit for, I believe, 200 something. All right, 120. But not enough. You need to get like two or three shots to actually finish off one of those knights. Medieval knights could eat cannonballs. Three or four cannonballs are actually the face. We learned this here today. So, your avity is the cave troll that everyone ganged up on. Yeah, that's definitely apt. Yeah, your avity definitely is the cave troll from the fellowship. Yeah. He was definitely Sauron for a while, though. Like, he was just so far ahead of... Like, he had 21,000 gold, and the next player had, I think, like, what? Like, four? Three? He was definitely a tyrant. So, Green's infrastructure are going to be chased here. The stable's trying to run away. So the last of these ones just being methodically purged. You see, Jar I'm like, why did Jaren not try and kill him up here? It just seems like he's... Because uh, then he has an open route to just push in here. But I guess Sir... The problem is Sir Nicholas has the threat on the sacred sites... And Sir Nicholas has clearly been very strong for a lot of this game. And uh, looks like he's going to be taking this moment of peace to push in. And he does get on top of the traction trebuchet. Does a little bit of damage to one of them. Might get one of the trebs down. We'll see. That is a lot of arbalists. Will they be able to defeat this Mongol army? I don't know. It's going to be tough to say. I, I feel the Mongols... Ooh, they might start to fold. Their front line is getting worn down. And that's the thing. Uravity doesn't have... Like, wood is very scarce for him. So he needs to be very careful. And the French arbalists with the melee armor holding it down. And actually trading very, very well there. Now, does Sir Nicholas have any more reinforcements coming in? It's hard to say. I don't see anything. Okay, there's knights coming. And we do have a unit of knights here, which would be very useful up here. He needs to uh, select all of his military units on the map. But yeah, this is forcing your avity to spend a lot of wood. And he's having to make spearmen now. He can't really afford gold units. Only has 400, right? So paying a little bit of a troll toll there. Is the archers? What are they trying to shoot? It looks like they're trying to maybe finish off one of the trebuchets. Yeah, they are. So they're going to be taking pretty substantial casualties in the process. Looking around the map, Jaren just kind of bouncing about. Looks like he's trying to hunt down the Mongol uh, encampment in the hills. The Mongols are repairing their town center here. Okay. Super Oxide the Scrapper. He has another town center hidden in the hills here. It's so hilarious. But yeah, Jaren's main base is going to get hit now. Look at this. Siege workshops. Uh, he's going to get absolutely attacked here by Super Oxide, who is probably pretty rich now. Yeah, Super Oxide's killing it. Oh my god. Who would have thought Super Oxide would come back like this? Green having a Boromir moment. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, looking around here, we have the Elite Sofa and the Donso. Poor Jaren is going to... Is he going to have to delete this army to be able to produce at home when he gets attacked? We don't see Lancers coming out yet, nor do we see Siege Equipment. We do not... Okay, Geometries for Rams and Trebs. So, just some basic upgrades. And, uh, yeah, man, your Abadie could straight up die. So, Nicholas keeps coming at him like that. Maybe. And Sir Nicholas? Oh my god. Oh my god. That is an army. Jesus. How is he how is he holding on, dude? He's got only 71 eco, but uh I guess it's the uh it's the sacred sites plus the uh triple relics, I think is what's giving him that gold. He doesn't have much eco, so it allows his militaries to be so huge. He really plays at a low uh low villager count. Gollum in the hills just chilling out. He's just hanging out, dude. The guild hall currently is banking uh what appears to be gold, so it makes sense. A lot of naval trade going down, guys. Superoxide is going to be a force to be reckoned with if nobody takes him seriously here. And now it looks like the Bombard Cannons are going to be heading home with the rest of the army. And are they going to attack Orange here? Dude, Gollum is just in the hills, dude. Look at him. He is just all over the map. Every, like, hill alcove, Gollum has, like, a little bit of a position working. Which is hilarious. So, I guess, uh... I guess Chris is... Yeah, he's letting... Is the silver tree being used as a diplomatic piece? Like, is Smeagol, like, saying, hey, like, don't kill me or else... I, I wonder. I wonder what's going on with that. Sure doesn't look like it here. As we do see uh, the Malians moving in to torch down the hills. So trying to clean out all the scraps. And we do see the stables coming back up. No, we do not. We see some towers in the hills. That's got to be very annoying, though. All these, all these like, hill folk. Yeah, just, just constantly coming down and raiding and having villagers building shit in your lands. Up on the high ground, there is still a relic. Look at that. There's a relic. Oh my god. Talk about a wonder position. Jesus. Although I guess it could be shot by trebuchets on the low ground, so it's a little bit precarious. Even still, the house is down. And uh, orange has been swept from that position. 
In the meantime, Sir Nicholas just gathering up his legion. Is he going to go for another sacred? Um, it wouldn't be a terrible idea. If he would like to like kill this mining camp and wall this off and maybe build a couple more keeps down here, maybe. Not going to be easy, that's for sure. We do see uh, Gollum up in the hills building a little outpost. Maybe going to build a religious building here to grab that relic. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Totally worth it. Looks like we have some mutual trade going on. Um, Orange is also trading here. So Gollum is getting some decent resources and he's going to be a bit of a threat now. He's not He's not weak. Um, we have 16 French Royal Knights chilling here. I don't think Sir Nicholas knows about those anymore. But it looks like he's just trying to gather up his bearings and, uh, and play calm. Your Abadie basically in, in rough straits. Although, oh my god, he's being allowed to trade again? Look at that! He's, your Abadie's stealing from the docks! Oh my god, your Abadie with the theft, I love it! What a Chad play! He just like gets his traders and rolls over and just jacks a bunch of gold from Green's dock. Oh my god, I love it. Wait, and Green is allowing it to happen? He had four Lancers there. Why would you let him do that? Oh my god. He's, he's not your ally, that's for sure. Okay, well, Uravity is being allowed to trade, which is going to be pretty funny if he ends up winning the game. I'm sure they'll live to regret that. Uh, it's not like crazy trade, but it's not insignificant. It's 56. Sir Nicholas is now pushing up with a huge knight army, which is going to start steamrolling this force pretty hard. Uh, Uravity will probably be at least crippled if he doesn't get um, help from someone. Well, Green could help him with the bow chads. They could definitely do a bit of a coastal blockade. We'll have to see. Jaren, in the meantime, uh, I believe his legion is in the hills cleaning out the scraps. And now we see a huge, just Chad French army moving in. Arbalists, cannons, just the works. And uh, they are going to be engaging spears in kind of close quarters, which is going to be tough. And honestly, Uravity has a pretty good position to hold. He's doing some work. Those hand cannoneers do a lot of damage. And the French have their own range and are slowly kind of chewing through them. But you can see the one French cannon is going to be blasting in. This is, this is pretty painful. Uravity is not rich, so this is... Every resource he has to spend is, uh, is very taxing. Although he's got pretty good food, but... Yeah, brutal, brutal damage. Her Nicholas really going for the kill here. As many of the Mongols are being dragged down, the town center here is going to be falling. Uh, looking at the eco of Uravity, he does have 100 eco, so he's doing pretty good in that department, but his military numbers are starting to rapidly fall. But finishing him is going to be near to impossible with all these cannon towers. Um, so you'd have to really, really, you know, go deep into his lands to get him here. So yeah, Bombards are just trying to finish those off. It looks like that more or less will be crippling his army here. As he's out of gold, he has about 500, but he is getting some from trade. And I can't believe, uh, <laughs> you're having to just PayPal the green. Yeah, he sent him a PayPal. He's like, here, here's a, here's a, here's a little bribe. So you'll let me trade in this FFA final. What is Jaren doing? Jaren is just kind of clearing shit out. He's, he's playing very methodical here. I guess he doesn't need to worry, right? Like the other superpowers are basically fighting here. And we see the other TC potentially going to be going down here. Looking at the eco. Your at 59 eco now, guys. So he's he's lost these TCs and uh, he's been taking quite a bit of damage. Is Sir Nicholas going to get these knights here? It looks like he, he forgot about those guys. But um, he, yeah, he's mustering up another army. So he could probably push again if he wants to. Every one of these attacks is adding up. It's doing quite a bit. This TC is pretty close to dying. It's not on fire yet. And uh, But yeah, that trade is keeping him alive. The fact that um, Green is letting him trade is basically the only reason why uh, your Abadie is alive right now. Without that trade, you'd be dead. So, a couple of knights here. Totally should head them off. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what his angle is, honestly. I really don't. But yeah, he's going to become a power again if he's allowed to keep trading. Um, Smeagol in the meantime. Smeagol is also potentially going to become strong, guys. Chris is back. Um, is trading hard. Jaren trying to shut it down. Oh, Jaren killing the docks that they were trading with. And now everybody's going to the neutral trade dock. Wow. What an MLG play here by Jaren. Although, there's still this one dock here. He needs to get these. So, yeah, he comes and he kills the docks on the south to shut down some of the trade there. Oh, my God. Oh, oh wow. What is this? Like, eight bombard cannons, too. Just sitting here doing nothing. Oh, man. There's so much wildness this game. I mean, there's so much going on, understandably. So, the Mongols lost all three of their TCs. Oh, my God. Is he dead? Was that his last land? Oh, shit. Guys, that was his last landmark. That was his last landmark. I did not remember that. The other landmarks had died earlier. One of them was dead down here. Wow, so Sir Nicholas gets the kill. He gets the kill on Uravity. Okay, guys. The die is cast. We see the little coastal invasions going, and uh, he does knock down the keep there, so that's a pretty nice play. Superoxide landing some trebuchets. Trebuchets and boats, a very, very powerful combo. I did not notice that that was his last landmark, that TC. And I don't think he did either. 
Maybe he did. I don't know. You're avid. You'll have to let us know in chat. Were you aware that that was your last landmark? Dude. All right. So one of the big superpowers has fallen in this game. And now is, is our little corner bandit going to win this game with his naval trade? Maybe. Dude, what if Smeagol wins it too? If Smeagol wins this, he is just going to be an absolute Chad after that start. Yeah, in case you guys didn't know also, Sir Nicholas is, um, let me show you guys real quick. He designed this mini that we painted. He's the miniature designer that sent that to my wife and I. So apparently he's also very good at Age of Empires on top of Total War stuff, so that's pretty cool. But man, this is, uh, this is, this is a scrappy one, man. There's just so much shit all over the map. It's just like anarchy. Then there's like these little ratty corner bases in the hills that the Mongols have. Jaren has been like hunting them ruthlessly. Okay, Jaren I think has had enough of green, which I think is a good call. Green needs to be finished before he's able to mobilize. Because now he's going to get really scary. Like he's got that trade. Um, you're going to need to bring these guys with you though. You need those uh, 28 spearmen, that's for sure. And Smeagol's just rebuilding in the hills, guys. He's rebuilding. Hey, GG, you're Avity. You were definitely Sauron for a long time in that game. You were definitely Sauron. So hold your head up high, man. You played like a champ. So over here, we got the Lancers coming in. Trying to chase down the Sofa, which are going where? Where are they going with those Sofa? And are the docks being destroyed? No, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Jaren's got all this infrastructure down here with units being produced out of it, so he's clearly capped. He's got his bombard cannons moving, and it looks like he's going to be trying to knock down the sacred sites. Sir Nicholas does have two sacred sites capped, but not the third one. Which is smart, because if you do the third one, everybody's going to attack you, right? Yeah, here you go, man. Jaren with the MLG plays once again. Trying to destroy the docks. Why doesn't he finish them? That was such a good play. That was the right idea. He lights one of them on fire, um, but the other two are still very functional. I don't know, it's, it's weird. He pulls back, it's strange. A little bit of a dual prong push. Sir Nicholas uh, chilling out at this point, you know, trying to probably gather his bearings. Got a, some trebuchets at home. He's got archers shooting the trade ships, which is really funny. So eventually he'll be able to drag uh, drag those down. It'll, it'll take a hundred years, but they'll get there eventually. He too is also trading. Uh, I don't know how good of a trade route it is though. Probably not that good. Eight bombard cannons from Jaren, probably going to get karate chopped here. Uh, if Sir Nicholas has any knights, which I don't know where he does. Yeah, he does. He's got a lot of knights. He's got a pretty big army. So he could probably head those off. But a lot of people are trading. Yeah, you're avidy. So tell us, tell us what's going down in this game. Because there's been some crazy, weird decisions we've seen from people, which is really exciting. But I, I want to know. So you're avidy. If you type it in chat, I will, um, I will relay it to everyone. Gravity said, there wasn't too much. I kept trying to get people to help me with yellow C peroxide and Jaren kept sparring. Okay. A little bit, I have to admit, I'm a little disappointed with the drama. I was expecting some more. But, um, but yeah. Cannons here able to pound. Sir Nicholas is about to roll over with his Doomstack. Dude, winning an FFA whilst, whilst spawning in the middle would be a huge achievement. That's so hard. Look at the Trebs. The Trebs are just bombarding the uh, trade ships here. It's hilarious. I don't think they're really hitting home. It looks like most of them are kind of missing, but... This is going to be a steamroll for sure. The French army is going to get all these cannons, and uh, that is going to be a nice pick for sure. This big trade's still being allowed to go, though, guys. Smeag Dude, Smeagol is going to become a superpower. Depends on how good his macro is. He's got all of his landmark tree built. He's super hard to finish, too, because he's got landmarks, like, hidden amongst the hills. And he started right here. This is his starting base. And he migrated all the way to the east side of the map and got back, which is so funny. All right, so that army uh, steamrolled as anticipated. Obviously, uh, Sir Nicholas are able to get the steel chair and finish those guys off. The battle cries of the French resound across the valley as they get the job done. Now, where is Jarn going to keep producing units? Uh, looks like he's going to be going north. Yeah, he's probably got to go for superoxide. Gravity said, no one really said anything about the neutral trading. I didn't even know it was happening until later. I kind of just walked my traders to superoxide stocks and he was letting me trade. For no reason. Okay, so he just lets you trade. Yellow is trying to offer relics to Orange to get his help. Okay. I like that. I like that. So there's a little bit of diplomacy going on. Now, taking a look here at the eco of Orange. Guys, Orange might straight up get a wonder victory. He's got enough to build a wonder, actually. And he can just go straight up golem that shit. Back here, this is such filth. A wonder back there with like all these mountain passes and choke points. Jesus. Especially with Ottomans. Yeah, that that could be um, that could be pretty nasty. So Pink's army is pretty big here. 
He's not really being active with it. Just kind of hanging out. Down in the south, we see uh, we see the little rat's nest, the siege workshop of superoxide being built. Probably going to build some uh, build some siege equipment, maybe to knock down some of the pieces. We'll have to see. Wood being taken. Jaren hanging out in the north. And a big naval trade is just being allowed to happen. Yeah, orange is uh, becoming very strong. And now we see a bow chat coming out from Superoxide. So he's going to start bombarding these trade ships, which is good. You definitely need to. Because Smeagol is going to go wonder in the corner. If I was Smeagol, I would do it. 100%. Yeah, we're still a little bit behind. I can fast forward, actually. So we'll try and catch up to the live action. All right, Sofa cleaning up a little bit. Where are they going to go? He, he seems to, like, want to kill green. Like, he's perpetually going after green down here, but not after his main base. And now we... Oh, my God. Are we going to see Superoxide Wonder in the corner? Oh, my God. It's going to happen. But then Sir Nicholas is just going to go sacred again. And that's going to probably force him to delete it. Yeah, it's going to be the same thing that happened to your avity, it looks like. All right. So Jaren continuing to attack. Cleaning these guys out. And, uh, yep, he, he cleans up the little rat's nest here. Still very much a rat's nest down in the south, it looks like, with a, you know, a, a TC building some lumber villagers. And it seems like the trade situation is starting to become more dominated by one person. Uh, we do see green in there with a lot of units, and uh, Smeagol's trade is, is going to be probably headed off. The docks have all been taken out, so there, are, there aren't any more neutral docks to trade with. Yeah. And is that bow chad guarding it? The bow chad is guarding that dock. This is the only one, so he's probably just going to have to take that. Does Jarn have a wonder location anywhere? I don't think so. Looking at his resources, he's pretty damn rich, but he doesn't have the stone for a wonder. He only has 1,800 stone. So he'd have to just blow through his gold to get enough stone, and it wouldn't even it wouldn't even be enough, probably at this point. Interesting. So Sir Nicholas hanging out in the middle. He's got his French uh, Royal Knights just kind of camping out, probably going to try and secure that. Is he saving up stone, I would wager? Uh, yes. So stone is being saved up? Yep. Yeah. So he's going to be saving up for more keeps to try and play that long game. That's for sure. And over here, we do have the French Knights looking in the base. They're probably going to be scrapping, seeing if they can find any relics or anything like that. And they are going to be encountering Superoxide's Knights, so will they turn and fight? Looks like they're going to do a little bit of a run by here. And they're going to go up into Superoxide's base. French Knights, obviously, a little bit stronger than Mongolian Lancers. But it's, it's, a, it's a close enough fight that it's not like a huge deal. All right, so moving up. Yeah, see, this has got to be a big red flag, right? Like, this this is just death and destruction. And now, the, it's up. Everybody knows what's going down. The wonder is here. Sir Nicholas needs to get that sacred site and do the same shit he did before. 100%. It's going to be a little bit harder to defend, but, you know, you don't have all those keeps like you did before, but there's, like, less threats now, right? So you got to get that. you got to entrench it. Does he have the resources to build any keeps? He does not, so... He's going to have to just do it the old-fashioned way. Got to grab that sacred site, man. Because nobody's going to get this. Nobody is going to get through this shit. And yeah, he's getting spring alds, which is the classic, like, Mongol wonder defense. Like, spring alds stacked on cannon towers with mangoes. It's, uh, it's brutal. Jaren is gathering a Doom Legion. He's going to push and start torching this base. So finally, that's going to be the catalyst that gets him going. Smeagol is just chilling. He's getting springs of his own. Oh, the... Look at that. Smeagol has a wonder, too. Oh, my God. Smeagol has the first wonder, guys. Oh, I didn't see that. Holy shit. He might win. Chris, this would be the most insane underdog story if Chris manages to win this. Oh, my God. But look at that. Sir Nicholas goes for the sacred. Okay, the die is cast. Sir Nicholas has the fastest victory condition. This is just anarchy, guys. This is just anarchy. So we got two wonders. We got Superoxide and Chris, both of whom have wonders. And here we see Sir Emperor Jarn finally moving in to try and torch some of the buildings here. And Chris needs to just defend his sacred sites. He needs to just trade gold, get stone, uh, Helm's Deep this shit. Nobody's going to get this one easily. But this one is very vulnerable. This one is also slightly vulnerable, but it looks like there's going to be a keep coming up. Smeagol's moving out. Oxide is refusing to delete his wonder. Oh, man. Look at this. So they're not going to help him. There's a lot of underdogs here, guys. There's a lot of underdogs. This is a crazy ending as Smeagol's army moves. Now, if Smeagol manages to actually take out uh, the sacred site here, that could give him the game because it would be close enough on the timer. The sacred site, unfortunately, we don't have it, but it's, it's about a minute ahead of these wonders, give or take. 
The Smeagol's moving over there. Emperor Jaren is attacking uh, Green, so he's going to be trying to take out Superoxide's Wonder. So Green is all in now. Green basically has lost his infrastructure. Uh, he's going to be crippled, and uh, it looks like, yeah, his trade ships were deleted. So Green is all in. Green doesn't have any impact on the game other than just defending up in the corner and hoping that, yeah, for Green, it seems it seems like it's going to be a tough situation. It's going to be very tough. So Chris is holding it down. Chris is also another underdog. He's been getting jumped by a lot of people this game. But Smeagol doesn't have any um, big cannons. He doesn't... Okay, he's got the Grand Bombards. They're coming down from the hill. There you go. That'll knock down these walls, and that'll put some pressure. Sir Nicholas traded all of his um, all of his gold, it looks like, for stone, I would imagine. The Guild Hall probably only has like a 1,000 banks. We do have the Red Palace here. That's going to make that very, very tough to finish. And yeah, nobody's getting this shit. Nobody is getting that. And here we do see the archers being pushed back. So Jaren, Jaren is in a, a tricky situation, right? Like, what is he to do? He's the only one without like a victory condition here, really. Everybody else is getting it. But if Smeagol, if Smeagol manages the win, or or you know even Sir Nicholas spawning in the middle, that's going to be such an impressive one. Jaren will go for green, orange for yellow. That's that's tough. That's really tough. Yeah, I don't know what the Donsos are going to do here. He needs like artillery. But like, there's no way you're getting through this Mongol entrenchment. There's no way. The only way to defeat the Mo green is to is to uh, he either loses the game or deletes the wonder. That's like that's all that's all you have to do there. So Sir Nicholas is going to move down here. He's going to need to bring more than that, that's for sure, because this this army of uh, of Smeagol is huge. It's absolutely massive. He's going to need to bring his entire army, but the problem is this is so undefended up here. It could get split pushed. So we see a gatehouse coming in. The French knights looking like they want to go out there and fight. Probably not a good idea with 20 Janissaries. They do have bonus versus, um, versus cavalry. If you look at their uh, little tooltip here, they get plus 20. It's a trench gun, yeah. So he's going to move out and fight this. Um, not going to go well for him. Janissaries, concave, the great bombards. He needs to pull back with these French knights right now. This is a colossal mistake, which uh, could cost him the game. And if Smeagol manages to decap this, he will win. He needs to pull back, use his keep, uh, get his supply lines going, and bring everything down here. You need all hands on deck to win this fight against the Ottomans. So the Bombards, do they reach the keep? They do. And it looks like the keep is going to be uh, garrisoned by some villagers. And the knights are going to be trying to hold this while the rest of the army kind of makes its way down here. The top sacred site is vulnerable, but it's pretty obvious that this is kind of an all-in on this bottom one. The French knights are holding very well. They're very tanky. You know, they have the, the royal bloodlines and all that sort of good stuff, but... At the end of the day, Schmeagel looks like he might get through this, guys. Here comes Sir Nicholas's defense. More and more knights coming in from all directions. He has the supply lines advantage. The Ottoman army is starting to look a little bit thin, but look at this. Janissaries up on the walls. What a brilliant play. But now a huge DAC of forces coming in here. Sacred Side is being contested. Looking at the Wonders, they're both sub uh, 10 minutes, but the Sacred Side is quite a bit ahead of them. I believe it's like two or three minutes ahead. So French knights should be able to stabilize this. The Janissaries on the walls, it looks like they came off the walls. A little bit of a mistake there, but Sir Nicholas is able to hold it. Wow, what a hold. More knights coming in. The Great Bombards are going to be rode down. Oh my god, the MLG play Super Oxide. He, sh he comes from the north to shut down the Sacred Site. Chris responds pretty quickly, but he needs to get those French knights on the objective. There you go. No, move them up onto the point, or else the Sacred Site's going to keep decapping. I would know. I, I lose with Sacred Sites all the time. So, yeah, move on there. Sacred Side is being decapped. So those units are moving to the north. Is he going to be able to hold it? He's pulling his units on. He's desperately trying to get those Arbalists up on the point. Super Oxide is being pushed pretty heavily. But he, even still, this is going to give the game to uh, Chris, I would imagine, if uh, he's not able to defend this. So this army is moving up north, but they're not making there quick enough. And the Sacred Side is going to be decapped. Oh, my God. That's, some, that's something right there, man. That's something. So Sir Nicholas does get pushed off the sacred sites, but now Chris wins the game. Chris is going to win. The haggard, the haggard Schmeagel in the mountains is going to win. Can't believe this shit. That's got to feel pretty bad for Yellow. He was defending so well all game, but granted, he should hold his head up high, man. You played a, you played a really good game. I'm very, very impressed. But uh, yeah, that's going to be GG. No, nobody is going to get into Schmeagel's base. It's going to take far too long. And you could see Super Oxide going over here, like. You know, as if he's going to do something with these Lancers. <laughs> Nobody's getting this. <laughs> Nobody's going to get that. That's for damn sure. We got the uh, Ottoman Empire gathering up here. And now um, Yellow is just going to go for it. But, like, this is tricky. Because then you just give the game to Green, who just who just got you. I, I think you don't help 
If you're Sir Nicholas, you'd be like, hey, homie, I'm not going to help unless you, you delete your wonder. There's no point. It's like you, you have no chance of winning. There's like literally no, no point in that. So this has been absolutely nuts. <laughs> Dude, who would have thought Smeagol would win this? He was so behind and his wonder's ahead by like 20 seconds. Oh my God. So here comes the big French army. Sir Nicholas, is he going to grab that sacred site again? Does not look like it. If Sir Nicholas had built some stone walls around this uh, sacred site, maybe he wins the game. Maybe. It's it, I always, like it's easy to look back hindsight and see that, but yeah, no, that definitely. Yeah, good luck getting to this wonder. That's such a like a horrid position to go after, especially with Green refusing to delete his wonder. All right, so we have an update from Gravity coming in. What's it going to be? Yellow is saying that Oxide is refusing to delete. The only thing that can stop Smeagol now is some lava. Yeah, that's true. And it looks like Emperor Jaren is continuing his siege, but it's it's just it's just pointless. He's just moving in with infantry, and uh, he needs like mass siege himself. He would need to go like like 15 Springalds and a bunch of bombards and just push his way through, or trebs. Like Springald trebs in mass with spears protecting them would probably be the way. But they're moving in, trying to close the distance. Uh, but this is just an absolute massacre, absolute massacre. Oxide not deleting the wonder here. Yeah, he's gonna lose for it maybe, but it looks like um, Sir Nicholas. Still is going to be going after it, um, you know, just just maybe thinking that Jaren might have a chance. Yeah, and now we see Trebuchet is coming out. What's the timer on this, though? Man, it's about six minutes. Pretty crazy. Nicholas has, like, a slim chance of maybe getting this. His army is pretty big. He's got cannons. I mean, he has a lot of the prerequisites. We do see Green's uh, Lancers coming around to maybe help. Obviously, it would, it would be in their best interest to help. But the Ottoman defense is 72 spearmen. I mean, that's so, that's so meaty. Jarn is going to be gathering up, I would imagine, trebuchets. That's good. That's the right play. You want to get the trebs. Um, we have the white stupa here. And then, oh, man, silver tree is here, too. And does he have landmarks here? He does, I think. I think he has hidden landmarks. Maybe not, though. Maybe not. Yeah, I'm not sure where the other Mongolian landmarks are. The white stupa is going to fall here, 100%. And Sir Nicholas's army is going to trade pretty well into the spears, but this choke point is just unholy. And there's no trebuchets in the French army. The trebs could sit here and shoot the wonder, like over the hill, but cannons need to have like direct line of sight. So it's gonna be much harder for them to actually get it. Enemy destroyed superoxide's landmark, so a little bit of progress is being had. Uh, is this the old TC? I don't think it is. I think his other TC is hidden down in the corner. Yeah, see, uh, very good play by superoxide. Hiding it in the wonder, hiding it in the corner is really, really good. Yellow pleading with green to delete the wonder. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't think Superoxide wants to delete it, because he has nothing else, really. He's just kind of hoping and praying that somehow he'll pull a W out of this. Jarn is making slow progress. Um, he does have his first trebuchet coming out. That thing needs to be, like, methodically working through this. The Wonder is, is like, pretty vulnerable. I mean, it's there's not that much space. If You know, honestly, if he just massed, like, 100 Warrior Scouts, he's got all his stables and built, like, 150 supply of Warrior Scouts, he could probably kill this. Probably just ride right through this and, uh, and you know, get back there and cause some problems. Pasture is going down, not that it's going to do a whole lot. And uh, Jarn still making decent progress. And the Bombards are making their way up. Smeagol might be in some trouble. He might be in some danger. I would hate to see, I would hate to see Green rewarded for um, not deleting the Wonder and not helping. So if, if I were Sir Nicholas, what I would do is just, because you're going to lose either way. Um, you sit and you, yeah, so he's actually going to get the wonder. Wow, look at that. Sir Nicholas gets the wonder, but like, does he really want to? Like, you got to make homeboy delete it because Jaren is not having enough progress here. Will Yellow have enough time to get up there and help with his army? Okay, guys, he actually gets Smeagol's wonder. So Smeagol loses his wonder. Oh my God, he got it. I can't believe that. So more knights coming in. Obviously, he's going to be retreating now. The other wonder is going to win in three minutes. So he's got a little bit of time to move up there. Maybe do like a big French night dive or something. I'm not sure. We see Trebs trying to knock things down, but obviously horsemen coming out. More and more trebuchets uh, on their way. And the French are now going to be pulling back. Wow, Oxide might actually win this, which is also very impressive con considering how scrappy he was. So, you know, not deleting the wonder. You know, he played, he played the game. He assessed that his opponent was still going to kill the opponent's wonder. And he decided not to delete it. Dude, crazy, crazy game. So the French are going to head up there with a big-ass army. They'll get, like, one chance at it. They have three minutes. Uh, they're going to move pretty close. 
They have this this silver tree hidden here. It's pretty crazy. A lot of spring alts coming out. Sofa need to intercept those spring alts. They need to intercept them. And it looks like a lot of the spring alts are going to die, which is going to be putting a big, big dent in the defensive capabilities of Super Oxide here. Sir Nicholas is on his way up, but he needs to just delete the walls. Yeah, there you go. He just deletes the walls. The trebuchets uh, potentially going to be able to threaten, but we're seeing a pretty good micro here by uh, your boy Super Oxide to kind of take those down. Mongols, of course, very strong in FFA because of their ability to do this kind of like defensive positions. And yeah, Trebs right here could actually kill it potentially, but time is running very short, guys. We got two minutes and 19 seconds left. So here comes the French army. They're going to just send all their knights through like last samurai style and just get absolutely mowed down. Uh, the Trebs, are they coming? They are, but they're just shooting pastures, which is a little bit rough. They need to be moving up and shooting these cannon towers to, uh, you know, free the way. But honestly, guys, I think that's GG. Wow, who would have thought that Super Oxide would get this? Yeah, very I'm very impressed with his scrappiness, dude. Oxide was really, really on the back foot. And like just like constantly like having to be a rat in the hills, but people let him naval trade for so long that he uh, was able to get back in the game. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Wonder Tracker, a minute 39, so the French are gonna get one chance at it. They, sh they should consolidate their forces before they push. Jaren making a little bit of progress. It looks like he might lose another Treb here, but he is knocking down cannon towers, which is gonna make it a little bit easier. A lot of these towers aren't upgraded also. So the French uh, are gonna get one shot at it. Unfortunately, a lot of their army is archers. Their knights are really gonna be the main thing. Here they come, guys. The last push of the French. A minute 14. Jaren moving forward. Trebuchet's on the way. And the French knights are methodically torching cannon towers, which I don't know if is gonna do it for them. They're gonna just get blasted by these cannons. Jaren needs to move in as well. Looks like he's trying to, but the uh, cavalry are diving the trebuchets, which is really, really good. French Knights making a dive for the backfield, but it's just so entrenched. And that is a big French army, but um, they do not have the means to destroy buildings because they are archers. So they're going to be dealing with 50 ranged armor. And yeah, that is probably GG. Wow, what a game. Jaren is very close. Like his trebs are going to be in range in a second. He's getting in there. The Mongols holding in the corner. The French army has been dispatched. We see some loose reinforcements coming in as the uh, the, the Sofa and the different infantry units try and move in. Manganel sniped, or the uh, the Trebuchet sniped in the back by the uh, two Spring Alts sitting here. And that's going to be a victory for Super Oxide, man. What a crazy, crazy good game. That was, that's the thing. I think, I think you wait and you don't kill. You don't kill his wonder. You don't kill uh, Smeagol's Wonder unless, maybe, it's hard to say. It's a tough read, it's a really tough read. Who knows, like would Super Oxide have just lost the game? Is he willing to, you know, play that? Should be good stuff. All right guys, GG, well played. Congrats to Super Oxide, the winner of today's tournament. Quite epic indeed. They let the man survive. Super Oxide was like the boy in all those movies that got away. You know, his whole family was, was, was taken out by a villain when he was but a young boy. And then Super Oxide survives, and he comes back. Great game, dude. I'm really impressed. That was amazing. That was amazing. GG, well played. It's probably one of the better FFAs we've had. Yeah. Can't say I saw that coming. I know. Chris is back, says I'm Spiegel. He's in chat. Well played, everyone. Great game. Great game. Oxide could have just lost that game. Oxide would have just lost the game rather than delete the wonder. Yeah, probably. Yeah, hey, it worked out for him, man. He 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 gambled and it worked. He the other players could have not helped him, but you know, uh, uh, Sir Nicholas wanted to try and win. You know, so his if if he he assessed that the wonder wasn't going to get deleted, he needed to deal with both threats. Crazy stuff, crazy stuff. GG, well played, guys. Taking a look at resources, the naval trade got him back in the game for sure. Sir Nicholas had the most gold, probably from guild halls. Yeah, in stone, obviously, very French. Very French stuff. Yeah. Great games, man. Great games. Yeah. Sir Nicholas did really well, dude. He had the worst spawn. He was surrounded and he fought off multiple nations and almost won twice. Really impressed with that, man. All these players like scrapped so well. Even, even in the early days, the Holy Roman Ram sign was really, really fun as well, right? That was, that was some cool stuff. Yeah, man. One last war cry. Okay. Here we go. There you go. There's the war cry for Super Oxide. Yes, one of the best war cries of all time. GG, well played, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that one. Uh, do we want to... Let's see what time it is here. How long have we been streaming for? Yeah, I should probably rest my hands. I'm going to be back streaming tomorrow. So um, appreciate all you guys. Thank you so much.
Congratulations to Superoxide, the winner of today's tournament. We'll see you on the other side. That was a lot of fun. Thank you guys for your support. If you enjoyed this, please do drop a like on the way out. Helps more people find Age of Empires. So, always happy to catch a stream turn. Glad I noticed this one has been going as you made uh, every second sub to your channel worthwhile. Thank you, man. Greatly appreciate that. Nutty, nutty game indeed. GG, well played. See you guys on the other side. Take care of yourselves. And uh, that's going to be it for today. Man, I think that's it. Cheers.